one. Beautiful play from Shocks, and that's now four rounds in a row for Mind Freak. Okay, you see one used. That's going to be yeah. Scum. Karma down. Oh my Three god. Now Profizi annihilating everyone, plus his teammates. But Borles in on the flank. He does have one in the corner. He has over to to work with this. He's going to wrap around the edge. He's able to find the second. No, Shocks just Profizi a little bit off. And that is the fifth round, and four in a row for Profizi. 12 and 6. The rest of the members of OG fall. We talked about how big those streaks would be, Jack. Envy gets a break off it. Envy could win it right here, three seconds away. All four dead on Optic Gaming. It's John saying, get out of my lobby. The boys in blue. That there, of course, a look at our top five plays from day two. We've had some epic, epic moments here at CWL Atlanta. And honestly, God, hope it doesn't stop because we're having a fantastic day here for Championship Sunday. Of course, we just got news uh, and we saw the closing moments of the Optic Gaming versus Panda matchup. So that does mean Optic Gaming versus FaZe will be the next game uh, that we will be seeing. Uh, uh, and Merck, I mean, Optic Gaming, we, we touched on it briefly. Do they have the confidence now to shut down FaZe, in your opinion? Because they haven't done this on land for a very, very long time. Something I know the FaZe Clan fans, they, they like to remind the Optic Gaming guys about. I mean, I, I think they have the confidence. The problem is, it's just this matchup is just so bad for them. Time and time again, this FaZe roster has been able to take down Optic. But, I mean, this is a crazy Sunday already. So, if there's any time to switch that around, it's today. And team, something that you talk a lot about is controlling your energy on those losers bracket runs, right? It's all good to be energetic. You need that energy, but you have to make sure that you're not overly energetic or you're not underly energetic, right? And right now, where is that balance for Optic Gaming? Because that was a very, very stressful round 11. You, you have every right to be excited, but will they have enough energy to go up against FaZe when you know Clayster is going to be at the other side of that table and he's going to be screaming at you? Right now, for sure, especially coming off a win like that, that's one of the most energetic things that can really happen for you and your team. So I think they need to ride that momentum wave and really go into this series heavy hitting going against FaZe, especially these hard points. Optic's been struggling very heavily, to say the least. So, uh, you know, they need to put something together. I think that win might be able to propel them to get their win versus FaZe here. Okay, we talk obviously a lot about Clayster being a very, very energetic player. Uh, team, you know, you've teamed with him. You know exactly what it's like to have that kind of energy in the booth. For now, let's learn a little bit more about Clayster himself. My ascension in Call of Duty has not been easy. I reached the peak, but in a blink, it was gone. I found my way onto a team with a lot of fans and brought them a championship, only to be pushed away again and have to start over. I was kicked to the side, forgotten. My only choice was to rebuild. They said I should quit. They said I can't come back. Maybe I wasn't as good as I once was. The top looked so far away. Seeing my former peers having success, I decided I could not stop. When I could have quit, I just went harder. Played harder, led better, became smarter. The fire was lit inside me. Now, no player can stop me. Now, no team can stop me. Now I am phased by no one. And there are wonderful insights to the mind of Clayster, if you will. You see just how much winning means to him. Uh, and that rivalry now that he has with Optic Gaming, he, he kind of hurt himself. You know, he watched his peers win and, and how that affected him. I mean, has the spark ever been bigger with Clay than right now? I mean, I'm sure it has. I, I mean, you know, sort of during that AW Dynasty that, that they sort of put together, that's when they were really beating Optic, coming back, beating them in two best of sevens, I believe, it, yep. at, at stage three of, of that year. But, I mean, this is a, a big day for them. I mean, they've obviously had a, a rough year last year. If they want to win a championship again. This roster stuck through all of Black Ops 3, really unsuccessful to themselves. So they won a championship very bad. Of course, FaZe, they will have been watching that Optic Gaming matchup there. And what's that like for a player team when you, when you see your opposition win in a, in a kind of, in, in that way, I guess, how, how do you mentally prepare for your next game knowing that you're going up against a team that just won a round 11? This is purely my opinion as a player, but if I'm FaZe, I don't care at all. 
I don't care at all. You focus on what you struggled on in that previous series you played on those uh, the series against EU United, and you just focus on that. You don't worry about anything else. Those outlier situations don't apply to you. You focus on you and your team, and you focus on the good parts as well. We saw Clay do really well against EU United on that search and destroy. He dropped, what, 14 or something like that, single-handedly <laughs> keeping his team in the game. And, you know, knowing Clay, he's one of those players that can, you get he gets that look in his eyes. And that video was such a good representation <laughs> of that uh, as a player overall. Once, if he wants it more than you, he'll probably beat you. So. And, and then for up the gaming chance, I mean, we've seen the, the teams that they played this event so far. Do you think they have enough gas in the tank now to shut down phase one? I, I think it really depends on the map set. I, I think if you give Opti Gaming their best maps, they're going to be in a pretty decent spot to pull it off. But again, uh, those hard points, it's been too much of a struggle. Uh, you know, you talk about Scorch, Opti Gaming hasn't won it a single time. And then phase, we saw what they did to E United. They won it 250 to what, 80 points or something like that. And that's an E United that actually ended up beating them again in the next hard point, if I remember correctly. So, I mean, again, the map sets are going to be huge. I know uplink phases look absolutely fantastic on. Optic Gaming, though, if it's on Frost, they've been pretty good. Uh, so it's one of those things. I think the maps is probably going to dictate this series more than anything else. Fair enough. Obviously, without knowing the maps, though, Merc, which kind of side are you on them with this one? Obviously, it's pretty close to call. I, I, I think this map number one's going to tell a huge story, right? Because to Teep's point, I mean, when a team comes off a hot win, you want to shut them down that, that first map, not let them get momentum rolling. Face has had a, a, an incredible search and destroy game this weekend. So if they come out, and shut down Optic in that hard point, I think they're going to be looking really good. Obviously, when we talk about FaZe, we talk a lot about Clay and when we talk about Optic Gaming, we talk a lot about Skump. The, the Ginger Ninja, he's had some fantastic results uh, in, in terms of his career. Obviously, you guys have teamed with him as well. You know exactly yeah, he's what it's pretty like good. to have such a fiery player. Some call him the best in the game. For now, let's learn a little bit more about Skump. Without question, the biggest player on the planet. Now it's Scump in the one versus two. Pleasure coming in from Rock. Gets one. Second player is there. Scump gets both. The 3 0 sweep. He always does it. Knows there's a second player. Here's the five step for Scump oh. kills all three. When he is on point, Optic Gaming are a completely different team. The king has come to life. Scump wipes out all of FaZe. Scump is there, and there it is. Optic Gaming has done it. Scump is likely the most raw talented player in the game. He has that raw talent, that ability where he can go off and take over a game. If he has a good run here in Infinite Warfare, he could go down as the greatest Call of Duty player of all time. Scump is an extremely aggressive submachine gun player. The thing that makes Scump so special with his play is he plays at such a fast pace, but when you really break it down and watch what he does, he's always pre-aimed in, which is a little bit more of a slower player's tactic, but he's always able to just snap on players, pick up those fast kills, makes Scump's gameplay so crazy to watch. Scump has been one of the top Call of Duty players since he began his career, but it's no secret that the one thing he's missing is that elusive Call of Duty championship victory. The guy's basically won everything else. That is what his sights are on in Infinite Warfare. Can he do it? We'll have to find out. Of course, you hear the opinions there of Scump very, very highly regarded. He's achieved a lot in his career. Tip, you, you were playing with him when he was just a child, essentially. I mean, what's it been like for you to kind of see his career grow up? Oh, man, when we first picked him up back in the day on Leverage, Black Ops 1, the, the amount he's grown as a player overall, he's a complete player now. Back then, you know, obviously, he's very talented. He always will be, but he put everything else together, uh, learned a lot from the different rosters he's been on with me, with Joe, and then fr from then on. So, uh, very cool to see the man grow over the years and be sort of the king, if you want to call him that. Definitely has been. Uh, for now, though, that's going to be everything from the studio. We're going to set it to a quick commercial break. When we return, though, it's Face Clan versus Optic Gaming.
Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the Call of Duty World League presented by the PlayStation 4. We're here at the CWL Atlanta Open Championship Sunday. And Momo, you've joined us on the desk. How have you found your, your first ever MLG Championship Sunday? I mean, so far so good. I was about, I'd say, 15 feet away from uh, Optic Gaming right there. That Ooh. comeback that just came on was absolute fire. Skump was shaking with raw emotion, and it kind of just brings us to, uh, to this next game, which I think everyone knows what's going down. Yep. So far, Championship Sunday has been brilliant. Wonderful. Glad to know you're enjoying it. Of course, Optic Gaming versus FaZe, the next matchup we're going to see. And for now, let's take a look at Optic Gaming's progress here through MLG Atlanta. I mean, you can see the past couple of matches, Evil Geniuses, Splice, Panda, of course, uh, losses to Team Envious. I think, you know, wins against Elevate and Panda, but you have to say, look, how close those games against Panda were. Panda honestly could have won both of those if they had to play again. I mean, even against Elevate, like, to me, this this next match is a huge test for these guys because compared to the top three or four teams in North America, they've had some really close teams that you wouldn't wouldn't expect. Very true. I, I know, Chance, when I asked you before the break about, you know, how you think these maps are going to go, you said, oh, it depends on the maps. Well, the first map, I believe, will be a hard point breakout. Uh, you look at Atlanta stats specifically, up to gaming 75% win ratio as opposed to phases just 50. You go back to Vegas, though, it was 0% for Optic. So they've clearly improved on this map. But do you think they can take it? Uh, I definitely do. Uh, it was one of those things. I can't remember who FaZe was playing. I think it was one of the European squads. I'm not entirely sure. But uh, very close game the entire way. And until Attach went on like a 10 or 12 kill streak, uh, the game was pretty close. But he blew it out of the water. And I think that's one of those things. It's going to be incredibly difficult to go on a kill streak like that against Optic Gaming, even if they're not performing at their absolute best in the hard point. So uh, Breakout might even give the edge to OG. Fair enough. Obviously, uh, Championship Sunday, we'd like to get to our Control Freak MVP predictions. It's always a fun time because right now there's so many different players that could be in the running. Merck, I'm, I'm curious to hear your thoughts on this one. Who is the one player you're looking at and you say, if you can carry on playing at this tempo, you're for sure the Control Freak MVP? I, I think it has to be Apathy right now. I think he's right. performing in every single game type very well. And, it, and I mean, his team is in the winner's bracket final. And that's the thing to me, an MVP, I, you know, they got to win the tournament. Fair enough. Uh, Chance, any uh, opinions on that control for MVP? I, I think he's right about the winning team. In, in all likelihood, is going to have to have the MVP on it. So uh, on the flip side of that, if it's United, I'm looking at Pristini or Gunless. If Gunless can keep performing or making those big plays, give it to him because he's the most clutch. But Pristini has been incredibly consistent so far through this tournament. Uh, he's been kind of the backbone for the squad. Okay, so uh, uh, Pristini uh, and Apathy Memo, uh, any kind of predictions here for the control for MVP? For me, at the moment, right now, it has to be Apathy. I think he's been playing out of his skin. Envious as a whole have been doing fantastic. And him as a player, kind of the storyline behind it, a bit of a rough Vegas, getting married, kind of coming back. And he, we, the interview that we saw there, he has kind of this fire now to come back. And we saw it at Code XP. Yep. I think we're going to see it again. Apathy, a, a fantastic player, that's for sure. I mean, if you talk about past MVPs from the biggest tournaments in the world, John, uh, a player, of course, from last year, now playing with a broken middle finger. I believe he plays Claw as well, so that's definitely going to... Uh, uh, yeah, uh, he's uh, fine. I mean, he's, he's definitely fine. He's playing like he's fine. You yeah, we'll be able to tell. Uh, Claystor, of course, a uh, previous World Champion MVP. We're going to see him up next. And do you reckon that he kind of can lead Team FaZe on this loser's bracket journey now? Because that's, that's the kind of performance you expect MVPs, right? I mean, absolutely. I mean, you saw it in that Game 5. He didn't want to lose at all. I mean, he put up so many kills. But, you know, besides that, I mean, he hasn't really had too many standout games this event. Really, you've been looking at Attach and, and Zuma, who have mm -hmm. Played ridiculous in those respawn game types, so we'll see if Clayser can continue to step up. Obviously, off the gaming side, uh, Crim6, the player who always comes to mind when you think about fantastic performances. Memo, have you, you been impressed from what you've seen from Crim6 so far here in Atlanta? Uh, certain game types, yes. Uh, like Search and Destroy, I think he's played fantastic. Uplink, he's played very well. I think, uh, and I can't put it solely down to Crimsix. I just think Optic Game as a whole, their hard point has looked really, really sloppy. Uh, we saw them, you know, they've lost against Panda, they lost against Elevate, um, only the hard points, of course. And going into this one, you're playing against FaZe. Ah, this, this is very tough. I, I think they, they need to step up their hard point because they're Search and Destroy, to be fair to them. They're very good at it. They're closing it out. They're coming up clutch. Crim6, of course, one of the greatest players to ever play Call of Duty competitively. For now, let's learn a little bit more about the man himself. The thrill of victory has become quite familiar over time. And nobody knows it as well as I do. The money, the fame, the feeling. They say it's more difficult to stay on top than it is to get there. The thing is, I've been on top for years. I've always approached situations with one idea in mind, that I will do anything I need to do to win. Over time, I've watched veterans fall, 
old teammates turned into rivals, and new players entering the spotlight. I've won under different organizations, with multiple teams, and at tournaments across the globe. Yet the pressure to win is even greater than it was before. There will always be those who attempt to take my title, but there's only one thing stopping them. I'm not done yet. You hear it from Crim6, he's not done yet. I mean, Merck, how good is Crim6? He always gets a lot of praise, but from a former professional player, you, you played against him so many times. How good is this guy? He's, he's really good. Obviously, I think sort of the past few Call of Duties, he's had to take a step back, just more of a leadership role, more of a sort of support role because you have Formal and Scump on your team. So maybe not as much as in the spotlight, but he, he's one of those guys who, who doesn't make a lot of wrong decisions. Fair enough. Uh, and in terms of for, for you, Momo, I know you, you've watched from over the pond, Crim6 kind of flourished throughout his entire career. You've had the chance to cast him at European events as well. Oh, the guy's just so good. I'd love to say that I had the pleasure of playing against him, but it was not a pleasure. <laughs> it was an absolute nightmare. Um, he's a player as well which feeds off hype. He, you know, when he's got someone kind of backing him up and standing outside there, Formal seemed to be that hype guy. When that kind of got going, Crimsic started giving it back, and I think when you see him there in that video, you know, he's always so, so confident. Crimsic is a very, very scary player to play against. Yeah, and I think you saw in that video, Krim talks about the, the pressure to win is the highest now. I mean, these yep. guys haven't won in a long time, and you can hear it. I mean, Formal really wants when he's constantly getting up, yelling at, at the other people on the other team. These guys know how tough it is, especially in this losers bracket, to make a run, but they want to do it. And you know, you talk about the pressure. I mean, we're talking about Optic Gaming, one of the biggest fan bases in esports as a whole. Yeah. I mean, fantastic support, but you know, when you're losing, it isn't always the best. Uh, Chance, does Optic have what it takes, in your opinion, now to really go on this run? I mean, we, we've talked a little bit about FaZe, but let's say they, they beat FaZe, right? If they were to get past FaZe, can they continue the momentum through? Can they keep going, and can they win the championship here in Atlanta? Yeah, no, of course they can. They're still one of the greatest Call of Duty teams of all time, if not the greatest. They have all the potential in the world. Uh, they just need to kind of turn it on. You know, it's one of those things that we've talked about it time and time again. Their hard point's been a struggle. Other than that, they've been fine. You're you're going to need that complete game to win the tournament, and they certainly are capable of that. Uh, it's just going to be incredibly difficult for them. It's one of the things that against FaZe, against EVE United, even and against Envy, uh, it's going to be incredibly difficult for them to get the win every single time, but they're still capable of doing it. Of course, still so many games here to be played at CWL Atlanta. Yeah. It feels like we've been here all day, but it's fantastic, right? We've had some amazing, amazing moments. Uh, I believe over on the Bravo station, you can actually watch the Luminosity versus Infused matchup. We talked very, very in-depth about Infused and how they just continuously seem to hold on. They refuse to die. I mean, remember, you played against Marky. You teamed with Marky. How does the man keep doing it? How does he manage to stay in those loser's brackets and stay alive? I asked, he spoke to him just before, a couple of minutes ago from coming on here, and he said, I'm not like I used to be. When I used to team with Marky, he used to be the guy that got hyped, who stood up, who was doing what Formal doing. Right. He even you know, tweeted out exactly the same. It's cool, calm, and collected now. This team, Moose, Nolson, PT, Marky, they're all the same kind of personality. You know, They're not kind of huge, I, rash players that are gonna kind of stand up and scream in your face. They're the kind of players that are just gonna you know, fist bump either side, well done, next game. And I think that's what's working for them. He said it himself, it's working for us so far, we're gonna stay calm. Fair enough. Well, without further ado, it's time to kick off Optic Gaming versus FaZe Clan. Over to our casters. Thank you so much, Benson. Atlanta, chug that G Fuel. It's time <laughs> to get hype, baby. This is an epic match, one that a lot of people expected to see maybe in the grand finals of the tournament. But no, these two teams are playing for just top four now. Yeah, it's kind of crazy to think about that. You know, they match up in Vegas, FaZe comes out on top in this one. And this event's been kind of weird for both sides. You know, Optic, they lose early, they go down, they have a very tough match against Panda, which, I mean, we're watching some of the back with the players, like Panda, like taking Optic to game five. Pro they played them really tough. And the one thing I think Momo hit on on the desk is that, you know, Optic has not looked good in their hard points thus far. They, they lose three total to Panda this weekend, you know, the one in the pool and then the two today. They need to be much better than that against FaZe. Well, we're opening up, of course, with a hard point game number one. You'll also see it in game number four if we get there. A little bit of history, though, Matt. Looking at this matchup in particular with these exact rosters, FaZe Clan has never lost to Optic Gaming. They didn't play each other all last year in Black Ops 3, but they already have a win in IW. Yeah, I mean, just think about how long that streak has gone on for, like all the way from Advanced Warfare through Black Ops 3 and now into Infinite Warfare. 
this phase roster has not lost to Optic Gaming on land. Speaking of Clay, they can't beat them online, so it kind of goes the other way online. But you got to imagine phase, they have a ton of confidence going into this one. Though Optic Gaming, they can get fired up after that last win against Panda, kind of carry that momentum into this match. And you saw Scump, you heard from the analyst desk, they were talking about Scump just shaking with energy after that last win, the round 11 clutch from Karma. Is it going to be enough to light the fires here on the main stage? We're about to find out. 25 seconds away from kicking off this game. Atlanta, are you ready? That's what I like to hear. Yeah, they sound like they're ready. And I think, uh, look, for Optic Gaming, I think it's no secret. The keys for them to win are going to be Crim6 and Karma. You expect to see very good games from Formal and Skump. You need one of those two players to show up big in this matchup. And I do want to point something out. As soon as you see this game kick off, take a look at Crim6's clam tag here he's going back to the old school crim bot throwing in some eg and look i feel like you know crim just needs to play a little bit more selfish i mean he just opens up so many things for the rest of his team but when he's at his best i mean he is making those crazy individual plays and you see right off the rip he's going to pick up two crim six maybe playing a little bit of mental games with clayster on the other side the two captains trying to get in each other's head. And, you know, technically, Skump, he's the old man on this Optic squad, but really, Krim, he has been the leader for this team, opening things up two and one. Skump on your screen, though, he is probably the most dynamic, the most devastating player if he can get rolling early on. And it's going to be a tough game one for FaZe because, obviously, Optic coming off the momentum of that previous match. No, FaZe, they're in the back. They're watching. They're trying to get warmed up. You just can't replicate that same kind of game mentality when you're trying to warm up here in the back as opposed to having a major match on a side station. And at the break here, it's going to be Optic getting a little bit of a lead, Chris. And I think what's important is FaZe keeps this game manageable until they start to heat up. Scup and Formal picking up two big kills. You take a look at your mini-map, and the rotation definitely going to go in favor of Optic Gaming. It's going to be FaZe trying to break through. Clayster's going to go on the long flank while his three teammates are set to make a hit from the top. Yeah, the teammates are going to try and force the players in cell block out onto that you know, platform. And Clay was going to pick him up, but he's going to fall. Just a really slow push here coming in from FaZe Clan. They know they have to get a pinch going. And Abel's going to pick up one there. Going to throw a grenade, pre-aim a corner. But still, I mean, just not a ton of pressure from FaZe Clan coming in right now. Optic racking up a ton of time. Optic has struggled in the hard points against teams that hit with all four at a time. That's what you saw from Panda over and over again. FaZe, they play hard point a little bit differently, trying to set up some flanks, trying to get all the angles covered. And Optic Gaming, their setup so far, handling it very well. You know, after uh, the FaZe loss, I just saw to E United, I talked with some of their guys, and I was like, look, like the way you guys played in that game five, you guys played scared. You guys played slow. Like, you can't play like that. And they know this. And they're coming out at the beginning here and looking really flat. No aggression coming out from the side of FaZe can. Not a good sign to see. 12 and 3 are Scump and Crim6 combined. Scump gonna fall there, but Zuma and Attach gonna try and push forward here for FaZe. They're set up early in this graveyard. This is where we've seen a lot of teams just gather a full 60 at times. FaZe, they need a full 60 just to get back in this. I mean, for as bad of a start it's been for FaZe, I mean, they take a ton of time here. They're right back in it within, you know, 10, 15 points. And Optic Gaming does not have streaks to use on this hard point. That's the one thing you can use to break this once the other team gets set up. Enable with a two-piece from range, looking over Attach, who has this K-Bar ready to roll. And the Envy 4, so devastating when you put it in this man's hands. Enable hitting four shots, but unable to finish the kill. Now he's going to get poked out of the sky. It's Karma once again. Captain Clutch is going to get three kills, and they will break through. FaZe no longer scoring Optic, extending their lead to about 60 points at the end of this hill, and it looks like they should be able to push here on the commissary. Well, no, they have one player in the back for FaZe. That's going to be Clayser. He needs to pick up some big kills. He grabs one on Krim, but here comes Skump putting a lot of shots, and Clayser picks up a big one. But you do see Karma pinching on him. The hill going to get in control of Optic Gaming. Zuma with a nice kill there. Enable as well in the feed. Skump going to make sure that they are going to have the outside perimeter, but it's Zuma controlling the spawns, puts FaZe in the better position. They're inside early. Optic all going along the wall run. One at a time, they're going to be jumping in. Smoke's coming out here. Now you're going to see Optic Gaming keep running over that wall run. It's the only way they can get back towards the hard point, and they break it. And I was actually going to say I was a little bit nervous for Optic Gaming there because you know, with how poorly FaZe has played, you've got to put this team away. We know they're capable of making runs. They were letting them just kind of hang around a bit, but now Optic Gaming taking the rest of this time, building a big lead. 115 to just 52 from FaZe. As we're about to rotate once again, you see Skump setting up with Crim6 in the middle of the map. 
Karma Uncontested is going to pick up every last second of scrap time in the commissary. And Attach trying to get something going. He's 6 and 9. Clayster, your leader, 6 and 10. Off to very slow starts. And Zuma, even he's negative at this point. And this is a guy who is normally one that could just get things going in your first three minutes, really set the tone for the squad. Yeah, it is not good. I mean, through the first rotation of hard points, nobody on phase even has above 10 kills. I mean, you're just not going to be in games when you play like that, especially against a firepower team, you know, a team with such slay-heavy potential like Optic. Karma showing you why it's so difficult to, to get him outside of the hard point. He's throwing down smokes, covering himself very well already with a minute and three of hill time. Formal, a minute 13 leads everybody in the lobby, and the highest you got over on the face side, just 30 seconds. They haven't been able to control these hard points, but for now, you have enable in that hill. We'll see if FaZe can gather a bit of time. The big rotation coming through, Formal all alone, is going to have his hands full. Yeah, he's got Clayster in the back as well, and Formal just needs to play his life, stay alive. The same way we saw FaZe try and pinch, you're going to see the same thing Optic try and do here. One kill would be huge for Formal. I think he knows exactly where this player is. Call out comes in, Zuma executed. Now the second player gonna be challenging from the mid. Skump on the back flank is gonna pick up one. Karma is there as well. So it's gonna be Optic Gaming collapsing once again. Formal just playing this one so slow and it's paying dividends. Yeah, Formal just staying alive in the back opens things up for the rest of his team. Just needs to pick up one kill and then everyone starts to rotate around for phase trying to pick up different angles. The rest of Optic just floods in. Optic Gaming playing with all new energy here in Hardpoint. FaZe does not have an answer up to this point. No one positive at this point. You only have Enable at 12-12. Who is going to be the player to start the momentum? It's going to be tough even getting momentum, Chris, to be quite frank. I mean, you just see the kills piling up in Optic Gaming's favor here. You got Formal on a five streak, working towards some score streaks as well. He gets those. This Grave Hardpoint's going to go to Optic Gaming's favor. And then, look, you're looking at like a, a 230-81. Maybe FaZe gets over 100 here. And that would be very difficult for them to come back from. Scarab got absolutely nothing done. And Formal will collect his sixth kill, though, for Optic Gaming. He's been alive for a full 90 seconds. I've been keeping my eye on him on the mini-map. He survived throughout the entire cell block. Now he's on the flank. He's the man running along the perimeter. His teammates are going to be the first players into action. Formal, staying alive, knowing how important streaks could be at the end of this game. But already, this one looking pretty one-sided for game number one. 204 and counting to just 90. I mean, just look at everywhere from the phase guys are playing from. I mean, they're spawning all over the map. They're just pushing in one by one. Not good for the first game for FaZe Clan. As you see, Skump inside the hard point, just dancing around. Going to take the rest of this time. FaZe going to try and rotate here. I mean, I, I guess you can go over to Commissary, but even if you get a full 60 there, Chris, what does it really do for you? You're down by so much still. Last time I looked at Zuma, he was 8 and 10. Since then, he was 11 and 18. Does pick up his 12th and 13th kill, but really, he has been shut down in this game. You look at Attach, he's had moments where he's able to pick up one, two kills, but never more than three. Skump on a five spree is looking to close this one out. 231 to 100. FaZe Clan trying to get out of the 100 point club. But Optic Gaming could shut it down on this hill. They only need 14 more. Yeah, and Skump's get, got those full streaks as well. He's got one player coming around the back. Nice gunfight there for Attach, but. See FaZe, I mean, at this moment in time, they just have to resort to flying towards the hard point. You're not going to be able to break this commissary. And FaZe fighting for control. They're going to lose the battle. It's Crim6 surviving the attack from two. Make it three players. 250 to 100. That looks like a completely different Optic Gaming team than we've seen all weekend long. I mean, look, they're beating up on some teams in pool play. Great. Doesn't really do anything for me. you got to beat the big dogs. They come in here with a big performance in game one. And you can see the energy that Optic is playing with now. They're a bit sluggish last night, a little bit tired on Saturday. Here on Sunday, they know what's on the line. And what I love about this matchup, Matt, is it has huge implications on our global pro point standings here in North America. Based on the current tournament results, FaZe Clan has moved up to number two. Optic Gaming is right behind them at number three. E United has taken the top spot. But whoever wins this is going to secure the second place in North America overall in Pro Point. And E-United looks good to hold out in one of those top positions. I mean, I think it's kind of gotten lost and everything going on here. All the craziness. They're the only team that has not lost a match yet through pools and the brackets. So E-United looking like a very strong team deserving in that number one spot if they get it. But 
Chris, this was just a blowout from the opening get-go. And I, I, I think a lot of it kind of attributes to, you know, the, the energy that Optic came and brought into this one. But also you saw Krim play very well. I mean, Skump, he started off, what, 6-1. and one. He got off to the hot, hot start for the team. You saw Krim6 turning up as well. Karma, he played so smart inside these hard points. But really where I think the wheels fell off for FaZe is when Formal on that back cell block rotation. He got behind enemy lines. He got the key kills, helped his team secure those spawns. And where FaZe was hoping to come back in this game, Formal just slammed the door in their face. Yeah, and going into the search and destroy, it's obviously going to be a huge map in general but i'm just kind of thinking like you know who would this be a bigger loss for you know coming out of this and i think it potentially could be phase clan we can take a look at the box score here and then i'll explain why but you can see optic gaming did a tremendous job over by cell block taking an extended period there grave as well that's where the game was decided great stuff from optic gaming in game number one but this is a best of five three different game modes coming up next we're gonna see search and destroy and give me the breakdown. Why do you think FaZe might have an opportunity to tie things up now? Oh, well, look, I think they're going to go back to that aggressive search and destroy play that they were so successful were earlier in the tournament. They did not bring that against E United. So I expect them to be a little bit faster up and off the gaming space. It plays to Zuma's an attached play style. And last time we saw Cloyster here on the main stage, how many kills did he drop in that game five? Oh, I mean, it was like 14 or 15, but uh, it's still a loss. I mean, a loss is a loss. I mean, you saw a big play by Gunless in a 1v3 with Camo. That really kind of solidified the game for E United. They got streaks off of that, spoke with the phase guys. They did not realize that he had all of those streaks. That's why you saw some of the plays over towards B on that map. So FaZe Clan, they lost their last s and That was against E United, though, in the winner's bracket. Looking for a bit of redemption here against Optic Gaming, trying to tie things up before we get to Uplink. Your map, it's going to be scorched. The action is going to be up close and personal. Will we see any sniper rifles? We saw Formal with the highlight from yesterday. Yeah, I think maybe he brings it out. I mean, the way he's shooting today, I, I would let him do whatever the hell he wanted. I mean, he want to use whatever gun he, he wants to. I just let him go. I mean, he has been lights out all tournament long. I do think, uh, you know, Optic Gaming, they're Search and Destroy. It's something they've worked on from Vegas to now. It's very good. FaZe Clan, they're at Search and Destroy. They feel very confident as well. So I think it's going to be a very close game. We're almost going to be going with the Overdrive versus Attach's FTL Jump. Other than that, we got a mirror match. I mean, we haven't seen great uses of FTL Jump. We haven't seen Overdrive really make a huge impact. I think Overdrive, I know it's something that they've used last year, something they're a little bit more familiar with, as opposed to just throwing an FTL Jump. Nobody really knows how to use that yet. So there is your rig draft. Also keep an eye on Zuma. Is he going to be able to slam the ground there with the shockwave? On the other side, using the reactive armor will be Skump. We've seen what he can do when he pops that payload. But the active camo, that's basically going to be your game winner if it gets to the late rounds. We've seen a guy like Clayster be able to get two camos in the same S&D game. I mean, it's huge. I mean, camo is just such a powerful ability. I mean, we talk about it in Uplink, really in all game modes. I mean, we see in hardpoint, you could pop camo, get inside of a hardpoint, break it with ease, search and destroy, you know, 1v2, 1v3 situations. You're able to just use that camo ability and make you know, hero plays for your team, just swing momentum in game. So I look to see who can get camo more. I can't wait, Matt. I know exactly where this bomb is going, and we are going to see a big boy toy in the hands of Clayster. He is pulling out the sniper rifle, but we'll see. Is he able to shut down Optic Gaming the way Formal was on the attacks for Optic yesterday? I can't wait, man. Here we go. It's time. Clayster on your screen. Pistol in hand. The bomb, it's moving to the top, and we're going to see Clay look for an opening pick here on the bridge. Yeah, and I love this decision by FaZe Clan. Yeah, I talked about in the match against the United, they were not aggressive. You see, they're using aggression over towards A. Attach goes in alone. They need to have another player there to at least trade that out. Zuma gets there a little bit late. Now the man advantage shop to game. And Kloyster's getting tagged up. Formal long range picks up his second kill of your opening round. Make it three. Formal going for the ace, and there's the full flood. FaZe gets shut down. I tell you what, man. This is not the gaming team I would not want to play right now. And then, let's say, they go on and pass this phase team. That is such a mental hurdle just gotten over for this team. It's been a year and a half in the making where they have not been able to take down this phase clan team. They beat them. I imagine these guys are on cloud nine. No sky's the limit for them. Optic Gaming cruising through game number one. Off to a nice start on defense. But the tough thing here in IW is getting the bomb down. Karma is going to be making his way over to the B bomb site, dodging grenades as he moves forward. And it's already Crim6 picking up first blood. Formal's going to eliminate Zuma. Four on two already. You see Clay 
just trying to play his life here, waiting for the bomb to potentially go down. Then gonna spring out of action, try and make a play, but just look at the minimap. All the arrows just converging on him. Stump just walks right in. He just opened Clay's mouth and shoved a K-bar in it. Yeah, that was not good. And Abel's going to get taken out towards the mid. You have up the gaming thing in the first two rounds. High fives all around. Karma talking with the team. You hear Formal making the calls for the next round. It's Optic back on defense. Last time we saw a pretty slow hit from FaZe as they tried to attack the top of the map. It simply did not work with the sniper in Clayster's hand. What strategy will they go with now? It looks like Clay, he's gonna put away the ERAD in favor of an NV4. Attach on your screen with a K-Bar and Enable will be your bomb carrier. Yeah, it seems like the way they're playing this, at least at the early outset, they're gonna try and get a pick here towards the mid. Maybe get one of the Optic Gaming players playing a little bit out of position here, but Zuma gonna fight that gunfight in the middle of the map, and Krim with yet another first blood. Back-to-back -back rounds, we've seen Krim draw first blood, starting things out 4-0. Attached, not gonna get anything. It's Skump shooting him out of the sky. Three on two, Optic with the advantage, Clayster and Enable. Still up for phase, and it's Clay on the flank. Gonna find one, outguns him this time around. Skump has been eliminated. He stays alive. That is the key here. He is behind enemy lines potentially for the Optic Gaming Squad. He has one more guy towards the middle of the map. Krim wins that one. And uh, uh, this is the best first two maps I've seen Krim play in a very long time. Chris starting out 5-0 and here in the search. He was very good in the hard point. Optic Gaming 3-0. And that is two players 5-0. and 10-0 and between Formal and Krim 6. A perfect start to score. You see Formal pointing over. That's right, Krim. Set the tone, baby. I mean, those two guys are really how this roster kind of formed. I mean, if you remember towards the end of Advanced Warfare, you know EG's breaking up. Krim and Formal want a team with each other. They try and go to NV. Things do not work out there. They find themselves on Optic Gaming, obviously, with you know, Skump. They have Nade Shot at the time. They swap him out for Karma. Eventually forms this just dynamic roster. Optic Gaming has every single trophy in their trophy case outside of the Call of Duty World Championship. Will they be able to add a Vegas trophy? So far, they're looking good here on Championship Sunday after a rough start to the weekend. Atlanta trophy, excuse me, Matt. I'm looking at the minimap, and you can see the rotation is going through after flanking over at B. They spotted FaZe Clan, and now a full rotation to the top of the map. They're going for A. Yeah, it was a smart play by Optic. They show a little bit over by B. They get some vision. They see the FaZe Clan defense being so strong over on that site. They rotate all the way around. It's a 4v4 with bomb down over at A. It's going to be difficult for FaZe to break in. Formal's going to tag up attached, but Zuma cleans up Krim. The slam coming down, not going to land on anything. Enable and Zuma in the feet, and Clayster will finish off round number four. FaZe Clan is on the board, and you hear the FaZe fans out here in Atlanta making some noise. FaZe needs them right now. They got to turn this series around. Yeah, and the big thing that let them break in there was Formal's watching that door with an NV4. The first player slides in. He's able to take out one, but that first player that slid in is able to pick up two kills there. Just even some man count. He throws it in FaZe's favor. Then they just flood right into the site, and they're able to take out the rest. Nice team shot for the final kill. Your score, 3-1 after four rounds here in game number two. If you're just joining us, this is a battle for top four in Atlanta. A huge impact on our global pro point system. The top nine North American teams will be moving on to stage one. And Optic and FaZe are fighting for the number two spot overall. You got Zuma on your screen doing some damage early against Karma. The kills are traded out. Zuma looking for a second. And there's a defender right on the other side of this wall. Yeah, he's going to be able to take him out going to be Zuma working on streaks. He's going to earn that Scarab, and the rest of his team falls. We're going to get down to a one-on-one, -on -one, Krim versus Zuma. And this is for the ace for Zuma. He's already picked up the first three kills. The last man alive, though, it's Krim6, who only has one death all game long. Zuma spots him. Krim is there, and Zuma's going to get the ace. Phases right back in it. The risky gunfight for Krim to challenge there. I mean, Zuma has him you know, pinned, pre-aimed at the doorway right here. He's really relying on Zuma, missing some shots there. Pretty easy gunfight for Zuma to win towards the end. Picks up the ace. Zuma trying to keep FaZe in this game, now only down one round. Keep your eyes on that man. Kid Big Tommy, keep it rolling. Is he going to get the payload out? Krim6 on your screen. 6-2, attached with a donut so far in this game, Matt. But 
doesn't seem to matter. He's been kind of playing that role where he's the distraction, allowing his teammates to search forward. Karma on your screen, looking for an early pick. He's your bomb carrier. Streak's coming down. No kills, but that is going to clear out everybody from phase. Karma in a great spot here. They have no idea where he was. The streak's back up placer. He's not able to get any visions. Scump follows that up with a kill on Zuma. It's then going to be enabled. Taking him out, though, you're going to see the Tash and Enable can make this play. Bomb is going to go down. They're going to get real close to Enable. Not going to be able to pick it up, but Attach picks up two quick kills, Chris. We talked about the Donut. Donut no more. Two straight kills, but he needs a third. Karma the last man standing. Karma, of course, clutching up the 1v1 to get here. It was round 11 versus Panda. This time, Attach is going to poke him in the back. Plenty of time to get the defuse. Right, he, he didn't shoot at him for the first second. I was like, does he see him? Tatch picks it up, though. Comes up huge in a big round where he was not playing at his best. And we are all tied up at three rounds apiece. Attach going to earn a scarab there as well. Koyster, back in this series. You saw him standing up, yelling to the crowd, trying to get his team motivated. It was looking ugly early on. And now I want to see how does Optic Gaming react? You allowed FaZe right back in this game. Will they crumble or will they push back stronger than ever? Look at Formal. He is going to be the player with the payload on the other side. Keep your eyes on this man. Zuma with the reactive armor can do so much damage. And you just knew eventually the aggression would pay off for FaZe Clan. And you see Attach going to draw first blood. The kills quickly traded out over by B. And Zuma coming on this flank as both players right in his line of sight. Going to be able to melee the second. Fantastic flank there by Zuma as FaZe has now gone up. 4-3. How's my gun taste, baby? Let's take a look at it one more time. The reaction time. Just incredible from Zuma. As he lays out his opponent. FaZe has won four straight rounds. They have now taken control of game two. In such a fast game, you kind of look at back at what Zuma was in Advanced Warfare. You know, obviously, towards the end of the year, it was up for debate. You no know, Scump, Zuma, attached. You no know, best player at that moment in time. Zuma looks like he's getting back into form. Formal on your screen, overdrive available, will not be using that quite yet, but the score streak comes out. He's going to be scouting the B bomb site with the Scarab, not going to find anything. As you see on your mini-map, it's attached and the rest of FaZe Clan going for the long flank. They've been spotted, though, and Crim6 is going to be the first line of defense here. Yeah, I don't think Optic knows how many players are on this flank, though. As they take out a naval, now they realize that there's more than one. They're going to take out attach as well. You see Krim and Co. going on the hunt here towards the back of their spawn. It's going to be just Zuma, the last one alive. It's actually going to be Clay. He takes out one as Zuma falls. Clay in a 1v2. Bomb should be going down any moment here. And you're going to see that happen exactly. It's the plant going down. Karma backing up safely. He'll be watching the back door while you have Formal watching the front, overlooking that bomb. Clayster, they have no idea where he's located. And he's going to pick up the K-Bar, obviously. Needs that in the close quarter situation versus the NV4 and does not have any vision on any of these players. Did he not see Formal in the line. window? I think he might have spotted a shoulder mat. And now he's got the first gunfight. Tagged up though, time running out. 17 seconds. He's got a little bit of wiggle room here, but Karma is so smart in these 1v1s. Backs up, shoots Clay in the back, and ties this game up. It's Karma that winning a huge 1v1 against Panda that got him here. Karma wins a big 1v1 against Clay. But you kind of felt all the momentum in the game switching over towards FaZe Clan. Karma puts a stop to that, ties the game back up. It all kind of started with Krim6, that first blood. He knew the flank was coming, won an up-close fight, called out the location of the others, and it was Optic with the man advantage, securing round number eight. Here we go, round nine, though. It's FaZe Clan back on the attack. All the action has been at B the last four rounds, and here it is once again. And I think with the ERAD in hand, you're trying to get attached, pushed up over towards Bomb, maybe an observation. That's where he can really be a nuisance. Camo available for Karma. Attach has that FTL jump available. Three players pushing, though. Karma is going to be eliminated. Scump answering back, and it's Zuma with the return kill. So now, three on two. It's going to be Krim6 and Formal left alive. Formal, will he be able to get this next pick? He's looking at every corner. Did spot a player in that window. He sees one, but does not know if there's a player back here watching the flanks. So he needs to be very cautious. Not a situation you can see overdrive used yet. Maybe you get into a one-on-one. -on -one, you're searching for the other player. You know where he is. Just general location. Maybe you see that ability used. But Formal trying to push up on the bomb. Trying to draw some of the players out from phase. 
And shots are fired. He has given up. Kloyster able to get the first pick. Krim trades it out, but there are just too many phase members. And phase after starting down 0-3 are now on game point trying to tie up this best of five series at one apiece. Without the gaming strong performance at hard point, and then the great start to the search and destroy, this will be a real bad map to lose. I think uh, you kind of let FaZe get some momentum, get some hype back into the game. You kind of lose a lot of the steam that you had coming into this one. Be a bad loss for Optic. Optic trying to force yet another round 11. How many of these have we seen from the green wall this weekend? Gump and Clayster trading out immediately. Karma picks up the second kill, though, so advantage Optic. Smokes are down from Karma. Krim 6 through the smoke, finds Enable, and the last kill goes down. Round 11, baby. The really fast round as Optic pushes all the way into observation. They clear out the bomb site. The last two members of phase, they have to at least acknowledge that the bomb may go down. They try and check it. They get taken out quick. Atlan, are you enjoying this game? Where are the phase fans at? Who's cheering for Optic Gaming? It's time to find out who is going to take game number two. Axon kicking off right now. Attached with an FTL jump. Enable so close to his payload as well. On the other side, look out for the camo. It looks like Karma has already used it. It's going to be formal just with an overdrive. And I believe uh, Karma used it to push up there. So we'll see any of these abilities come into play. Karma's going to draw first blood there, taking out Zuma. It's going to be a Nable falling as well. Quickly, we're in a 1v1 situation. It's going to be Clay going up against Krim. And Clay has the huge advantage clearly on your screen. You can see what's happening, but that camo has burned out. The gun strange, the jammer hits, but it doesn't matter. 6 5. Cloyster clutch it up. And it's FaZe Clan tying this one up at one apiece. The former teammates going at it in a one on one. Clay tried to get in Krim's head earlier in the series. This time gets the better of them. It's a battle of mental games, and that time around, it was just Clay with the better positioning. Tough spot for Krim to be in. It's a huge map for FaZe Clan. I, I feel like if they lose that one, this is a series that could potentially go 3-0 in Optic Gaming's favor, but that's a huge map for them to come back, Clay to win that 1v1 at the end. You look now, going into Uplink. Uplink is obviously our swing game, our game number three, but you can put up some pretty big score lines here. I think, you know, the first half of this game is going to be massive. Get on your phone, get on Twitter, tell your friends we are live. This is the CWL Atlanta Open. We are live here in the big convention center. We have a sold out crowd. And boy, have we seen some highlights. Let's take a look at some of the biggest plays here of game number two. It all started Optic Gaming steamrolling your first three rounds. Phase just being shut down until about round four. That's when they started to turn up, and it was on the back of Zuma. Yeah, Zuma and Attach just being so aggressive. You know, obviously when you make these aggressive play calls, sometimes you're just going to get hard countered by the other team, right? They're going to flood a bomb site. You're not going to expect it. But I like how FaZe stayed true to themselves, right? You know, they stayed with the aggressive play. If we're going to lose, we're going to lose the way we want to go out. And it ends up working out for them. You know, the aggressive play you see right here, Zuma's able to pick up two towards the end of that round, put them up 4-3. They let Optic take it all the way to a round 11, Chris, but that one-on-one -on -one against Clay at the end, you know, he's able to come on top and Krim falls. Love it or hate it, Matt. I say it a lot, and most of the time I'm right. I have a feeling this oh, one is stop. another. It's another one. How many Game 5s have we seen today? Uh, we saw the uh, Panda Optic go to Game 5, uh, FaZe United go to Game 5. That's two off the top of my head. Uh, there are so many games here in Atlanta. I have not been able to catch them all. But... Oh, it's happening again. I'm just calling it now. Wait for I, it. I, I can't see that, to be quite honest with you. I think whoever wins this uplink probably takes the hard point, ends it in four. Uplink, your swing game, as always. The only time it shows up in your best of five, game number three. And this is going to be a big one. We're on throwback. And this is a favorite map for a lot of the pro players. You ask them, what is your preferred uplink? They said throwback, probably the most fair, the one that we're most comfortable on. It's pretty basic. Break it down for us. What is the strategy that we're going to see going into this? Well, this is a lower scoring uplink game, a lot like how we see on Frost. It's not something like Precinct where you can really spawn trap people. You know, with the adjustments of uh, the one goal over by Lime, you're not going to be able to see some easy one point throws over there. But I think if you can get the drone towards that bike path, bring it down that side, go over towards that baseball goal, that's where you can get a lot of two-point plays. We got to keep our eyes on two players. Let's take a look at our G Fuel key player matchup when it comes to uplink. 
We have Formal with a 1.22 uplink kill to death ratio so far throughout this tournament. On the other side, Zuma topping the leaderboard in so many categories, a 1.422, also getting involved with some dunks. Yeah, it's like I was looking over towards the left at, you know, Formal's KD, and like, that is silly. And then as soon as I glanced over towards the right, I was like, oh, God. It's like Zuma is just crushing it. Uh, earlier in the day, I casted uh, the phase match against EU United with Maven. Uh, we were talking a little bit about it. Don't know if that holds true now. Obviously, some games in between now and then. But uh, FaZe had three of the top five uplink KDs with Zuma, Enable, and Attach. And you remember just Zuma's first time on the main stage. That first uplink was like 37 kills, something ridiculous. He just came out firing. As we take a look at a rig draft, anything standing out to you, Matt? Uh, not too much. I mean, this has pretty much been the standard. Uh, you do see uh, FTL on the side of FaZe Clan. Uh, that's really going to be the only difference. You know, Centurion versus FTL, Chump. Uh, do I think that is something that is a, a massive player in this game? No. I think uh, those two, I really, you're just looking at your camo and your reactive armor. Those are the two abilities you're going to see plays made with. Maybe we see something come through with Overdrive, but, you know, usually an Overdrive player grabs the drone. You see him cut down pretty shortly after. And talking about basic strategy here, what's the fastest route up the gut? I mean, up the gut is always going to be the fastest route. It's not one you're going to be able to make happen, though. I mean, the chokes in the middle of the map by the train, so narrow. You, know, you see where that bowling area is. You can bring the drone through there, try and force your way for some two-point scores. Usually don't see a lot of action over towards the top side of the map over by Cyclone Barn. A lot of it going to happen mid-map and over by Bike Path. That drone spawns right out in the middle of the train tracks. Who's going to get to it first? You're going to have to get through your opponents to grab that objective. It's Zuma on your screen looking for the fight from the window. Just needs to hold this position. Drone control so important in uplink. It's gonna be Krim and Karma in the kill feed first with some nice shots there by Zuma. Going to take out Krim, even this up. No drone control yet for either team. Our observer, Brian Saint, has been on point, catching all the important kills. There's a big fight going on, on the left. He saw the, saw the start of enables. Now Zuma answers. Optic coming off the spawns. Phase, they've only dropped one player, and now, though, with Karma taking out Clay, this drone push is going to be stopped. And in fact, Optic going for the quick pass. They're on a fast break here. Skunk could go for the two point play. Oh, and he barely does not make it around that wall. As you see, Krim trying to follow this up with some kills. But man, Skump is just an inch in front there, gets around that wall. He's able to get a two point play. Formal is inside. Phase's base will be taken down by Cloyster. So with the house clean, now they can surge forward. Already, Zuma opening up 6-0, and zero, yet zero points on the board here for FaZe Clan. Well, what FaZe has been doing all tournament long is they've been letting Zuma just focus on pushing through all the way, trying to pick up some kills. He's on a 7 streak now. It's going to be a one-point play for FaZe Clan, and you see Zuma working on these streaks. He finally falls, but... When he's just putting so much pressure on your base, it's hard to go back towards that middle of the map and get the objective. Yeah, and you clear out Zuma, and then all of a sudden, Attach is in your face. Three straight kills. Attach keeping the pressure on Optic Gaming. They're trapped in their spawn. Just everyone setting up for another interception because they know this drone is coming. Clayster and Enable clearing all four players. Two-point play should be incoming. It's Zuma with the dunk. It has not been good for Optic here at the beginning. Zuma has completely dominated this game with Enable. Enable has really come to life, and I feel like he's the one guy we don't talk a lot about on this phase roster. We talk about Clay with the great leadership, and, and Zuma and Attach, how good they are you know, up close. But Enable kind of gets lost. Very talented player. Scump here with a one-point throw. Not going to connect. So that is a one-point miss there for Optic. They miss out on some points earlier, albeit it's not really their fault. Could have been two scores there for them. It, it, honestly, that last one felt like it was Scump's fault. You gotta aim a little bit higher. Maybe that one goes in. Do you need an extra step or two? Possibly, but for me, this should be a 3-1 game. We'll see if that comes back to haunt them later in the game. Karma picks up two before being chased down. Crim6 falling Scump. This is gonna be point. Scump is the lead blocker. He's gotta pick up the kills. Got one. Looking for a second. Crim is gonna sneak in and reset, Matt. Yeah, it's going to be a one-point play for Optic Gaming. Uh, it could have been potentially a two. Obviously, they don't have the luxury of having the mini-map that we do. But it doesn't matter. They get the control of the phase base. Oh, no. This will be a two-point play there for Karma. He's able to put it through. They do have mid-map control yet again. Yeah, look at the rally. Crim6 could have gone for the drone there and gone right to player number two. That was Skump leading the way. Instead, they feel they need to get the kills. Tie game all of a sudden. And Crim, staying alive, is going to give himself... A strong position, three down for phase once again. Scump 
looking for the spawners. You got support and Krim right behind you, and Formal is moving up the drone. Stronghold so far, though, and now Zuma feels he has to call in the score streaks. Yeah, probably did not need to waste them there. He's going to be able to take out Formal. It kind of clears off the gaming out of their side of the map, but you see how effective you can be from this side. When Optic spawns the Aphaze team up on the top side of the map, it's very difficult to rotate back towards the mid. You got to get control of your own base over by that statue in baseball. It's very difficult. You see how Optic turned that into points. Quaster moving up the drone, but it's FaZe in a three on four looking for the kills first. Two players dropped, but it's Scump and Crim6 for Optic Gaming answering right back. The drone tossed backwards, but it's not going to go outside the map. We're going to see. Will FaZe be able to put it through? Not going to happen. Zuma stopped short by Formal. Reset goes in favor here of Optic Gaming, and in fact, they're going to be pushing this one up towards the baseball field. Yeah, they were trying to throw that for some yards. Maybe Zuma picks up a kill and then able to get a one-point throw, but he's quickly taken out outside of Barn. And you see the drone down at the top side of the minimap. This is not where either team wants it. You see it's really in no man's land. Both teams fighting at range, trying to pick up some kills. The drone going to get reset. Nobody really wanted to pick it up in that situation. Such a good series we have on our hands. 30 seconds away from halftime. It's all tied up three apiece. Both teams looking for at least one more point before we hit halftime. It's Zuma looking for the positioning. Those two spawners are going to be coming his way. Deals with the first. Second player to his right. It's Zuma on the flank as you hear Klaser with the call-outs. The slam coming down. Zuma's going to finish with the headshot on Krim. But there's still Karma playing defense. It's the position Zuma got into when they scored points last. Four seconds left. The drone in the middle of the map. Scump might be able to get off a one-point throw here late. Nope, not able to get around the corner. So we're going to see a tie game going into the second half. I like this for FaZe, though, Chris. You know, obviously, we saw how Optic Gaming spawned him on that top side, was able to put on some points. Zuma gets in that good position over in the back by bowling, you know, behind that statue. They can put a lot of points on the board. If you're just joining us, no, this is not the grand finals. This is FaZe and Optic Gaming playing for top four. Phase, they started off a perfect 4-0 in their groups, but fell to EU United here on Championship Sunday. On the other side, Optic Gaming. They struggled a little bit earlier last night against Envious, looking for redemption here in their loser's bracket run. Off the gut, though, it's going to be three players here for FaZe picking up kills. Zuma's going to find a fourth Optic member. FaZe with early control can attach, hit the shot. No, it's too low. It's a big one-point miss there by Attach. You're able to put another point on the board. You get a lot of pressure Optic rotating into the back of the base. You probably get back to mid-map, get drone control yet again. Just kind of changes the whole dynamics of that game, that one-point throw miss. We saw the same thing from Skump on our first half. Karma and Formal clearing the way down the middle. It's going to be Formal set up behind the train. Karma pushing right down the front. And Zuma is there on defense playing a very similar role to what we saw from Optic Gaming in our first half. Formal not going to be able to make it happen. And honestly, I've been very impressed with the team spawning on the left side with the, the key kills. They're getting them. They're stopping the dunks from coming through. Yeah, you see Attach up in this top window. He's just going to be looking over the drone here, just making sure Optic Gaming can't just pick this up, run it straight down the mid. I got to say, Chris, I mean, Attach starting to play a little bit better. He was struggling at the beginning. Clay, 7-17 seven and 17 right now, needs to get it going. Really enable and Zuma keeping phase in this match. Absolutely. Klaser is number five on your screen. He's carried the drone a bit. Here's a one-point toss, and he's been practicing that one. Long range. Sinks another one-point play. That is his second toss of the game. So while he's not getting the kills, he's able to get the objective. But Zuma, the way he's playing at 26 and 12, you would expect a much bigger lead here for the FaZe Clan. And I like Clay with the NV4 in his hands coming into this match. You know, he uses the NV4 and the K-Bar. With the K-Bar, he's got like a .92 KD. With the NV4 in his hands, a 1.02. So significantly better with the NV4. Slows his play style down a little bit. Able to get back a little bit to what we're used to seeing from Clay. Shout out to our production team as well as our friends from Colorado doing the stats backstage. There's a one-pointer from Scump. We're all tied up. You got to remember, it's just the one-point misses we've seen. One from Scump, one from Attach. But Optic Gaming in control of mid-map right now. Base needs to stabilize, needs to get control of their base. And the drone is moving forward. It's going to be another one-point throw attempt. It's going to be Optic actually missing that one. Formal setting up the spawn trap. Nice shots there. He has been lights out once he gets rolling. And here he is with the dunk opportunity. It's going through. They miss a one-point play. Formal is that good that he picks up all the kills, turns it into two. Now Optic Gaming with the lead here. Two minutes and 15 seconds to go in the second half. 
If you're phase, you need to focus on getting that mid-map control. See Zuma wrapping around, trying to get control of the optic base. Could pick up some big kills here. He's going to get one. I have to say, the player I've been really impressed by here on Optic Gaming, clearly what you see from Farmal, but Karma, his stats don't show how big of an impact he has had. There's another perfect example, stopping the drone carrier just inches short of another toss. Enable here on the far left side, knows Optic is going to be moving up with the drone. He's going to rotate over, and when he does, he's going to see all kinds of action. Player called out in the window, Enable's going to try and sneak behind. Zuma already picking up the kills he's looking for. Yeah, it's two kills in favor of FaZe, but it's going to be Karma and Skump on the defensive side of things. Picking up kills around the drone, locking it over here by Bowling. This is some big kills for FaZe. They're going to fall here as Attach, going to have to back up, has FTL jump, don't really know when he's going to use it. See Krim going to fall here, Attach in a power position, going to pick up another one, two big kills. Now the drone back in mid-map, Attach in a perfect position to stop this. Optic Gaming knew they lost control, and that is a big play just to throw that drone for yards. Formal trying to hunt down Clayster, who had the drone momentarily. Zuma's still alive, finally going to be cut down. But we are down to our last 60 seconds, and it's FaZe Clan trailing. Attach used his FTL jump. Karma has a camo here. Objective in hand. He's going to be pushing up towards Lemon. But at this point, I don't know if Optic's going for the score or just trying to keep the drone out of FaZe's hands. Oh, I mean, with three kills and camo, you definitely go for the score. He's going to be camo pop by Karma. Drone in hand. He's hit, gets the toss, so now it's a two-possession game. Really smart play there. Did not need the two. The one-point play still makes it a two-possession game. It's going to be very difficult for FaZe to get drone, get a two, and then get back to mid-map and get another score. And you can see the panic mode setting in. Enable feels he has to use his overdrive before even getting control of the drone. He sneaks by two players in the middle. The jammer's going to slow him down, and it's Optic sealing the deal. Ten seconds left. Optic Gaming is going to take the lead in our best of five, 2-1. And Formal goes 31-19 and 19 during this map. He has been a man on a mission today, putting up crazy numbers in every single match I've seen. And it's kind of interesting, you know, we talk about how Krim and Skump, potentially one of those two guys are the leaders. It seems like Formal's just said, screw this, I'm going to lead this team by example. With the way we saw him, you know, shouting at the Panda guys, riling these dudes up. It seems like Formal stepped up into that leadership role. Matthew Piper has come to play today. On the other side of the stage, though, he is going to have his hands full with Zuma all match long. Such an even battle we are seeing play out here on our main stage. Yeah, and look, I mean, Enable and Azuma really brought it in that match, but they needed more from Attach a little bit earlier, and you needed more from Clay overall. Hate to call him out like that, but honestly, numbers don't lie here as we see game number three going in Optic's favor. Let's take a look back at some of the highlights here from Uplink. And I know this is a very close game in the first half, obviously tied. And going into the second one, you actually thought that FaZe was potentially had an opportunity to pull away because he had Zuma coming around on that flank. Sets up. They're just not able to get a ton of points out of it. But here in the first half, do see. It's FaZe jumping out early and Optic makes a little bit of a comeback. Yeah, it was 3-0. When you take a look back here, the dunk coming in from Karma tied it up and Optic really never slowed down. They traded one-point plays. The kills going back and forth, back and forth, but it was the key defenses that we saw. We saw so many times that the drone carry, which is stopped at the goal line. A few missed tosses, but this one sank in from Clayster. Gave FaZe the lead once again. Skump answered right back, tied it up 4-4, but it was the final 2 minutes 30. This play from Formal, three kills, the dunk, and then the final shot coming in. Well, I mean, that is a one-point play that goes astray, and Formal just turns that into two. I mean, there's not many players that are going to be able to jump in there, pick up two quick kills, and then make it a two-point play. But you see, you know, Zuma and Formal, the two guys we highlighted, 33 and 22 for Zuma. Staying on point with that KD we showed earlier, a formal. He has just been silly good today. He's like, oh, you got a 1.52. I got a 1.22. I'm going to catch up somehow. That game, a 1.63, just 19 deaths and 31 kills for Optic Gaming. Very impressive stuff from both of the Slayers. Yeah, no, I mean, no, Optic Gaming, one game away from beating this FaZe Clan team, which has never happened before. When this Optic roster has gone up against this FaZe Clan roster, FaZe undefeated. 5-0 is FaZe in this rivalry with the current lineups. We'll see. Will they be able to make it six? Currently, they're trailing by one. We'll be right back after this.
We are back live from Atlanta. This is the CWL Open, and Optic Gaming is just one game away from securing a top four finish here in our second major event in North America for IW. And look, it's a huge win for them. A lot of people thought they would just kind of bow out after they lose to Envy, but they're trying to get all the way back to potentially another rematch with Envy, depending on what happens with Envy United. Optic has never beaten FaZe on land. Can they do it here today? We're about to find out possibly a game five. Another game five could be in store for us. If you look at that last one, we were in for a treat there on Scorched. I mean, it was Hector's birthday the other day. I don't think he wanted all these game fives coming here to Atlanta. It's got to be tough for like green wall fans at home. I imagine like I saw Maniac. I think he's like, I'm losing it in my hotel room. I'm completely alone. I'm just like all these game fives. Uh, you don't want to win like that. You want to win it a little bit easier than that. Hector turned 37, but he must feel 45 today. We're stressing him out. Here we go, Matt. Game number four. The rig draft will be kicking off any moment. We take a look at this next map, though, and it's going to be throwback for hardpoint. We just saw this same map used for uplink. How is it different when we go into hardpoint, though? Well, obviously, uh, hardpoint, a little bit of a different game mode. That first hill going to be where the uplink drone was right in that center track. So you're really worried about that second hardpoint over by the barn. That's one you can get a ton of time on. Then all the way over on the other side of the map for hill number four over in that back baseball area. That's the two hills you can make a lot of time on. We showed you some stats going into game number three where we compared uplink scores between Formal and Zuma. Going into this one, though, I want to point out Attach. He's been hot. He's been not. He's been a star player, though, in every other match they've played. He and Formal led all players coming into this match in terms of respawn KD. I'm looking for the youngster to really make some moves here on throwback and force a search. Yeah, I mean, Attach is going to need to play much better for FaZe Clan. He's been doing it all tournament long you know, with the kills and also doing a lot of the objective. Needed him to show up big here. And if you're FaZe, I mean, this is... Uh, Obviously, do or die, but uh, you got to look at this team, man, Chris. Now, they were so good during Advanced Warfare. They won so many events towards the later half of the year. Nothing last year. They kind of lose a lot of confidence. What's like the last bit of confidence they can hold on to? It's against this Optic Gaming team. They are undefeated. That, you know, they knew that if they can get back here and they were in the finals, they felt good about themselves going up here. A loss here. Hurts this FaZe team a lot. FaZe made a similar run back at Vegas. It was eventually Cloud9 who stopped them to move on to the Grand Finals. Will FaZe be able to improve upon their third place finish? Well, they got to get through Optic Gaming first. Also, quick reminder, Infused is playing Luminosity on our Bravo stream. Feel free to check that out. And of course, coming up next on the main stage, it's the winner's bracket finals. E United will be taking on Envy for a spot in our Atlanta championship match. Let's take a look, though, at Formal off the break here. He has been a man on a mission all series long. First blood and second blood, though, going in favor of FaZe Clan, and it's Zuma leading the charge. Yeah, so Formal's job there is trying to lock down the spawns for that second barn hard point, and just like that, FaZe rolls through. They get control of the hill, and they get control of the spawns. Spawning Optic all the way across the map. Play picks up two quick kills, put some nice shots there in Formal, not able to finish it. Kavar versus NV4, but... Ooh, those are not good shots there from Zuma as Skunk just absolutely turns and burns them. Soptic gets control of the hill. They do not have the spawn to the next hard point, though. Zuma used all of his good shots on that opening break. He was the man picking up three of the four kills. Karma, though, causing problems. Just took out their two slayers, Attach and Zuma. Clayster is going to answer back on Krim 6. And now it's the peekaboo battle. Formal helping out Karma as Optic continues to score. Five points remain. It's going to be about 27 to 18 as this hill rotates. So Optic was so dominant in that first hard point because you saw it. it was Formal, Krim, and Skunk were all going at one time. Right now you got Krim starting out 0-3. I believe on the first time he started out 5-1, really playing well. Going to need to get him going. Optic has a lead now, but they will not be able to sustain this if they do not have everybody clicking on all cylinders. And I love what we just saw from FaZe. If you are watching the mini-map, you saw players in all four corners of the barn. They all pushed in at the same time. Clayster and Attach getting some big kills. Zuma on a two-streak on your screen finds his third. Now will be rotating around, but he's got nothing but Optic players in the barn. Zuma cut out and FaZe, even though they had total control, wiped out on Optic's first push. Yeah, FaZe gets there early. They are not able to hold. Now the next hill going over towards Bike Path. You think FaZe probably gives up on this, does not want to feed Optic Gaming score streak. So they're going to set up towards that bottom side of the map, try and get control of Bike Path. Thinking back to game number one, the first time these two teams matched up in hardpoint, it was 250 to 100. 
FaZe Clan was never able to hold their setups. Optic Gaming able to take control and just get 91 points on a single hill after two rotations. We'll see if something similar happens as already this game's starting to feel out of hand. 71 to now 35 and counting for FaZe. They've retaken the bike path. 40 points remain here. But Optic, they have just been so good on their retakes. And Zuma working towards more streaks. You're going to see him get a kill with a the Scarab there. Inside of the hard point, it's going to be FaZe racking up a lot of this time. And if they can get this back within a 10-point game, potentially tie this up. They hold this spawn going into the baseball field. They're in a very good spot. And this is a big contest coming in from Scump. That's 15 points that he stopped FaZe from getting. Zuma's going to jump up, find two. And they will continue to score now 71 to 55 and counting. A smart play may be intentional or maybe not, but Attach actually lets Zuma get back into the hard point, and he picks up all his streaks from those points being juggled back and forth. So may not have been intentional, but just the way they kind of positioned themselves there gave Zuma those streaks. And talk to me a little bit about those streaks. Trinity Rocket Bombardment basically used by all players in this lobby. When do you want to calm down if you get them? Oh, well, it's huge for the second rotation of hills because you're able to just break bike path if you want, or if Opta Gaming takes control of baseball here in the back, you're going to be able to break that with ease. You don't need a full rotation over there. Those are going to be huge later in the game. Action continues here on our main stage. This is game number four. FaZe has taken control. 84 to 74 here for Optic Gaming, but it's Optic set up in the baseball field. As I say it, your kill feed turns all red. Zuma finds Formal, the last man with his score streaks, a second one on Skunk. That's a, a, a big streak to invest in for the last 20 seconds here. I, I think you probably could have held on to that. You probably trade these gunfights out and you're in the same exact position you are here. So we'll see if they use one of those streaks in the second half. They don't exactly get a full break. Obviously not going to have that luxury of having another one. I think it's just a confident play from Zuma. He's already 17 and 8. He's on another three streak. He says, what, one round of streaks? I'm going to get five this map, Matt. Yeah, I mean, you, you may have a point. With the way he's been playing all tournament long, he's been crushing, I think. You know, in his head, he expects to go on another long run, string a lot of kills together, pick up more, and you just see the shots that he puts on Formal there. Kills him so fast. Zuma's so accurate at range with the K-Bar. And he has saved the biggest of his score streaks for later. That bombardment will be available a little bit later on. Bit easier to dodge at times, but Enable and Zuma getting all the work done with their guns. 20 and 9 now is Zuma. Double positive. On the other side, Formal, that player to keep pace with him, 12 and 13. Optic has all four players negative. They're getting out slayed. What a turnaround from FaZe in the last three minutes. Well, I mean, the difference between game one and game four here is, you know, Formal still there. Obviously, you know, not that positive like we saw in game one, but you, know, you have Krim not playing as well as he did in game one and same with Skunk. Skunk at 9 and 16 right now. Optic may be feeling a little bit of the pressure despite being on match point. They are not playing with the same amount of energy that we saw earlier. Attach, picking up Krim 6 is going to be causing problems, trying to get behind enemy lines. Meanwhile, the flank is coming in from Clayster. This is good for Optic Gaming, though, because they can take a ton of time on this hard point. You can't really use the streaks to break in, because obviously Barnes so close quartered. But Clay just walks in, takes out Scump. It's a nice shot here in the back on Karma, and I do not know how that happens. Faze just walks right into the barn, takes it right from Optic. They were so worried about Attach, and then when Clayster got behind him, they ignored Attach who picked up his second kill, and it was a full sweep. You have all four players up here for phase. Optic Gaming is going to be sending three from the front. The flank is late here from Crim6. Will Optic be able to break, though? Yes, three straight kills. It's formal inside scoring. And now you're going to see the rotation going over towards Bike Path. Only 10 seconds left here. If you're Optic Gaming, I think you got to get one of these guys to figure out how to get some streaks. You know, juggle the hard point back and forth, earn some points, pick up some kills. You can earn some streaks over by Bike Path. You can get those, use them on baseball, and you can probably split that time. Catch going up top on the bridge. Finds two players. Grenade goes down. Knows where the third is. Right there, you saw all the kills going in off the gaming sphere, but Attach doing a good job just contesting it for the time being. Off the gaming, racking up score. They need to push these spawns out. It's a big kill there by Scump. Needs more teammates to just keep pushing straight through bike path. They need to get control of that back baseball area. And what Optic was able to do last time FaZe had control was send one man just to contest to stop the scoring. Looks like FaZe this time around is just going to be able to break through Karma trying to stay alive. So that push all the way around by Enable has actually spawned Optic out towards the right side of your minimap. And that's exactly where they want to be. So Enable trying to get a pinch, trying to get control of bike path there. Ends up spawning Optic all the way across the map. The big kill is going to happen on the top side where Clayster's coming from. 
Big fight for Clay. His opponent has no idea where he is, and he still loses the fight. Scump using the cover, able to pick off Clay. And I hope that doesn't get into Clay's head. He's got to ignore that to come back fresh because Optic now has control. Oh, and now you see two kills by Zuma with the streaks, but all of his teammates fall here. So they're going to get nothing with these streaks. Optic still holds on to the spawn. Looks like another big kill has to come in from Clayster here as he's trying to wrap all the way around the back. It looks like Clayster at times is just trying to do too much. He's flanking, but he's running into multiple opponents. Unable to win the gunfight. It's going to be Scump set up with two protectors behind him. Formal is going to fall. Crim6 ready to explode if anyone charges from baseball. Yeah, now Optic has nothing to worry about. No streaks can come in. You see Karma calling down his score streaks, trying to protect his teammates, but FaZe gets a break. Every time you think Optic gets control of the hard point, things are going their way. FaZe answers right back. What a back and forth, back and forth game. It's about to be tied up. 167 to 167. FaZe with the last five points here. Formal with the two piece though. And he's looking for the third. He's gonna just do a nice job dodging some shots there, not able to take out a tatch, but we go back to the center hard point. The two things to focus on is players can earn streaks. Payload abilities will be coming up here shortly for a lot of these players, so we'll see how the active camos get used on both sides and reactive armors and score streaks. Somebody can earn score streaks before we head over towards that baseball yet again. I feel like that team is going to be heavily favored. Keep your eyes on Karma in the late game. I don't expect him to pop this camo. He's going to save it for later. On the other side, Clayster going to try and answer back. Enable on your screen working towards the Centurion that could be huge in the barn and that'll be coming up here shortly 20 points that remain in the middle of the map and optic gaming seems to just be giving this up Yeah, phase is actually you know flip these spawns They're going to get that top side of the map and they're trying to push players out to that furthest cut get control They need to get further back towards that left hand side. This is going to be a big play enable needs to come up with a kill or two here Enable has the scarab available as well and it looks like a counter scare may be coming out. Player prone behind this box, and he is going to find two. Nice team shot coming in from Optic. They keep scoring here in the barn. It's Optic set up first. All the way across the map is FaZe, but now they have all four players pushing in at the same time. Is FaZe going to be able to break once again? Clayster leads the charge with his camo. He's going to be tagged up a little bit. I love the patience here from Clayster. Does not get any teammate support coming in. It's going to be enabled. Taking out Karma with a big two-piece, working towards more streaks, 50 points off of a Scarab. He has the camo for himself, so we'll see when Karma decides to use that. This game is so close. Pops the camo, picks up one, tries to turn, picks up another big play there from Karma. For the fourth time this game, Optic retakes the lead. 207 to 204. Five spree here from Karma. He's reached the 30 mark. Zuma slowing down a bit. He was 30 and 20. Now he is 33 and 25, getting outslayed twice in some big battles in that last hill. It's going to be very difficult for FaZe to come back. It's going to be Karma with streaks. Going into baseball, you do have overdrive for formal. So if they do spawn out, he can use that. Get across that field at the top side of the minimap. It's going to be FaZe getting control of Fight Path. If you're off the gaming, you need to keep this close. Don't burn all your streaks here. Streaks coming in from Karma. He takes out just Clayster, missing a second player. Meanwhile, FaZe continues to score down low. So the score streaks really not that effective yet for Optic. The guns, well, Crim6 picks up a naval, but Karma took out Skump with that barrage. And it's going to be Karma having to get it done. Attached on the other side of the bridge. Heavily contested is the bike path. Optic Gaming swarming all over the players. Attached and enable, fending them off. And FaZe Clan so, somehow wins the fight. So this is actually huge. Karma uses both of his streaks there. Only has the Scarab available. If FaZe wins this rotation battle over to Bike Pad, it's game over. Optic not going to be able to break that with streaks. And you see Clay picks up that big rotational kill on Formal. This is FaZe's game for the taking. Zuma taking out Karma in transition. Enable picking up two. Formal trying to get the job done. Last man up. Won't be able to. There is a player inside scoring. Attach. Trying to find him. Two players around the corner. Finds the first, gets the assist. It's going to be Scump and Formal pushing forward here for Optic Gaming. Zuma in the back line. you got to wonder why both those streaks were used. They are Optic fighting back from a disadvantaged position. You see Karma pushing forward with Formal. Has a Centurion to use. Maybe you drop it here. A lot of time left for the taking here on baseball. Karma with some nice shots. Taken out attached. Optic Gaming climbing right back into it. They don't need score streaks, Matt. The team shot is getting the job done. Optic Gaming five points away. It's going to be Krim putting in some nice shots, and that's going to be it. Optic
Arctic Gaming taking out FaZe Clan will advance to your final four. They finally get over the hump. We talked about it. This FaZe Clan team undefeated against this Optic roster when these two teams have formed. This is the first time they were able to take them down. A lot of momentum for the Optic guys going through the rest of the tournament. What a series. Ladies and gentlemen, put your hands together for both teams. That was one of the tightest matches we have seen, and it happened here on Championship Sunday. We have so many more matches to come, but this one, I think, is going to be the match a lot of people remember. Without a doubt, and Karma goes absolutely massive in that game four, really. I mean, you know, when you were worried if Skump wasn't going to play his best going into that one, him and Krim were not looking good at the beginning. Karma stepped up in a big way. Matt, when you look at this match, who's your MVP of this series alone? Oh, it's difficult. I feel like, you know, uh, you can definitely say formal. Definitely looked very good in that matchup. Uh, Karma, though, in that game four really gave them a lot. Fantastic stuff from both of these squads. We'll get a chance to talk to the players here in just a moment. To remind you here on the big picture, this is a loser's bracket match. Up next, Optic Gaming is going to have to get through either Infused or Luminosity. Meanwhile, we're going to turn our attention on the main stage to the winner's bracket finals. But before we get to that winner's final, let's take a look back one more time at this series, starting with game number four. Here's a look at how it all shook out. Optic Gaming, 105 points in the barn. And most most of those came, I think it was a 45 point chunk in that last rotation. And that's huge because there were two times where FaZe actually rotated early and they had control of the spawns for Barn. So Optic able to break that swing a lot of that time in their favor. And you see Karma 39 and 26. Huge game for Optic Gaming. A 1.5. Zuma played his heart out in this series. Top in the leaderboard in almost every single game. Threw up another 39 kills for the FaZe Clan. But FaZe, they're knocked out. They're going to finish fifth, sixth in this tournament. Optic, they play on into our final four. And right now, we got Jack on the floor with Karma. Thank you, boys. What a matchup we just saw there between Optic Gaming and FaZe Clan. Crowd, did you like that series? I know we most certainly did here in the venue. Thousands in attendance. Now, first, Karma. Before we even get started with that series, the 1v1 in Game 5, Round 11, against Panda to get you to this point. What have your emotions been like so far today? Well, honestly, I mean, you know, like, they're the killer jokes back in the day at MLG or UMG Atlanta where, you know, he's nervous. I'm not gonna lie, I was really nervous in that. I, I had no idea what to do, and it worked out, dude. And we went into this match saying, like, like it was meant to be, dude. Like, we're gonna come in, we're gonna play them, and I, I've always thought that if we all four play our best, we can beat them, and it finally happened after two years. You say that after two years, you take down FaZe, that series, what? Round 11 in that game two, the hard point, so back and forth. What happened there at the end? How was that possible to mount that comeback and take that game four? Honestly, for a second, I thought we might have lost it. We lost the rotation from uh, Train Hill to Blue Hill. And uh, we, then we had a 2v4. I think Matt and Seth or Matt and Ian got a couple kills. And then we ended up flooding. You know, it, they, made a, made a, they may have made a mistake. I'm not really sure. But uh, we all flooded. We played fast together and got the kills and clutched it up. <laughs> Well, a lot of people out there were doubting this roster, wondering, was is the best now done for this Optic Gaming team? Now you take down FaZe, something you haven't been able to do for those two years. Is this roster done yet? You're in the top four now. What are your sights on in your next matchup up against Luminosity? Uh, I mean, I, I don't think we're ever done. You know, with, with these four players, can we really be done? I don't, I don't think so, but... Uh... What else did you say? Karma, it doesn't even matter. Guys, what a series that just was. Congratulations again to Optic Gaming as they'll move on. We're going to go to a quick break. When we come back, your winner's bracket final.
Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to the Call of Duty World League presented by the PlayStation 4. We're here at the CWL Atlanta Open. And what a matchup we just had on that main stage. Optic Gaming versus FaZe for the first time in two years. Optic Gaming get that sweet, sweet revenge. It's got to feel pretty good for them, right, Mark? And they did it, winning two hard points, something we, we critiqued big time coming into this matchup. And, and finally, you saw some resurgence uh, out of Karma, one of the players we had a lot of eyes on, went yep. huge in that game number four. Uh, but really, they, they still have a, a lot of matches left, a lot of good teams still left in the tournament. I mean, speaking of those matches, let's take a look now at our losers bracket and show you just where our, kind of all those teams are filled in. Obviously, there was more games going on on the side station. Uh, remember, I know you were watching that team in Fuse versus Luminosity game, and you can see there Luminosity did come out uh, and win that one 3-0. We'll touch on that in just a little bit. Meanwhile, Optic Gaming, they progressed through with a 3-1 victory over FaZe. That sets up an Optic Gaming versus Luminosity matchup. And, I, I mean, Chance, I, who, who'd you take in that one now? It'd be hard-pressed not to pick Optic after the performance they just had, but at the same time, Luminosity has looked pretty fantastic. I mean, they crushed Infused, wasn't even remotely close. It was a pretty uh, damning 3-0, uh, if you will. I think Luminosity actually has a, a pretty good opportunity to pull this off. I think Optic, they had a pretty good map set uh, going against FaZe. I think that breakout hard point was about the, the best map they could possibly hope for. So right. uh, again, I think it comes down to the maps, but honestly, I don't think they're going to be able to take two hard points off of Luminosity. They have looked way too strong in the respawn. Uh, just kind of talked about that last hard point that we saw on main stage, Mark. It, it had all of us kind of sat there going, wait, what is, what is going on here? It was just crazy, crazy kind of last couple of hills. I mean, <sighs> What went wrong, I, I guess, for FaZe, in, in, in your opinion? I mean, just they, they rotated early after that train hill, and then that, those next set of gunfights, they just seemed to lost them. And there was a time at that train hill when, when Karma does use both of his streaks, and we're sitting there looking at each other like, why did he just call that? One ends up in team killing Crim6. That would have been right. huge if they would have had it for that baseball field, but they were able to clutch up and, and win those last few gunfights. And, and what was crazy was FaZe had that rotation. And you're sat there and you see them get those kills as well, but somehow, some way, Optic Gaming managed to get themselves back in uh, and take the victory, a crazy, crazy ending to what was a fantastic series. Elsewhere, however, though, we did have a team infused versus Luminosity Gaming. As I said, Memo, you were watching intently with that one. Uh, break that series down for those that missed it. Oh, it was, uh, it was hard to watch if you're an Infused fan, let's say that. I mean, <laughs> straight away, I mean, we went into the hard point. It was on throw, uh, breakout, sorry, and this is notorious for getting those high kind of leads. And it was pretty close, you know, to a certain extent. We see it here at 90 to 63. And then, you know, the, the scoreboard, it was a little bit of a strange one. Octane started pretty slow, but slacked. He was the complete opposite. He started really, really hot. And look at that scoreboard, right? 159 to 145. Now look at it. You see 249 <laughs> oh. to one, like nothing, you know, for the last two, three minutes. Infused, they really couldn't pull, pull anything out of the back bag. Slack went 20 and 10, two minutes objective, fantastic. Uh, search and destroy Scorch, though. This started again, very, very nice for Luminosity. Ox came with a big three piece. Round two and three, we saw Infused tie it up, but the same story. It's what, 2-2, two, two, it ends 6-2. Luminous, Luminosity just step it up a gear. We head into uplink and it doesn't stop, stop there. Infused, they start well. 2-0, <laughs> you're thinking... There's a, is, there's a theme here, yeah. isn't there? Yeah, and then suddenly, <laughs> they get basically, they just get to, like, two points, what? and then it's 3, 2, 4, 2, 6, 7. It uh, just what, what, gets what, out of hand. What was going on there, then? Like, what, okay. what was this kind of breakdown from Infused in every single game? Though? I mean, just to kind of break it down for, for Luminosity, they had one player starting slow every single time. On Hardpoint, they had... Uh, it was actually, it was Octane again. On uh, Uplink, Octane started 0 and 7 on the Uplink itself. Oh. And I was like, how are they still winning? It was like 4 3 at the time. Octane finishes uh, 23 and 20, positive, so he really brings it back. Slack, though, 31 and 20. That's not the first time this tournament we've seen Slack going off. He's a, a dangerous man, and I think Opsix should be scared of him. Definitely can be a, a very, very big threat, but congratulations to Bloom Lossy. They, of course, now progress through where they will meet Optic Gaming in that loser's bracket. Uh, but briefly, Chance, I just want to get your opinion. Obviously, a lot of people coming into this event said, oh, you know, the European teams, no, they, they don't deserve spots in pool play. I mean, I feel like they've earned it, have they not? I mean, that's kind of the expected result, right? We saw at Champs, there was two top eight placings, and that's exactly what they saw today. A little bit farther down, obviously not the second place, and I think it was the top eight last time. Uh, so slight fall off from Champs. Whether or not they earn the spots, I think it's really tough to say because they're going to the number one seed, Orbit. I don't even know what they place, like top 24 or something along those lines. So uh, it's really a bit of a mixed bag with the Europeans, but I think it always is. But uh, I mean, now this is two tournaments row, two top eight finishes, so they at least a few teams deserve to be here. Yeah, I think as well, I mean, 
call it bias or, or whatever it may be. I, I see <laughs> the six European teams that were put into pools, which is 16. Um, they all they all finished top 16. Uh, Orbit, you know, definitely are very unhappy with how they played, finishing top 16. Right. But the likes of Fnatic, they kind of made a little bit of a run through loser bracket. They got to, uh, top uh, 16, I believe, but. Uh, two top 12s, uh, but most like what Chan said, I do agree with. You know, we didn't have that second like we did at COD XP. Right. Epsilon right. placed fourth, and of course, bit of a disappointment. But infused top the European scene, and they get uh, top six. Fair enough. Well, it, it always seems for them as well is that the the losers bracket always one side of it ends up with a bunch of European teams. I think Infuse ended up beating two or three of them to knock them out. So uh, a bit unfortunate in the bracket, but again. Yep. Uh, I was pretty impressed by them and, and the APAC teams coming into us. They, they had, there was a lot of hard-fought series. Definitely excited to see them throughout the rest of the year, that's for sure. For now, though, let's take a look at our winner's bracket. And just kind of update you where we stand. Of course, we are now at the point of Championship Sunday, where we get to our winner's bracket final. Of course, E United, after a hard-fought matchup against Faceplant, they walk away with a 3-2 victory there. Meanwhile, on the bottom side, Team Envy's 3-1 victory over Luminosity. That now sets up E United versus Team Envious. And Momo, I don't think anyone would have expected the United to be here. No, uh, I mean, there may have been a couple. Burns probably been one of them. He's a big, <laughs> big supporter, of course, being part of a United. But for uh, to see United, I think I've seen a couple of the pro players actually complimenting them, saying, we've been there. We've been, you know, doubted. We've had a, a tough run. And they've turned up here. They've turned up not only on the main stage on Saturday, they've turned right. up on Championship Sunday. And I'm over the moon to see not only kind of fresh faces up there, but the likes of, you know, Silly, who has been playing time and time, years and years. He's right. finally getting his break. And, and look, what's that like as a player's perspective? When you are trying to break out onto the competitive community and you have those doubts, as I'm sure at, at the beginning of your career, maybe, oh, yeah. maybe you, you witnessed that and you experienced that yourself. Yeah, I mean, it's tough. You just want to prove the people wrong and, and it starts just by going to these tournaments and placing well. Luckily, you know, my first tournament, there was only eight teams, not 76, <laughs> so I got a, a bit lucky there. But, you know, you know, it, it, it's a great feeling finally placing that top three, and I think it'll sort of soar their confidence in the future for their tournaments. But they can't stop here. There's a long way to go if they want to win this championship. Absolutely. Of course, uh, United coming in. Not that many people really knew much about this squad. Uh, a couple of people in the venue as well have been asking us, you know, oh, tell us a little bit about United. So without further ado, let's learn a little bit more about the United squad. The CU United team has been doing incredibly well in the 2 case. They continue to impress. It seems like a lot of players, though, and fans in the community don't know if they have what it takes. They've been referred to as onliners, warriors. I don't buy it. Anyone I've followed from any competitive FPS, if they come in strong online, if they're showing it consistently online, trust me, it's just a matter of time, a matter of experience before you're seeing them do it on land as well. What I love most about United is the potential of this lineup. You have Silly, who's always been on the cusp. He's had huge games, a lot of highlights, but he really hasn't seen those tournament victories. But he's surrounded himself with some young, hungry guys. Arsides, Pristini, the twin brothers, this is a young, hungry team with nothing to lose and everything to prove. I wouldn't be surprised, though, if you see this team somehow finish in your top eight and even make a run for a top four, they're able to pull off an upset in the winner's bracket. United's not slowing down an inch. Of course, there are a little bit of a look and insight into E United, and you can see a couple of the guys uh, expect them to do well. I don't think anyone expected this well, though. No, not this well. I, I sort of expected maybe a top eight finish, but I mean, they, they proved a lot of people wrong. And then on the other side, you have Envy, and I don't know if a lot of people expected them to be in the winners bracket final. I know I did, Ben, but uh, <laughs> I don't think really people projected them to be here. Uh, we haven't even really mentioned Team Envy, of course, but they deserve a lot of props, right? Of course, last year's world champions, you've got John playing with a broken finger, and yet here they are in the winners bracket. Final. Apathy, who's probably having one of his best events we've seen in recent memory. I mean, Chance, who, who takes this game in your opinion? Well, I, they've played already in pool play, and e United beat them 3-1, I believe, and the respawns, I don't even think they were that close. The hard points, I think there was about a 100-point margin for both the games. That being said, uh, United on the main stage, two different times, we've seen them completely collapse in the opening game, and they just did not look like their normal selves. And it's one of those things that Envy, any time they've been given an inch, they've taken a mile. They've looked great. Uh, but again, if United has done it once, they can certainly do it again. Very true. Excited, of course, to get this next game on main stage underway. Team Envious versus E United. For now, though, it's time for a quick commercial break. When we return, it's MLG primetime.
from the CWL Atlanta Open. And it's Oh my God! You know, a great showing from both of these international teams in a very tough pool. The breakout superstar, the up and coming player in Gunless. All four dead on Optic Gaming. It's John saying, get out of my lobby. It's not about FaZe versus E United, it's about E United versus everybody. It's prime time here at the Call of Duty World League, presented by the PlayStation 4. And joining me in the studio, I have the wonderful TP. We've got Mr. X and, of course, Momo for this next matchup on main stage. Team Envious versus E United. And during that commercial break, we were just kind of discussing a little bit about who we're going to go for, who, who we're kind of rooting for, or rooting, I should say, who we think is going to win. Deep, which side of the fence are you currently sat on? It's close. It's tough to call. Both teams looking extremely good, especially because E United actually won the first series in groups, right? But enough. I think Envy is going to take it. I think the experience, they look better than ever. To be honest, we were okay. doubting them after the Vegas performance, but obviously this is a true test of this Envy lineup. And with the way that Apathy and JCap in particular are playing today, I, I think they're going to take it. it it's definitely going to be close. Mr. X, one word, who do you think takes it? I, I think United comes that out on top. That was more than one word, but you're saying e United? United comes out on top. I do. Mo Momo? E United. E United as well. Okay. Well, smart man, Momo. I believe the game All is right. ready to get underway. Team Evius, E United, MLG Primetime, over to the wonderful Courage and the excellent Maven. Thank you, guys. Uh, we're primed. We're ready to go. Yeah. This is going to be fun, man. You know, I talked to uh, Cap. Slasher and Apathy before this, kind of what went on their first series. Remember, it was 3-1 victory for E6. We'll talk about it more as we go, but they've already matched up. E United, why do I call them E6? E United, E, 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 E United. All I know is Jcap trolled you when you asked him those questions. He I know. You're like, know. what went wrong? He was like, they won three maps. Yeah. We won one map. And you're like, they okay. got more kills. John Apathy helped me, guys. Right, but we do have a key player matchup heading into game one of our winner's bracket final. It's simple. You win this, you're in the grand final. It's guaranteed a top two placing. Apathy and Gunless. Apathy, monster last year. Gunless, the new talent this year. I think it's safe to say that either of these players, depending on result, could be considered for your control freak MVP. Okay. Okay. If MVP were to win the tournament, Apathy gets it right now in my eyes. If United were to win, Gunless gets it in my eyes. Both these guys have been monsters, man. People were talking a lot about E United. We all know the whole onliner story. Certain pro players I asked said they are going to bomb out Atlanta. They're going to be terrible. Other pro players said these guys are going to finish in your top four, their top three, while they're there right now. Can they keep the magic going? E United have yet to drop a series this weekend. Envious, on the other hand, they lose to E United in pools, now looking for revenge. And the only map that NV was able to take it was a 6-1 victory in the game two search to destroy. So a complete sweep in the respawns for E United. And talking to Cap, he said, you know what? We threw away game one. We got out to an early lead, and we kind of, you know, took the foot off the neck. We, we let it go. They got blown out in the second hard point. So you need a better start here from the boys in blue. It is time, folks. Game one of your winner's bracket final. We're watching Slasher off the break as he challenges towards the top window. First gunfight coming in, able to tag up one, but you can see on X-ray, a little bit of a dip and a dive away. Long range shots there. You're able to hit those with the NV4 but ultimately his teammates now cleaning up the kill and Envy gets set up top mid first. Prasini, another name that's new to the competitive call of duty scene for a lot of people. Yes, he's been competing for a little bit over a year now, but really coming to the forefront in these last couple of events. Envy up 18-0 off the break and throw back hard point. What a dramatic map we saw between FaZe and Optic in this last series. Well, I know for us, you know, it, it's tough to follow all of the up and coming players and amateur teams. You know, we have to, as much as the research we do, talking to players, you have to focus sometimes on the top 16, right? But you know, I was reading last night, you know, they've been playing Arsenis and Pristini, a duo all the way back to Ghost. So these guys have been playing together for a long time, but now playing on the biggest stage and showing what they can do. And the big thing too with this squad is Silly is basically the leader of this team. I sat down and talked to United for about 30 minutes prior to this whole tournament starting. And I said, what separates you guys more than really the rest of the teams coming this weekend? Silly said our dedication to practice and how much we grind for this event. He said that what, two of them had like strep throat, one of them had like a hospital visit or something, and through it all, they basically didn't even take a day off. They kept going at it, they kept scrimming, and it shows now with this top three placing, looking for more though, 
with a uh, with He's Winnie. probably going to be irritated that I tell this story. Okay. But uh, I went to, to use the restroom between breaks, and I heard someone. It sounded like they were this throwing, throwing up. No, it sounded like they were throwing up, getting really sick in the stall. Really? And I'm like, are you all right? I didn't know who it was. Silly comes out. He's like, I'm struggling. I can't breathe. My throat's been hurting me. I'm trying to battle through it. So Silly really, really not feeling well. I'm trying to battle through that on Championship Sunday. Oh, well, I mean, I hope he feels better. But if United need to, I'm willing to play. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you, just hop, you hop on in there, Gunless will backpack you. He's I just need to crazy. spray paint my hair white like silly and it'll be fine. Yeah, it's like he thinks he's Daenerys Targaryen. I don't know what he has going on there. But uh, 50 to 30 lead for E United early on. Gunless leading all Slayers at 8 and 6. He has been, again, an MVP contender throughout the course of this one. And we'll see if he can keep it going. And if both hard points go their way in pool play. They're looking strong. We were talking with some of the Rise Nation players back in the green room, and they were talking about how certain teams just don't even run. It's basically their equivalent of flak, right, in, in, in this game, that blocking those scarabs from, from doing the damage that they normally would. Well, at the start of this game, everyone did, and scarabs were kind of falling out of the meta. Since then, you know, people have started to stop running their flak, and now you see how it's completely making a difference. Scarabs are back and better than ever, really. Well, yeah, it seemed like as much as we saw the HC uh, used last year in Black Ops 3, it seemed like people thought this one was a little slower, a little bit more floaty, didn't have the maneuverability necessarily. And yeah, we saw them disappear, but they're back and certainly making an impact this weekend. But speaking of impact players, you got Gunless, 13 and 6, on a five streak. He's got one coming from the front, one to his left as well. He'll ultimately get gunned as John picks up the kill. But if he's going to continue to play like this, it's going to have to be apathetic. Or John, I think that, I mean, okay, I know J-Cap can do it. He's been a veteran. He's been that guy forever. But you don't usually maybe want to see him as your top slayer on your side? Uh, it's just not his typical role on this team. He's a guy that plays a little bit more passively, lets his teammates do majority of the pushing and clearing out of lanes. 73 to 61 right now. You talked about how the last time these teams met up, E United did not drop a respawn against Envious. And it looks like they're going to try to keep this going now as they're up by about 20 seconds. And Gunless is just so on point. 16 and 8. Double positive off the break of this game. He hasn't slowed down. The main stage has not shook him. You thought maybe day two, that match against Splice, he was going to get some nerves going. That didn't affect him. Playing phase this morning didn't affect him. Now, Sunday evening, when it's all coming out, guaranteeing yourself top two still just seems completely unfazed, man. Well, the big thing, too, for this United squad is, yes, they have some experience in these major LAN events on the main stage, but they come into this weekend with a tough pool. They go perfect, not dropping a single series. Then they reverse sweep on the main stage, which gave them a ton of experience there. They've basically done everything they can to mentally prepare themselves for this game. Now they've just got to execute. I'm curious, from your who we have left, obviously, in our top four with NVE United, LG, and Optic, what surprises you the most? Uh, geez, I mean, I, I predicted United to be in my top four for this weekend, so I can't say I'm surprised there. If anything, I, I would say possibly Optic Gaming. I, I mean, the run that they've now got on from the spot that they found themselves in earlier today to now having taken down FaZe, which I wasn't even sure if they were going to be able to do. It's been two years that they've been losing to that team on LAN. Now it's finally happened, and honestly, I, I see that steamroll continuing in the, in the loser's bracket. They are certainly on a roll, but back to the action here. 20-point advantage for E United. They haven't been able to bury Envy. They've kept themselves around. We'll see a Silly now playing through Grandma's house, peeking into the back there at line. Going to get yeah. backed up as the nades coming through, enjoying a little bit of watermelon. Mm. I never noticed that there. <laughs> I, 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 that's one of my favorite parts of this map, <laughs> uh, the baby carriages. Gunless will peek on out with the camo, use that to break the hill. Makes a lot of sense, nearly snaps onto Slasher, but he's got the help there of Pristini to at least leave some of the push for now. But as I say that, J-Cap cleans up two. One of the largest leagues yet for United in this game at 30 seconds. But what do we see with Envy and Luminosity in their match earlier on? Envy, who were really at a position where they were always down by about 40 seconds. They kept it close, and then in the end, they brought it back. It didn't wind up turning out for them, but they brought it within five towards the end of that game. Let's see if they can do the same thing here on throwback. Nice stop there by Apathy, showing off the shockwave yet again. And this has been a really nice hold here from E United. They're extending this lead. J Cap's trying to break in the back and secure the final seconds, but now it's going to be the rotation. Is everyone heading down to the bottom side of the map? And look who's there first. You see those red arrows, five and seven. That's going to be Pristini and Arsides. 
The brothers set up to hold down Bike Path. Persini watching the lower side, saw a shadow for just a second, peeks the corner, nice play, tries to dip behind, not able to find the second kill there as Envy gets a bit of a break. Uh, you still see five, that was Arsene's kind of hanging around there, lurking a bit, but finally ends up dropping. Yeah, I don't think they were expecting that pinch to come in. He actually had the player top ticket, the player hitting from middle, and somehow one player from Envy sneaks the sidewalk to at least contest towards that hard point for the moment. Another shockwave kill from Apathy, continuing to improve his use of that throughout the weekend. It's been fun to watch. 138 to 111 now. Envy slowly claw clawing back into things. Yeah, no one really able to push any distance for these spawns. It, again, it reminds you it kind of tracks on Black Ops 3. You have to really push both sides to get any kind of firm control. So it's just been a back and forth bloodbath. But take a look at the minimap now. You see eight. That's going to be gunless at the top of your map. You have five Arsenies rotating over as well. They're set up now for the statue for baseball field where you can rack up a lot of time. Ooh. And this is a couple hard points in a row where we've seen the early rotation from United and yep. it's been paying off. And they're in a beautiful spot. Arsene's getting a little bit ahead of himself there, peeking outside that bowling area. But thankfully, his teammates still have that blue spot. Look at the top of your minimap. Red arrows continuing to supplement this hard point. Finally, one player does spawn on out. So it's going to be Arsene by himself trying to hold off Envy. He gets to, and that's the magic United have had all weekend, Maven. Yeah, I mean, if he loses that gunfight, it turns into what kind of a two-on-two is -two they're sprinting towards the hard point. Yeah. But by him winning that, it delays the four-man push from Envy. Now they're trying to fly in, but they're set up and ready to attempt the hold off. Only one player remaining, and Gunless has gotten it done. This has been a flawless hold thus far at Statue. Gunless and Arsenis there in a 2v4 scenario somehow wipe out all of Envy. Look at this flank. They're kill. even keeping it There's close. They've got FTL jump now ready from Silly. E United at the end of the second rotation will be up by 70 seconds, continuing to show their hard point prowess this weekend. This would be three hard points in a row over Envy. Where is Envy going to find the wins? I mean, yes, indeed, they did it in the first series. You're going to have to do it in Uplink well, as well. I believe we're going to Frost. And one thing Cap did say, he said they're weak at Frost, but they played it four times this weekend. So you got, you got to improve, right? Yeah, they, they definitely have to. Another thing as well, Envy, I think, still undefeated in Search of Destroy, right? So, I believe so. Eh, that, that's the silver lining if you're a Boys in Blue fan, is even if you do drop this hard point, you've got that to fall back on. I mentioned it a few times today, but it's so rare to see such an incredible stat line like that. Apathy with reactive armor. Where does Envy begin to come back into this one now? John, 19 and 2070 in a slow hard point start to the series earlier today, now happening again in this game one. And you know, we talked about the fact that Apathy or John need to come alive here and kind of match the slaying of Gunless, but look at the kill feed. Two more for him. He's 34 and 22. He's also leading every player in the lobby in objective time at a minute 12. Again, MVP performance from him. Envy 4 in the hard point. Flasher, whoa, does actually get the kill on the Pristini. And that'll open up his opportunity to push towards this bottom bike pass side with his teammates. And Arsene's look, he realizes that. Was going to push that field out of nowhere. Callouts come in. Hey, there's three hitting Lemon and Grandma's side. We got to reset our focus. As now the push comes in, you've got JCap flooding into the hard point. Does get the entry kill. Silly now popping that FTL jump. But again, the Evo being brought out by Silly, one of the few players this weekend to use that gun. Oh, uh, yeah, I mean, really, I, one other player maybe I've seen it from, and he's been effective. He's not dominating, per se, right now at 23 and 28, but he's been doing a good job playing that aggressive role with the SMG in those close corners. But a United still holding on to a 70-point advantage now, looking to shut down this game one ultimate. But Pristini was the last one, so his final 15 seconds should be going over to Envy as we'll begin the rotation now. Uh, who just spawned up? That was number two. It's going to be Apathy. We've got a nice spawn at the bottom of Bike Path and maybe set up to win a couple of key gunfights here early on. I was actually surprised to see United even pushing for that hard point. They send almost three players through underpass. Finally, Gunless, the last one there, does get the cleanup kill. Now Apathy's all by himself on the map. Gunless oh. nearly at 40. We've, we've got to swap to Gunless for a second. Can he get that 40 bomb in game one? One kill off camo as well. He's doing such a good job in this slang role right now, trying to stay alive in this close corner, picking up time as well as, again, still leading in the objective. Gun's one that tries to push him. Stay out of oh. my hard point. Finally ends up falling, but the numbers speak for themselves as 16 points is all that is needed here for United. 72nd lead for E United. They're closing in on a game one victory. They would be two maps away from a grand finals appearance. Probably the first time ever for... What, any of these players? Yeah. Silly ever make it there? I don't um, think so. God, maybe like season three playoffs in AW, something like that, like a relegation tournament, but no, not not the big ones. At least I can think of it off the top of my head. Whoa, the FTL whoa, whoa. jump comes in. Flashy play, 
there, but is it enough for Envy? It doesn't look to be that way as he United should be able to shut it down, potentially behind the camo right. here from Gunless. Gunless should camo through this underpass area when his teammates spawn up, and they should go for the win right now on this baseball hard point. Giving up these 40 plus seconds would bring Envy within about 15, so not a comfortable spot to be in. Camo pop, not happening yet. He's feeling confident to I go think, for it. Well, I it. think because his teammate dropped right before him. Like maybe uh, yes. he wants to use it kind of with the four-man push. Had he used it there, I think two teammates dropped basically at the same time. He didn't feel comfortable about it. But if you let all this time go in, it'd be what? 230, 240 game. You're right there back at it. Now it's going to be the camo pop. He's trying to get the break. Can't find a kill yet. Ultimately, That's will 40. one tries to wrap back. 41 kills in for him. The break is there. G -G. Three points needed. E United gets it done. We talked about him in our key player matchup, Gunless. Say, hey, Apathy, anything you can do, I can do better. 41 kills on map number one as E United are two maps away from making it to the grand finals of the CWL Atlanta Open. And what do you what do you do if you're Envy? I mean, you, you've lost three hard points in a row to this squad. You obviously haven't figured out how to beat them in a respawn. Uh, I know what you do. You at least start by winning a search and destroy like you've done all weekend. I think it tells a much bigger story if Envy lose this first SND to a team like United. That could spell disaster going into an uplink game three. A 12 minute long game there with really a huge performance from Gunless and Arsides. Again, these two players continuing to stay white hot. And one interesting thing to consider, maybe for the future, uh, talking to Aqua in the back, uh, he was saying something along the lines of, like, if anyone that's scrimmed to United the most, it is Optic Gaming. So if they get to a position to play them in a loser's bracket final or maybe a final, they have a lot more experience than some of these teams do. Is United, man, they seem to have everybody's number right now. And what was also mentioned was that's basically who they learned from. All the time scrimming Optic Gaming, you're learning from Optic Gaming, and, well, yeah. you're learning from four of the best players in the history of Call of Duty. Here's your MLG primetime replay of map number one as... It started off with Envy again, doing what they can to get any little bit of time, but as the game went on, it was just E United continuing to expand on this lead. End of the first rotation, every bit of, what, 20 seconds. Then as it sets up for train, it's only about 10 seconds, but then from then on out, E United took over, and Gunless just kept going up and up in the kill feed. There he hits 20, and later on, he hits 41. You know, you see these games in respawn where maybe a player has a really big half of hard point or a really, oh, really good set of rotations, a really good half of up blank. He just kept going, like never slowed down. Just keeps racking on the kills, held on to a consistent like five to ten kill advantage over anyone in the lobby. What is it about it makes him so strong? I mean, I, I want to speak to his gun skill because that's what stood out the most to me. But obviously, it's more than that, man. Every player I've spoken to asked, "What is it about United that's so good?" Half the people just say they're an anomaly. Like, they, they, they have, their communication isn't on the same level as other teams. Maybe some of their gun skill at times can be lacking. It's just something about the squad that, that works, and it, it just doesn't even make sense half the time. Here is a look at your hard point breakdown, Maven, biggest things that stand out for you. I mean, Barn, we, we saw it a lot as Envy was desperately trying to fly in and get the break. You crushed them there, and not only do you beat them inside a Barn, but you also win that battle. It seemed like whenever Envy would get the break, there was like 15 seconds left, you'd see E United spawn out, and they'd be set up for bike path as well. They rallied those two together beautifully, and that's where the difference came for me. Barn was a big hard point for E United as well as bike path, but now we'll go into game two, which will be search and destroy on retaliation. John, he's been electric in the game mode this weekend. Apathy right there as well. But John with the sniper can definitely be a difference maker on this map when you go towards that top bedroom window. Obviously looking over bridge. He uses that crazy scope that freaks me out. It's actually overwhelming. It's, it just looks like a big spider. I don't like it. You don't like spiders, buddy? No, I do not. It's okay. I'm here. I'm here for you. <laughs> but uh, yeah, Envy has to get this one done. You just think with how they've been slammed, now four uh, overall respawns in a row. If they don't win this, it's done. I, I mean, you never want to call it over, but just with how United's been playing, you can't feel good, good about them. And so the first hard point they played in the last series, it was pretty tight, Jake Cap said. The second one, they got beat by like 120. So that's, that's a pretty big blowout for world champs. They don't feel good about the hard point against them at all. Ooh, it's got to be worrying for Envy, but looking now at this rig draft, uh, active camo brought out by JCap again. FTL jump ready to go from Slasher and Silly. Oh. One more note, too. Uh -oh. Just uh, you mentioned camo made me think of this. We saw, we saw Gunless with the last second camo uh, dump in the uplink to beat phase. That's the same thing that we saw happen to beat Envy in their uplink. So something to keep an eye on has been really, I mean, Gunless has been fantastic with camo in Search and Destroy. We saw the 1v3 he had early today. Uh, we've seen him also get it done in uplink, especially in clutch time. So keep an eye on him. He has been one of the best in the business using that this weekend. Well, I'm ready for game two to get underway. Search and Destroy on Retaliation. 
I'm looking at the screen right now. Before you guys get to see it, I already spot a sniper being brought out, but it's not on the side of Envy. It's one of our more impactful players on E United from map one. It's going to be Arsenis. Well, we'll see off the break what Arsenis is able to do with this sniper. You got to think if he makes an influence, John may be busting it out as a counter, and he's going to have vision pretty quickly. Can he get the snap? Just barely misses the shot. Whiffs the second as well. He'll have to back on up, look for some assistance from his teammates as they recognize, hey, we could definitely push this guy out. Kill most of the first engagement. That's where the submachine gun is so good from John. Yeah, and you saw, I think, a player like Josh from Splice. That's the area he would kind of navigate with that Erad and absolutely dominate. This is a scary position with the sniper. What are you going to do? Three players flying at you. Another kill with the Erad. A nice start from John, who's 2 0. Oh. You don't want to keep feeding him because if this, if this guy gets warmed up, he can just destroy. This engagement is huge, huge for Pristini. He's able to cut down Slasher. Does he challenge the bomb? He does it. He knows. All right, nobody on it yet. Only 18 seconds left. It's a pretty obvious area to be in, though, if you are silly. Beautiful shots there from J-Cap to close out the round. Envy go up 1-0. to zero. You know what's interesting, too, to think about? I wonder when the actual switch happened, but with seeing J-Cap with camo, how many 1v2s did we see from John with camo at Vegas? I think I casted three. So he was a beast with camo in the search and destroy specifically. Obviously, they got to feel better having it in J-Cap's hands. Ah, J-Cap, one of the smartest players. We were busting his chops a little bit earlier. We were talking with him as a... Uh, <laughs> He likes to troll. That's, that's just what Jake well, is at the end of the day. I mean, uh, we're uh, as casters. We're friends with a lot of the players. But uh, we, are? we have the green room You're in the friends. back where we watch the matches. And some of the guys like to come and hang out. And it's always nice to pick their brains. Jcap was back there for an hour, hour and a half as we got to talk to him a little bit about this matchup and how he feels the tournament was going. We watch Optic face them. He was also losing his mind a bit. But now for Envy, you've got two remaining. It's going to be Apathy and Slasher here trying to get a second round. They are able to find one kill. Might be able to turn this into a 2v2. This would be a huge clutch in a 2v4. As Slasher almost puts some shots in his teammate. Going to find himself all alone. The last two in front, but can't close it out. Cannot close it out there. Our cities and crew, nice job by them to bounce back from a round one loss. Here's a look at how it got done. Our cities decides no more sniper. The Envy 4 is such a good weapon. From watching it this weekend even more, it seems like players, less and less times I'm seeing players sliding into gunfights with, uh, with an NV4 from up close. Well, yeah. Uh, it's a, that's another thing, you know, speaking with Cap, you know, he talked about he, he his disgust, he hates the NV4. He'll use it in Search and Destroy. But if you think of JCap's play style, wouldn't the NV4 seem perfect? Oh, yeah. He doesn't, he doesn't really like it. Likes the k a lot more, just likes the maneuverability. Is, uh, I mean, obviously, in the, the, you know, the current Jetpack Call of Duty, he has been pretty good. It's a back-to-back COD Champs victor. Oh, Cap is the world's greatest. Jetpacker as Tom will go <laughs> down right away from Bastini. They just decide to go for it. And hey, more power to them. It's what a team like E United does. They just catch you off guard with plays like that. Again, the opening two kills for E United. Envy fighting from the back foot. It's all off the cap in the 1v3. And this time around, it's not going to work out for Envy. I know you got to make plays there, but that, that challenge soaring through the air against somebody using the van as cover, you're not going to win that gunfight typically. No. But you know, time not no, on your side. And uh, here we have Pristini. Closing it out inside of Hotel. And this would be, uh, again, never want to call the series over, but if, if Envy drops this match. I will tell you, we have seen Envy go up, be, be even for a long game, go to round 11s, obviously start from behind in these search and destroys, and they always come out on top. So I will not count Envy out in this S&D until E United defuse that final bomb or get those yeah. final kills to win. Oh, I more mean just if they lose the search in total, this series just becomes so, so much scarier if you are an Envy fan. But uh, we are watching Slasher. John has already fallen as he pushes inside, not able to take the first gunfight. Slasher, what can he do now? As again, Envy. They just keep getting first blood in these last three rounds. That's been the difference for me. As it's not like they're just getting first blood by one kill. It's been like an easy two-piece off the break for United. And then Envy players are left basically saying, okay, uh, where do we try to convert things from here? Slasher just going to possibly try to earn himself some score towards that FTL jump. As he's down to just 40 seconds, it's lost the plant. Oh, my goodness. Getting bullets in just about everybody. And look at the game that Pristini's having so far. That 7-2 and two already has the ability available. And they're feeling good. E United continue. I mean, if they haven't proved everybody wrong, there's still somebody asking the question here, which I don't know how you would. They keep showing you how tough they are. Is it Silly's hair that makes it possible for them? Is that the difference? It's so strange. I, I, I think that... I'm going to dye my hair white. 
Oh, okay. We'll see how that goes. I'm sure it'll make a major impact on your look. <laughs> I'd look the same. That's all that would change was your eyebrows and beard color. <laughs> because the rest is gone. Uh, getting into round number five. Gunless again with this objective, and this time Envy saying, no, you're not getting a free plant towards this B side. We're, we're going we're gonna to at least contest you a little bit here. Or A side, sorry. As Prasini will be the first to push on up with Reactive, and ooh, I would love to see him use this here to open up this back side of the map. If he realizes there's two in the back, he has got a huge play that he can make here, and what a lead 4-1 would be. He's waiting on the calls from his teammates, biting his time. If you take a look at the mini-map, that is still Slasher sitting all the way there in back graves. If they spot him, if his teammates spot Slasher at that back Humvee, I think Prasini 100% just uses it and challenges. But now with his teammates playing a little bit more passive, it looks like Prasini will just hold this angle. And the question is, do they check it? Because now once they know the bomb has rotated out, they're going to start to swing around. This is going to be a disgusting flank. Depending on the time, Pristini should be able to get in behind one or two players here. Oh my gosh, look at the mini-map. But one player has to spots the corner. Pristini, though, snaps right over again. The first two kills in a moment's notice go in favor of United. And there's just nobody how, left for Envy. How quickly? Does that, it's a slow build. Slow build, and the hammer just falls. And it's over in a matter of seconds. Yep. You don't win a single, like, all your one-on-one gunfights, basically every single one goes the way of United. That's insane. It's a beautiful reaction time there by Persini to get that kill towards that street, because if he loses that, think about it, that player then can flank through the top bridge, forces his teammates into a little bit of an awkward spot. Now it's a 3v3. Instead, though, United four rounds in a, in a row, right, to now go up 4-1. to one. And again, it was a 6-1 victory for Envy the last time these guys played Search and Destroy. Looks like United has learned wow. here. And again, first blooded. That's John. At least, I think, three out of the last four rounds, he's been first blooded. Three and five. And he's one of the superstars in this particular mode. So they need John to step it up in a big way. Not that there's anyone really going off for United, but JCAP is able to answer back, Jack. Envy currently 9 and 18 as a team in this search and destroy. JCAP, what can he do? He's already got one kill this round. Currently sitting at two and four this entire game. And Apathy's been spotted, so if I know this United team, they're going to begin to fly at him and take him down while he's weak, but somehow he's stuck past one. It's going to be our cities versus Apathy and Slasher. He's in the 1v2. Our cities. If he gets this clutch, this game two is just done for me. You have to close this out. Is for Envy. Let's take a look as he's going to be wrapping up top stats. Under 30 seconds to work with. He's added now a K-bar to his arsenal. You see Apathy and Slasher sticking together, playing this smart so they can trade out the kill. He checks the A site, realizes they have to be going towards B, and now the rotation going to come in. Can he catch one as they get away? I see saw one cross. He's seen both players now. Able to win the first gunfight. He has a Scarab to work with now. He thinks he's tagged up, so I thought he was going to actually push him, but Apathy playing directly underneath. Doesn't he have a K-bar as well? And does Apathy see him? I'm not entirely he sure. He should have spotted him. He had. Oh, oh maybe not. Maybe not. I don't think he did. He was basically checking like this, and now he'll at least clear this first area of the map. So, our cities moving towards this objective as oh we swap. God. Does Apathy go and check in time? I do believe he will. Oh. He sneaks away there and guns him. Oh. <laughs> that could have been deadly if our cities gets behind cover. I like that. I like to try though. Yeah, he might as well. Apathy with some awkward timings there nearly cost him, but in the end, he will win the round. Envy still back within two. Staying alive here. You see how focused Apathy and Slasher look as the rounds continue to build here in the search and destroy. Hopping into the next round, let's see what they can muster up here as they're going to be on defense. So let's check out Pristini, who has reactive armor to work with. Going to be very aggressive mid-map. Has to back away immediately. Gunless, though, finds the headshot. John answering back. Pristini looking to try and trade it out. He finds one, hits Ooh. it. Can he get into another gunfight? He's going to re-peak, able to find it, and gets it done. That's the fifth round for E United. From everything I've seen, there's just few teams better at those scrappy engagements like we're seeing from E United. They're just always appearing to be in the right spot, snapping to get the right kills. And there, Pristini uses the reactive armor. And OK, you know, maybe he didn't need to, but guess what? It won them the round, and now United are one away from giving Envy their first SND loss this weekend. And currently, I mean, that's that search and destroy, though, right? Four hits, scrappy play, snapping onto the right call out there. Communication is key, but now Envy, their game two hopes at risk, and Cap hasn't even really gotten near to a camo, but his counterpart on the other side, Gunless, kind of in the same boat. Apathy now looking forward to his first reactive armor. That could be huge if a comeback is 
And right there, another example where, you know, John just gets first blooded on Envy again. Here's a nice spot from our city. Oh, gosh, you can't let that happen. As that's, a, that's a game saving play, though, from Slash. Oh, 100%. 100%. Uh, wrap it around the back, silly. Now with the Evo, this is probably the last position you want with this Evo. Uh, well, he actually got the close range gunfight, but now it's going to be on Gunless. He's been a hero so many times, but now is not your time. Envy just narrowly staying alive here, and that, that come, might come down to that slasher gunfight. He doesn't win that, which he shouldn't have. This Aven, is probably over. Aven, I tell you, you, you said prior to that last round that United take that and go up 5-2, you think this game is done. I will not count Envy out of an s &D until the last round is over and E-United win. Simple as that. This team can make anything happen. They were down 5-2, now 5-3, and they've got two payloads to work with as well. None on the side of E-United. Sniper out for Arsides as he's trying to look down bridge. No eyes on him. It's going to be a gunfight. Now, that's the reaction about apathy. He got it. He's able to make the gunfight. And now they keep it going, trying to pressure. How do you get the pistol? And he gets away. Andy gets away, they're trying to chase him down, trying to get to the edge. I think RC gets away with his life. What a huge play. Silly Bell holding an awkward angle. His gun sticking out from behind the wall, and he will be punished for it. FCL jump, still ready for Slasher. And there goes the scare. He's going to jump in past him. Just do it. Whoop! No! Oh, peeks the corner, that's another pistol kill coming in. It's now Apathy by himself. Apathy trying not to get gun. Going to be a 1v1. 20 seconds on the clock. It's the hero, Gunless, going up against Apathy. They were our key player matchup before, and he challenges Peaks. Can't win it. A United Magic continues. They give Envy their first S&D loss. They've now got a 5-1 and one map count versus Envy so far this weekend between pool play and now the winner's bracket final. And this team of young up-and-coming players is now one map away from the grand final. Oh. <sighs> And this is, uh, again, they've been, they've been late game heroics when it comes to Uplink as well. We've seen so many tight games for E United that can get it done. But before we start talking about the Uplink, let's take a look at the replay that we saw from the Search and Destroy. I mean, what was the big standout difference for you that, that Envy couldn't get it done? Corsini for one and two was the first bloods. So many favored E United. Even when Envy would get one, for example, that last round, John just immediately traded. And just every single time you see, just look at the top right scoreboard. It's basically envy, uh, either even or at a disadvantage in kills. Pretty much few every times, round. A yeah. few times it just spot them, putting themselves in a good position, and it showed in the rounds. Now, how do envy bounce back? They get to win a respawn versus United. Now they've got two in a row, and Frost Uplink is one of them, which I'm pretty sure they're not too fond of, correct? No, no not real fond of, but they've played it a lot this weekend. So hopefully they've, they've improved. You know, they put in a lot of time here on land, which obviously you'll see people kind of from Friday, Saturday to Sunday get better and better. But Envy needs some magic. The boys in blue need their fans. Come alive for them on Championship Sunday. But we'll be right back after this short break.
Oh, this is insanity. Welcome back to MLG Primetime. It's your winner's bracket final here. Championship Sunday at the CWL Atlanta Open as things getting tight. Uh, but uh, Envy, they're going to be tested now. But you got to think, if there's anyone, anyone in the game, I know we've seen crazy comebacks from a lot of teams. United wanted that did a reverse sweep. Envy has to have just the, the strength to muster here. There's no question. There's two teams I'd want to see in the scenario who I think would have this potential to come back. Just want to make sure to remind everybody, this is not a loser's bracket match. This is the winner's bracket. So even if Envy does bow out here 3-0 or lose a series, they just drop to the loser's bracket final and await the winner of Optic Gaming versus Luminosity. Last I saw, LG was up 1-0. I know they're mid-search and destroy right now, okay. so not exactly sure where that stands if Optic or LG are in the lead. But either way, a very strong opponent, the loser of this will have down there no matter what. And that's tough, too, because how many times have you seen, I can think back in, in sports, just historically, when you have uh, a big rivalry, like a big matchup where you have to get to a big high there, it goes the distance uh, in a series like that, it's tough to then, like, you use so much ex energy, the adrenaline's so high, then to go to the next series. Sometimes you see a team fall flat. Yeah. Curious if maybe Optic's falling well, into that a little bit. I just received word. Optic fans out there will be happy to hear they did just take the S&D. So okay. it's one, one to one now, which, to, to be honest, does not surprise me. Optic have looked abysmal at hard point at times this weekend. Didn't Krim ask you for tips? Yeah, yeah, okay, that, that was funny. So they, they've been struggling in hardpoint all weekend, and uh, I had only watched, like, half of the one match because we went to get food, and I come back, and, and Krim, Krim goes, Maven! What's going wrong with our hard point? And I was like, buddy, if you're asking me, <laughs> there's a problem. Yeah. But they, they go on and then win the next two. So I'm pretty sure that my, my little words of solitude and advice there probably I are mean, what uh, led them to hard point. You victory. have as much game knowledge as my left shoe. So yeah. Crim's asking Which you. Which is something. a ton. You have pretty big feet. I do have pretty big feet. Thank <laughs> you, buddy. But no. Obviously, Optic with their hard point struggles, but where they've looked great is their search and destroy, and where Luminosity have really struggled prior to this event was SD. So, one to one there, no surprise. But this match currently underway. That team on the left side of your screen, United, looks so darn good. Up 2 0, one map away from the grand final. Ah, and this is a match where, oh, this particular map, you're going to see. Uh, sometimes a couple of ERADs come out here. Yeah. You have a lot of close range to mid range gunfights, gun and that's been one thing I know that caught a lot of pros off guard. I saw. Uh, to think off the top of my head, Mochilla was talking about it. Uh, I think Shane as well. To some of the guys that uh, were a little bit surprised by the pacing of the game here at Vegas because the amount of aggression with the E-Reds kind of caught them off guard. Yep. Which, honestly, it's sort of been something missing from the game, right? Having that fast-paced sub-player, it's always in your face. You haven't really had to deal with it for the first couple months of the game. Well, United have been one of the better teams with it so far this weekend, even bringing out the Evo. It was funny, Maven. Prior to this map starting, our director, who's been watching a lot more Call of Duty, has been getting into it a little bit more. He kind of comes in our comms and he goes, can United actually win this event? And I think a lot of people at home are asking themselves that. You and I are asking ourselves that. And at this point, the answer is yes. They actually look like they are going to win this event if they keep this play up. Yeah, it's, you got to think at some point it stops becoming a surprise. But just because the the come out of nowhere that they did during during the 2Ks, during this year, you know, I was talking to Pac-Man about what they've been doing. He's like, there's never been a team in, in history that has come back, that has come back like they've been able to. Uh, is he, I was hey, drinking water. Some water. Yeah, as soon we got as, out of that lobby really fast. As soon as we get off camera, we step up close to the TV. We're getting yeah. old. Our vision's not great as we sprinted. I wasn't expecting us to at that scale, be afraid of being in the lobby, so I was finishing my drink. <laughs> we're, we're good. All right, but uh, I, now I completely lost track of my point. But yeah, okay. uh, you were talking about Pac-Man basically yeah, said that Pac no team has ever kind of come out of nowhere like this, where all of a sudden they go from this is a you know relatively unknown team. I mean, yeah, you've heard of a lot of the players, but maybe not at the top. Like if you're a top professional player, you haven't worried about Arsides if you're Crim Six. Yeah, and then all of a sudden within a month it's like oh why, why are we seeing these guys in every single semifinal and final of the 2k and, uh, and that's the craziest part not only have these guys been great here but we talk about their online presence they've been in what more grand finals appearances than almost anybody uh face has been in four Oh, right I, I can't right think of this off the top they've of my head. Be, yeah, they've got to be three. Maybe. They certainly, they certainly are right there. Uh, it, it's insane, and that's that's when it sort of shook for me. You know, uh, I've always been one that believes in the online player transition to land. I, I always have. You've seen it in a couple of the videos. I had faith that they would do well, but when it clicked for me was when it was like three in a row where they had really good 2K finishes. Like, yes, do I think a team could have one run and that's maybe just sort of a Cinderella story? Yeah, that happens all the time. But to do it consistently every week. 
you don't do that unless you're a good team. That's where you start to take note. And now they've trans transferred it over to Lan again here. It looks like he's not wearing pants. And okay. it's <laughs> definitely is. Those flesh cover colored khakis <laughs> are really a, out there. It's an interesting decision. But you know what? I don't judge. And then we got Daenerys, the leader currently mm -hmm. of where, the United. Where his dragons are. Yeah. <laughs> Drogo! Yeah, right. Uh, currently calls him in this weekend. But uh, either way, what a pleasure it's been at the CWL Atlanta Open as we're getting underway with prime time. We've said it a few times, but we... I've been so proud of the production team and everybody here, obviously League Ops, everyone across the venue. I've been watching MLG events now for 10 years, been a part of them for really two, the last two, and this is by far the best one I've ever watched or been a part of. My first MLG was uh, 2004 in Seattle. That is how old I am. I was 12. Yeah. No, wait, 2004, <laughs> I was 10. You are 10 years old when I went to my first MLG. But yeah, this has been a, a phenomenal event. You just, you like to see it, uh, you know, kind of quality get better when it comes to matches. Then also, you know, from a production side, tournament overall, like, I feel like every single facet from Vegas to here has just been upgraded. It's been brilliant. Adam Apicello and the crew have done a fantastic job. And our buddy Ryan Thompson behind the scenes from production, he doesn't get a lot of uh, thank yous. A very thankless position at times, but he has been killing it all week long. It's been a fantastic event. Mm. Major shout out to everybody here as well. The fans this weekend been such a pleasure to meet so many of you guys out there. We've had some great crowds. So many things to do here in the venue as well. Obviously the open bracket, the new setup, PlayStation VR, which I've seen so many people uh, take part in. The, the analyst desk revamp that we've seen with the coverage of the open bracket and obviously the stats, more stats than ever before that we've brought into a broadcast. We're ready, though, now for the restart to Game 3, Frost, Uplink, E United, Envious in your winner's bracket final. And what also is crazy, we've got Atlanta this weekend. We fly home. I have to magically come up with plans for Valentine's Day. Hopefully, Don't say that Hopefully Kat's there. not watching. Babe, if you're out there, I'll, I'll figure something out. My birthday's Wednesday. Kat, Kat expect to have a six-pack of beer and some pizza. Hey, hey, that's a, a, for me, that's a beautiful <laughs> Valentine's that's Day. That's your normal Tuesday. I'll, I'll probably end up seeing the new Fifty Shades Grey movie or something. All right, let's go ahead and move on to this game three. United, they've yet to drop a respawn to Envy. They're 4-0 and o across the hard points and the uplinks they played. And now they look to keep that pressure going now. Because again, just like the optics, the phases, you cannot leave any opening for Envy to begin to come back into a game and series because guess what? They will take that and run with it. And you got to think United knows that very well because they did that to Splice, right? They were down 2-0, and then they went 18-1 to in uplink. If you shatter someone's heart like that and just break them, it allows for that run. So let's see if maybe Envy is able to do that here. Or will we see United sitting at top two with Envy having to try and fight back, Jack? I never thought that would be something that was said, and I even had a United coming into my top four this weekend. Gunless gonna fall on back for now as he waits for his teammate in middle map to maybe clear that lane out for him. Won't happen there as our cities does lose the 1v1 engagement to John, but Gunless tried to pressure towards that cliff side. It didn't work out there. And again, the Evo from Silly gets brought out and uplink on Frost. He loves it, man, and he's making good work of it. Uh, drone gonna be now in the hands of Apathy as he's just kind of flirting with the outskirts there, trying to group up with his team as they begin to push forward. Jcap gets one kill outside of Cairo. That's gonna allow Cryo is they're gonna allow them to push forward. And now you're thinking about getting points on the board. Here comes the push out of Robo. Shots in, able to find one, but it's Arcity's answering with two of his own. But the one pointer is through. It's four down, but you get something on the board for Envy. Not enough of a hold there for E United. Beautiful stuff for Envy to at least get themselves a little bit of momentum, but you see right there. The goal on this map, get the drone, get it into Robo, get it towards sub bay, move up with your teammates, and now you got to leave Locker in a, in a Scarab. Unfortunately, I do believe the player who called this in is actually dead, so they will be able to answer back with a one-point play of their own. I, I was so worried that my kill is... I thought that was going to kill his drone carry for a second. When yeah, not back well, there. that's why he got it so close. <laughs> yeah. he, he wound up not popping it early. Thankfully, smart heads up play there. One minute and 30 seconds into this game, and still low scored. Arsides starting out... Beautifully. Eight and three. He's got one more behind Dozer. Gonna lose that gunfight as Slasher comes flying over the top. Uh, this... Well, the one player should spawn. He goes over the, the top. Pad, right? Can we get a bounce? No. no. Not gonna go through. Uh, it, honestly, John, do you think he could have beat the spawn and maybe gone in for two there? He hasn't realized he's getting chased by three. Well, yeah, I was, I was trying to look at and see exactly where they were. Uh, coming up in, in that one, but I, I don't know if he would have gotten there in time. Tries for the one, doesn't work out there, but either way, still got a ton of time to work with in this game. Our city's 10 and 4, leading the map and slaying right now. No one even remotely close to the amount of kills he's put up so far. Dude, every time I watch the Evo, I'm not impressed by it. 
even right there, and Erad gets that kill, I think, a little bit quicker. No, I, I think the as he just continues to melt, but I know I think the Erad's incredible. I mean, yeah. that's been the thing that again has shocked a lot of these players. They didn't they didn't realize how good it was, and it comes in. You see, it seems like it's three bulleting people. It reloads so fast, gun up so quickly out of sprinting. It's phenomenal as a submachine gun. But silly, you know, we, Skunk doesn't use it because he's not comfortable with it. Could be a similar story there. But look at Arsenis again on defense. He is going off right now. Double positive, 13 and 6 on another three streak there. Gunless, the lead blocker, at least gets one. Not enough of a follow up, though, so far from e United as Envy should be able to stop this pressure for the moment and keep this game. Like, again, there. Takes so long to finish off that kill with the RPR Evo. And this is what's interesting, too. When you when you have these games where Gunless maybe isn't going <laughs> off, like he's having, a, you know, not, not an incredible first half. He's five and six. Somebody else is picking up the slack, right? I know he's been consistent as hell throughout this weekend, but there always seem to be, seems to be somebody there. I've seen Pristini have monster games. I mean, the only one I can think of that hasn't really been crushing is maybe silly, but he hasn't been, he hasn't been bad by any means. He's been doing some of the dirty work. We know he's under the weather. He's doing enough that they're winning their games. Yes, and now you see United... Didn't catch it on our screen, but they did throw it in for a one, so they will get the lead with a minute and a half remaining inside number one. I mean, E United right now, they just look like a championship caliber team with the performance they are putting on as they're just in form at the moment. They heard you. Envy heard it, and they get a one-pointer on the board to tie it. That was a seven streak for John. And that is what they need from him. 12 and 10. We know he has that broken middle finger and is a, a guy, I, I believe he plays claw. So some people ask maybe why that's tricky if you own a scuff. If you play claw, that's got to be painful in some capacity, I would think. Oh, <laughs> I've never played claw myself, but to those who do out there, man, I can't do it. <laughs> I, I don't even know how you make it possible. John ooh, tries to get the third. Doesn't work out, but either way, 14 and 11. Nice start from him. Him and Apathy again. This duo, when they're on point, and VR are, uh, are one of the best in the game. And they're doing it right now. 40 seconds left in the first half. We'll see if anyone able to get a little bit of separation here. That's a couple kills coming the way of Envy. And now they're going to push around the top side. A little bit unorthodox, as usually you see most of the action in through sub bay. But they're going to see it. Maybe you can get a shot up over Cryo. John able to trade out the kill. And now it's going to be in Slasher's hands. Do they try and push through for the dunk? They found another kill. He's going to try and slip through. Will the interception be there? Will the one-pointer be in? He doesn't even get it out of his hand. Oh, There's still some players from Envy to try and make this happen. Now they're all shredded. Nice defensive stand there from a United. And Arsenis just resets it. There's not enough time for any play to be made off of this. So at the end of the first half, two to two. I think both teams are really fine with that one. They can go into these final few minutes see what they can do to convert this respawn game mode. Remember, we just watched e United beat Envy in a game mode that they had yet to lose this weekend, which was Search and Destroy. But now on the uh, on the opposite side of that, Envy have yet to win a respawn versus United, and now this is probably one of the closest they've been yet. All right, you see Envy getting focused up here. Now, is, is, this map we know can be a bit 50-50, but I, I I like kind of attacking towards that helipad side. I see I feel like I see more points go through. I, I guess I'm curious with your take on it with the swap. Still play pretty 50 50. Deep. Oh, for sure. For sure. It, it's simple. It just comes down to slaying for that first middle map control. And then once you get it towards the robo side, really, no matter where you're converting from, as long as you get that second wave of kills, you can make plays happen. So I don't really take any map right now to be more, uh, have a side that's less preferred, right? Yes, certain teams like to push from certain areas, but for the most part, as long as you get the kills in the map, you should be able to convert scores from no matter what position you're in. Well, let's see what John can do with the drone in hand. He's running into a close-range ERAD. Tough fight to win when you have the K-Bar and you're trying to juggle the drone. Slasher will be there to back him up. Spraying everything. Walls, but not players dropping. And now the one-point toss in the lead has been broken open. E United puts one on the board. And look at the scoreboard right now. Five of the eight players in the lobby have gotten one-point throws in. It's a selfless play. Whoever can grab it, whoever can get the score, just get it done. Every point matters. And these are examples of games, Clint, where if maybe a team botches a throw or they get a little bit too aggressive on a push and go for a dunk and it doesn't work out, it could cost them in such tight, low-scoring games like this. And remember what I mentioned. They did it against FaZe and Uplink. They did it against Envy and Uplink. It's a late play from Gunless with Camo. That is what sealed the deal. And when you have a game this close, 3-2, it could be one pop of Camo that makes the difference, buddy. And if you look at your scoreboard, he's close enough where he'll earn it again there. <laughs> Throw bounces off the building. He knew he wasn't going to get that one, but he really didn't have much time to work with. So Gunless will absolutely earn that Camo again. Uh, I mean, unless he really does nothing for the rest of this map. But... With three minutes and 15 seconds left, 
Envy need to start getting these kills near this mid dozer area. They need to get control of the drone and really begin to dictate the pace of this game. Well, if you take a look kind of at the time that's gone through in the game and we're capping Gunless sit, they're halfway to that camo. They should be getting it somewhere with around 60 seconds or so left. So it is definitely going to be a clutch play with one of those two. Who's going to be able to pull it out? Watching Pristini now as he's getting eyes on mid map, but unfortunately the flank comes in for JCAP, so that's one more kill towards that camo. Whereas Gun Gunless finds one as well. He's their best push yet. Quite a while. This is their best push yet. Abney trying to make something happen with the drone. Hasn't earned the reactive yet. One more engagement win. No, he doesn't get it as of yet, and he does die up. JCAP is there, but the trades go in favor of Arsenis and crew. Again, it's happened all this map, but Slasher swings with two kills of his own, and now Envy will look to grab the drone again. Let's see if they can get something through. If they hit the top left side of the mini-map, they might have been able to make a play quickly as the pressure was coming towards mid-map. Slasher needs help, though. He has one lead blocker in front. Apathy finds two, but is it too little, too late? He's going to be able to get at least a one-point toss off. He gets around the corner, gets around the edge, ties it up, three to three. What an individual play there from Apathy. JCAP is elite, man. That throw, that go on in he's got the lead blocker from apathy as well with the evo 30 and 18 apathy starting to go off he's taking matters into his own hands as we have ourselves a tied game with two minutes left all i've been staring at is the building of the camo between jcap and gunless they've sat at pretty much the exact same meter throughout the course this one look at their stats 15 and 22 15 and 20 they've been in the same spot it's like <laughs> one gets a kill the other gets a kill one gets a kill the other gets a kill it's been nuts to see how tight it has been for those two one little spree here could be the difference towards the end of this game it's going to come down to the wire, buddy. They brought the drone to the outer wall run, too. I don't think United are ready for this. Three go dead. Gunless is last one alive. He's trying to go supplement his teammates, and he's not there in time. He gets killed off. Slasher there with the lead block. This should be a potential score for Envy, unless United can get an interception or a crazy stop on this throw. It's a you miss. They it's missed. a miss. It's what I talked about earlier. This miss could define the game. The beatdown from Silly, and now E United are on the offensive. Oh God! Another you, kill. You should have the edge there, but now it may be the counter opportunity for E United. They're pushing forward, but it's two kills coming in on defense. So Arsenis having to hit the wall run, try and stay overdrive. Alive. He's got overdrive for this game as it goes on. They do try to force a scarab play to happen, and. You're actually gonna you're gonna see this player from United just blow it up and immediately try to make a play. I, I don't think we're gonna see Camo actually. I mean, Jacob and Gunless have been so quiet here. I don't think they're gonna build towards a second. It, so who's gonna be the hero? Who will it be? Envy. They lose map positioning for a second. The drone now picked up. You've got Pristini trying to make something happen, but the, the pass didn't go off in time. Gunless is the last one here. 25 seconds remaining. Will we see ourselves in overtime? It's absolutely looking that way. All right, it's gonna be Jacob pushing back. He grabbed the drone there, tried to toss it forward, but he's got to deal with Silly first. Silly, Great though, play by Silly. With the Evo, makes the play. He has the FTL jump to oh, work with. This is a dunk. He should be through. This should, this be, should a be a dunk. There's five seconds left. Is this going to be the 3 0? He puts it through. Oh, and there's my no time left. goodness. E United in the final seconds. Envy miss a one point throw. And guess what? E United capitalize on it. They beat Envy again, and they will be your first team in the CWL Atlanta Open Grand Finals. It's like we, we the play from Sne uh, Silly was sneaky to begin with. I just wasn't thinking it was actually lead to a score. It was so wide open. You look at the minimap as soon as he finds the kill on JCAP, there's nothing in front of him. They had zero expectation of him being there. They said there's no way Silly, the final man, can be in this spot. So what do they do? They overcompensate and play towards middle map. They send two players there, and JCAP has nobody near him. So Silly gets that kill, gets around the corner. And what I love most about that play is he doesn't get greedy and go from a very easy interceptable play. Where would you where would you expect him to go? Right towards that inside cryo window, go for the throw. There's always players there ready to intercept, yeah. but instead he darts to the outside of the building back towards helipad, throws up the one, and now E United will be in the grand finals of the CWL Atlanta Open. Well, these aren't our only two teams remaining. We've still got Optic Gaming going up against Luminosity. Let's toss it over to Ben in the studio. Thank you very much, Maven. We have to jump straight into a Bravo matchup right now. It's Optic Gaming versus Luminosity, and this one has been insane. In the past minute of gameplay, we've had an interception. We've had a oh. failed two-point play. 
As it stands, Luminosity are eight five up in the uplink. This, of course, is a map three. The game currently tied at one map apiece. The hard point was taken by Luminosity, two fifty to one seventy eight. Search and destroy went the way of the Green Wall, six to three. Uh, but but TV, these hard point woes for Optic, they need to fix this if they want to make a run. Just an absolute mess on the game type. I talked to Krim right before they went over onto the stage to. Oh! Oh, speaking of that, I'm not even going to finish my sentence. An overdrive barely failed right there. That was sort of the last chance, the last ditch effort for Optic to take this uplink, but I don't think there's enough time for them now. But anyway, back to my point. This game seems to, like it's going to be over. Yeah, LG has control. This is done and dusted. So basically, Crim said they have to play faster. I, I don't think that's their issue at all in the hard point. They're not taking their time to group up as a team. It seems like teams are stacking the hill more. We saw, we, I look at some of the, the players' stats on these hard points against them. And Slack, for example, is like the sort of close range SMG or SMG type player that are playing, right, right. playing primarily in the hard points. He had over two minutes in the hill. I don't see someone on Optic besides really formal getting in the hill in tandem with each other, if that makes sense. So I think teams are just over stacking the hills on Optic Gaming. And they have no idea what to do. You can play fast all you want, but if you're pushing at the wrong areas and not grouping up effectively, it won't matter. I think the biggest thing is that we've seen from them in Hardpoint, the one way they're winning these games is just heavily outslaying the opponents. And it's like by like a landslide, like 15, 20 kills. It's like any time the kills are near even between these teams, it's not going in Optic's favor. So that tells me, you know, one, they, they got to get everybody clicking on all cylinders. You know, Crim's had some off games. Same with Skump, which is like really rare. We don't really see him put together some bad games, but you know, need to rotate. Need to get those big kills on rotation. They won that hard point against FaZe Lancaster on throwback with some big plays late on the rotation. They need to do that consistently. Against like a team like LG, it's going to be very difficult. Of course, it isn't over for Opti Gaming. They are 2-1 down, though. Backs fully against the wall. One map away from elimination. Momo, I mean, we, we've seen them clutch up before. I mean, we saw earlier on in today. Can they do it again? I mean, Opti Gaming, you know, nothing's impossible with these boys. But the one thing that I, I'm scared for them at the moment is... I looked at LG versus Infused, and they were having a bit of a, you know, Octane had a bit of an off game, and they still kind of came through. This time, they've got all four players firing on all four cylinders. They are smashing it. Octane's playing a lot better. Slacked is still going insane. Like, Great. I, I, I uh, came back after a two-minute break of watching the hardpoint. I saw that they were winning, and then I was like, what's Slack doing? I look over, and he's like 33 and 20 or something like that. He, he for me, has been fantastic for Luminosity Gaming. And going into, you know, another hardpoint, it's going to be very difficult. It will be indeed. We'll keep you updated with that. But for now, we've been talking a lot about the stops on the tour for the CWL. Obviously, coming up next, Dallas. But after Dallas, I'm excited to say, of course, Anaheim. We love going to Anaheim. I feel like me and you were talking about this, like, yesterday. Anaheim is just an unbelievable event. It has some of the best crowds in there. Of course, you can see the Anaheim Convention Center, $200,000, 160-plus team open bracket, plus an all-star matchup as well. Team, it's going to be a wonderful time. Some of the most memorable moments we've had at MLG in tournaments in general for Call of Duty Esports. Uh, you know, Anaheim's sort of where it started. A lot of big storylines. Yep. I love playing at Anaheim. I'm not a player anymore, but I won there three <laughs> times. Lots of trophies there. Yeah, pretty good performances at Anaheim. I imagine you have an idea of where Anaheim's located. <laughs> yeah, uh, somewhere. <laughs> really? Yeah, somewhere. West Coast? Yep. Yep, around LA, yeah. Uh, I've, I've dreamt about it. I've been really impressed with how well you've learned. <laughs> this uh, I mean, this is actually my first MLG. I mean, Anaheim... Sitting at home, admittedly, you know, I wasn't picking up the trophies like these two guys, but it was where all the storylines were kind of made. For me, it's something, it's kind of historic, and that's where, you know, the, you see the, even just kind of pictures of just thousands upon thousands of people watching these fantastic games, and it's, uh, it's going to be a good one, but of course, Dallas first. It, it definitely will. Some of the best crowds, as you mentioned, TP. I'm so excited to be heading back there later in the year, of course. Uh, as we saw in the main stage, though, I do want to just kind of quickly touch on that, Matt. E United, you called it a swift 3-0. That's a dispatch of ME. 6-1 in maps against Envy specifically. Who beats these guys now? I, I feel like even though we've been saying, like, how good they are, we're still kind of, like, selling them short a little bit. Yep. I mean, I, I thought they were going to win that series, not in that fashion, though. But, I mean, this is a team that has not lost to anyone yet. You know, they're very good in the respawn game modes. They play really smart. Pristini in the search and destroys has been very consistent. It's going to be tough for anybody to beat them. I mean, right now, I mean, they have to be the favorites without a doubt. I mean, they have not lost anybody. You know, they've looked very strong in every facet of the game. It's either Gunless or it's Pristini. Every single game, one yep. of these two puts an MVP performance on, and there's nothing that another team can do. Every time we see a Gunless pop in, you know, a 40 bomb in hard point, Pristini going off in the search and destroys, we saw in the retaliation. Yep. Oh, he, what, it was like the third round. We looked away for one second. We looked back. He's at nine kills already. We're like, what is going on here? Just the 1v1 situations going so well for these guys. And MVP, 
I think you can, you can throw say. you can throw the experience thing out of the window. I mean, yeah, that's gone. Yeah. You know, they go up against Splice. Splice, the more experienced team, they beat them. They go up against sweep. Phase, most experienced team. You know, in that matchup, they beat them. They go in against Envy. You know, they the Envy's played on the biggest stage of them all. Really hype match, winner bracket final. They beat them. So I think the whole experience thing. You know, they're not used to the stage. That can all go away. Here's the thing I'm worried about, though, and this is something that you kind of briefly talked about when we run backstage and grab some food. They play against Optic Gaming. If they play against something, we should say, of course, something have to get there first. The crowd. It's a different beast. I mean, it's a different beast. Uh, you're going to get up on the stage. You're not going to be able to hear yourself think. I mean, I remember we've you know gone on the stage and played. You know, and he was playing against Optic, and well, I mean, we you can't hear each other. I mean, the, the the place is so loud, and I think that can definitely be really jarring, especially if Optic makes it back. They're going to be hot. I think if United makes it there, you know, obviously they're there. If Optic makes it there, I think they got to win that first series. I think you let Optic kind of hang around, you let the fans get into it more, you know, the more high, but it would be very difficult to win a second series. For me, I, I just kind of want to go back to United uh, just for a second and just almost look at what Envious have done. We were just kind of hyping up how MVP performance apathy was doing. JCat right, was on right. form. If we actually look what United has done, they've three won them in the pools, they've three nil them on main stage. It's just to kind of take that in, you know, sit back, soak it up for a second. It, it's almost kind of surreal of what these four players are actually doing. And I, I just think, you know, can anyone stop them right now? And I think Optic may need that fifth player as the crowd if they get there. And, and they haven't had an easy road. I mean, they beat the, uh, you know, uh, one of the best teams, if not the best in Europe in Splice. Mm. Then they go past FaZe, who's a very tough team, one that we may have considered, you know, a favor coming into this one. And then Envy, they beat them after how good Envy has looked all tournament long. I mean, it has not been an easy road for E United as well. Very true indeed, of course, though, for up to Gaming. If they do want to get all the way to the Grand Final, they yeah. have to go past Luminosity Gaming, uh, a team who, I mean, they've had a fantastic, fantastic event so far. A lot of people kind of doubted them a little bit coming in. But let's take a look at their journey through the bracket so far. Luminosity, of course, having a fantastic event, but I mean, you saw the stats there. Slacked, what an event he's had. We were talking about that control freak MVP. I mean, if Luminosity keep on going, if they keep trudging through this bracket TP, we have to consider him in that conversation as well. Oh, for sure. The amount of time he's averaging per hard point is absolutely insane. And the fact that he's getting in so many confrontations, I think that's really the difference maker. And Optic needs to be scared, scared going into a Scorch hard point. Optic hasn't had much success on Scorch. I don't think they've won it one time. Going up against someone like Slacked, this might be done. This is the, the thing, though. I feel like every time we talk about Optic Gaming, they just they find a way of clutching. They, they just do, right, Matt? Like, I, I feel like, although you're completely right, if you base this off statistics, yeah. you'd be like, Luminosity's going to win this. They're a fantastic hardpoint team. Optic, they're going into an unpreferred map. But it's Optic Gaming. We've seen them do it all throughout today. A lot of close games, though. I mean, eventually, yep. you think the match has got to run out. But, <laughs> I mean, Luminosity, the one thing I look with them is we've seen you know, monster games from Classic. Slacked. Octane as well. It's like... You must feel like Saints is due for one. Like a hard point game on, I know, a very close map, close quarter engagements. Like you almost feel like Saints is due for a big game. Like he hasn't had one yet that I've seen thus far, but he's just so talented of a player. You think this may be one? I, I think Saints, you know, very early stages pool play against, you know, the lower tier teams. He kind of bossed it. But we talked about it. We said, you know, when he comes against the likes of Optic Gaming, you know, he'll be putting up neutral, for example. You know, it's not a bad thing by all means to go neutral against Optic Gaming. Uh, but yeah, I think he's well overdue, you know, a bit of a, a stellar performance. If he does go off al alongside the likes of Slack, this could end in four. It could be bad news for uh, the Green Wall. I think that's one of the big questions. If, you, if you're an Optic Gaming player, how do you shut down Slack? How do you shut down this player? Who is it you look at, TP, that says, you know, you have to step up to the plate and you have to deal with this, this issue in Luminosity? It's tough to say. I mean, initially, you just have to say Scump. Scump needs to 
just go off like we know he can. And Scump and Formal have been playing really well today. Yep. Maybe it's up to Karma, really. Maybe that's the, the difference maker in the hard points. He's, he's been getting a little bit less altercations in the hard points. Maybe he's the one that's playing too slow. I don't know. I think it's a combination thing. It's tough to pinpoint one person. I don't yeah. want to put the blame on any of them, to be honest, because the games have been close. Something not clicking, though, obviously. Karma was really good in the closeout game against FaZe yeah, on throwback hard point. So maybe it is Karma. I think, uh, you know, you really need Krim to step up. Karma, for me, is more of a player who's going to, like, fill gaps, you know, just pick up those situational plays. I think that third slayer on the team needs to be Krim. In terms of predictions, though, for this one, of course, we, have, we, we will go to a live look in with the Bravo streamer and kind of give you all that information there. But, Memo, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to start with you. Prediction for this one, I, I'm going to throw you under the bus. You did say Luminosity was going to take it 3-1. Are, are you staying I'm with gonna, that? 100% I'm sticking with that. And wow. I know it's not a, a fan favorite choice, but Luminosity for me have just looked fantastic. I'm going to lose Luminosity 3-1. Okay. Oh. Uh, Matt? Trying to think of the last time I saw Optic play this map. I remember watching it in the 2K against FaZe. They went at 250, 249. I don't remember watching them play it in a game I've casted so far at this event. It was 0%, like TP said last time we Oh, really? OK. So at this event, last time we checked. I'm going to say Luminosity closed it out here. I, I know it's probably not the, the fan favorite pick. It's not the sexy <laughs> pick, but I'm going to take Luminosity. Teep, you've been a part of those magical, magical runs throughout your career. I, is this the end for Optic Gaming? <sighs> I think, I don't know. I think the, magic, on, right? the magic's going to keep on going, I think. I think they're going to somehow squeeze out a win. I think they may have won it one time in the loser bracket, maybe versus Elevate, actually. Okay. If I remember correctly, they're able to clutch it up. So maybe they can do something similar here. Again, I'll have to double check all that. It's been a lot of games throughout loser bracket for these guys today. So it's, they got to focus on these rotations. Seems like they're doing a better job of recognizing those sort of situations now. Usually what we see from Optic Gaming and Hardpoint, traditionally at least, is they're able to snowball multiple hills in a row. Throughout IW, I just haven't really seen it. They don't pull away ever. Uh, and what do you think that actually is, man? Which is weird because you figure in this game, I know, as like last year, where you could earn those score streaks and abilities a little bit faster by you know taking some of those hills, you figure you would be able to snowball games in your favor a little bit harder than usual. Uh, just taking a look at the scoreboard here, really early in this game, obviously very close this moment in time. Turbine Hill in control to Optic Gaming, but. I know Octane getting off to a slow start for LG, not a good sign. On the other side of things, uh, Formal has just been unreal. I think all tournament long, Formal's just been a monster. But expect the Octane to kind of even things out. Scump, if he doesn't pick it up, though, could be a loss. Yeah, I think uh, touching on what Matt said there, Formal, he's just doing what he does best. And he's been very, very consistent. I think I've seen him have one off game. Uh, of course, I've not seen every single game that they have played. However, uh, rotations on this is so important. Scorch, it was very much like um, breakout. We saw that Optic Gaming did pull out the victory on uh, previously. That was against FaZe. So I, I do think Optic Gaming have got better throughout this whole tournament at Hardpoint. We saw them taking you know, victories over Panda, for example, who they previously lost to. Uh, I think they may be... Uh, you know, gelling a little bit more, but I'm just going to go back to it. Octane, I saw him start slow on Uplink against Infused. I saw him start slow on Hardpoint against Infused. I hope this 1 and 5, now 1 and 6, does change very quickly. It, looking at formal score lines in the past couple of hard points too, people are, probably won't like what I'm about to say, but it's been a very similar story for, throughout all these guys, right? Formal has been obviously on top of the leaderboard. Uh, above 30 kills, 40 kills every single game. Maybe it's the way that Formal's playing that might be a little bit slow, but uh, when the guy's putting up know. so many points, <laughs> you know what I mean? I'm trying to you know, hold all players on the team accountable, right? Yes, he's the one leading in the stat category for sure, but is that hindering someone else? Think deep, uh, you gotta think more deep. Are, are we trying else. to blame the guy that's double positive every game? I don't think he's trying double to pause. No, no, no. He's not double positive. So. I'm mean, gassing a little bit. I don't know. I'm just hey, thinking, a bit, really thinking a little bit. Like, uh, look, maybe I guess he plays some different positions, gives no, some that's, of those power positions to other players. That's what I'm trying to say. Right. So I, I understand that argument. But then on the other side of things, it's like, well, if I'm shooting significantly better than everybody that's else, if I put them there, they're going to die. And now nobody's getting any kills. When the guy's putting up 40, I mean, Formal's looked like at least a top three player at this tournament. Oh, so man, I'm not by no question, means yeah. putting him, you know, on the burner for, for right. losing hard points for sure. Sure, I'm just trying to figure out what that issue is. I, I just kind of go back to the point yeah, I'm going to point it out. Octane currently 3 and 9. I mean, you think about those like AR fights you're going to be having. Formal currently sitting at 7 and 7. You've got Karma really stepping up a little bit. 11 and 7. TP, that was a player you said really does need to have a, a bit of a better performance just to guarantee Optic Gaming to take this to a map number 5. But Momo, so far, what's been going wrong for Octane? Why isn't he finding that groove that we know he can get into? I, I honestly think it, it is that maybe the positioning that we talk about. And the fact, let's not forget who he is going up against in those assault rifle battles. Whether it's Formal, Scum, you know, Scum's using, you know, the K-Bar 
Bar, just like everyone else, he's not rocking that ERAD. So he, he's going up against, of course, a very uh, hard opponent, but he had the same difficulties against the likes of Infused, which they still won. So I think it's something, you know, he, he may be finding just a little bit tricky. I, I don't know whether it's just this championship. And, and way back at Vegas, the only games that Octane got into trouble in were the close quarter maps because of the OSA, because he loves using the NV4. You're just not going to win those gunfights. So a map like this, you're going to see a ton of K-Bar, maybe an ERAD. The NV4 are going to be a little bit tougher to use. Fair enough. As it stands, the score line 93 to 78. Luminosity starting to come back a little bit into this one as they hold over towards that bridge hard point. So plenty of time left on that hard point. Now, uh, Memo, you you're still confident in your prediction here that Luminosity is going to take this one? Uh, I still think they are. Um, he's good. I do want to go back to it that Octane on a five kill streak there. He does bring it back literally and, as we're talking about him. And that was something that you highlighted as well earlier on. He's had very, very slow starts on nearly every one of his games so far today, but he consistently steps it up. Yeah. Uh, how, how is that happening? Is it just he's catching fire? I mean, if, if someone is a, a slow player at the start of the game, I, I, I don't want to say that's him because I've seen this guy for years and it's not been the case. You know, he's always been the one, almost been the, the, the one with the highest KD, the top slayer, if you like, sitting back, getting those important kills. I, I think he may have just had a bit of a, another slow start, but he's found his groove. He's 12 and 12. At least watching for me, the biggest thing that I can kind of you know take from this is like, uh, T, you, you watched a ton of last year, that when... When Optic Gaming would get off to, you know, a pretty good start and the main slayer for the other team would struggle, they would not be up by, like, 20 points. They'd, They'd be up by uh, games. 120 points. 120 points. Yeah, it just seems like they're just letting these teams hang around for way too long when it's like, you know, we have the advantage early, we got formal really click in, all they need is one other piece to get going. It just seems like they're starting to really slow lackadaisical in some of these games. Uh, and why do you think that is, Teep? Like, what is the cause of that slower play? So, traditionally, in slower hardpoint, it's usually the first person that dies in any sort of situation. When the other team tries to break, they get to the position to block a spawn. It's whoever first dies in your initial setup is usually the one to blame and is the reason that the other team breaks. So maybe it's that person pushing out a little bit too far on these hold from Optic Gaming. Maybe it's the rotations. Could be multiple things. But finally, the things we've been talking about, the optic <laughs> snowball seems to be happening here. They held the majority of the last kill. They're able to win those intro fights over here towards this top lab area, and here it goes. You see the score finally transition after all these kills. You look at the scoreboard now. They're out slaying by, what, six, seven, eight kills about now, but you see it finally transitioning to the scoreboard. Of course, this a loser's round seven matchup. The winner of this will go on to the loser's bracket final, where Team Envious awaits. I'm sure they're uh, watching this game intently, trying to get as much information as they can about how the these two teams play. You'd expect them to know a fair amount so far already, but you know, every bit of information definitely helps. Luminosity trying to come back into this one, Matt, but has Optic Gaming done enough already, do you think? No, I don't think so. I think you're going to see the next uh, you know, 10 or so seconds go to LG. See, they do have players on the bottom side of the map rotating over here towards Drill, and they see that's the type of situation where Octane, he's there in position. He's in the right spot for Drill. It's just that NV4 versus K-Bar battle. It's very difficult up close. Well, the one thing I'll say is Saints, we talked about him maybe having a bit of a better game. He, he certainly stepped up. He's the first player out of the eight hit 20 alongside Karma. You know, Karma notoriously not a player to put huge numbers up. Both of these players are stepping up here. Optic Gaming, though, they... I'm not going to say a, a comfortable, but this has been very consistent. For the last kind of three minutes, they've had a, a 40 to 50 point lead. A big, big break, obviously, onto the hard point. This is looking good for Optic Gaming. If they can just continuously trade out here, you know, put 200 on the board, this is looking good for a map five. Obviously, we, we heard from Karma earlier on in his post-game interview. He's talking a little bit about his 1v1. He was like, you know, I, I don't know what I was doing. I, I just managed to win it somehow. I think that's a testament that to, is karma, to, though, to him. Exactly that. It, it, it's just he clutches. He always finds a way to clutch it. And he, I feel like he can transfer that to The thing that I always think of is that uh, Ghost Champs, when he sniped you in the back of the head. <laughs> yeah. It's like he, he just like, like there's just some things like he just plays differently. He just makes these decisions where you're just like, what the hell is he doing? And like, <laughs> so in the moment yeah. is the best way to put it. It. He get, he's a very emotional type of player. He he's one of those players that like moves with the game. If that makes sense, <laughs> I do that at home. Oh. <laughs> it's funny to see. Moves with his controller in his hand. He's trying to peek around corners whilst playing. <laughs> I actually think I can dodge the bullets being shot at me. <laughs> I can confirm you you can't. Uh, one ninety nine to one sixty. It seems Luminosity starting to to make a little bit of a game out of this one potentially. Of course, as it stands, Luminosity are two one up in the series. A win here would knock Optic Gaming out of the CWL Atlanta Open. Yeah, I think a really important uh, part now is we get into the stage of the hard
hard point. A lot of payloads are coming in, and utilization of the payloads are so important. We saw previously the likes of FaZe, Clayster, who used his camo on that barn hard point, got nothing, lost the game. They need to use it. We see reactive armor being used there, and uh, Luminosity, they're closing that gap here, Ben. And, and Saints has stepped up uh, into another gear right now. Yeah. 27 and 18, he's just gone on a, a period of the past couple of minutes when we've been talking, he's just continuously started to slay, 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 and you're starting to see Karma slow down as well. That's so important to note, 23 and 20, and you can see that reflected in the score, TP, 202 now to 185. Very even slaying oh. in right now. Saints able to go up top through that doorway and pick up two kills, flooding in now with his team. Should be able to wipe it out, but no, Skump and Karma somehow get to that box and clean it out again. I thought LG was going to be very <laughs> easily able to oh. clear that one out, but Skump and Karma completely take it over. It was a close slaying game for just a second, but now Karma's on an absolute tear, picking up these players at wall run, top hallway. There's nothing that LG can do now. That realistically may have been the game for LG. I mean, right there, if they're able to get in and get a hold there on Turbine, they come in and probably end up taking the lead, but just a fantastic play. I believe it was uh, Skump and Karma there to be able to pick up some kills. It's going to be very difficult. I mean, LG, they get back the hill here, but they got to get all the way across the map now. Yes, they do. It's going to be tough. 230 to 191. We've seen teams make fantastic holds so far here in Atlanta on exactly this hill. Memo, you feeling confident? Can Luminosity do it? Can they break quickly and then take control of the game? Optic Gaming is theirs to lose right now. They've got full control. I think Optic should close this out. I think they will close this out and prove me wrong here. However, payloads are important. Here is Classic. He's going to be utilizing the camo. He's going to pick up one, but teammates <laughs> fall in oh. three down. They've got the chains now. However, 45 seconds, they cannot end it here, but they have to hold on. And this is scary, Teep. This is very, very scary. How'd they spawn there? Optic gets the back spawns very close to the hill. They I thought they should have spawned out a little bit further out towards Cave like they're getting now, but regardless, the trade's going down back and forth. Crim in a tough situation. Wins the second gunfight somehow, though. Oh. And the third at Hallway. Oh. Ian Porter, Crim 6, absolutely clutching up for the... Optic Gaming squad right now, and that should be it. Uh, and that's going to be the map, absolutely 250 to 210. That spawn. <laughs> yeah, LG has definitely think they have broken that spawn. They had no idea they were coming from the back cave. They expected that, you know, after you wipe them out, spawn all the way across, coming across the bridge, and uh, does not happen. Once again, Optic Gaming just find a way to clutch up. You, you can doubt them. You, you can see the stats <laughs> on paper. It looks like it's going to be Lula CTP. You called it, though. You just can't the write them out. It, it, Something it, is just working for them today. They shouldn't be in this round, but they're here. They shouldn't have won that map, but they did. How long will the magic go? You, you tell me, you've been a part of this. You, you, you've you seen these moments your entire career. You can <laughs> feel it. Moments. Like when you're I, like the I team that's happening, answer. but you can feel it. I hate this answer, but you just feel like you can't lose. <laughs> Like, it's, I'm just laughing. How, how do they win that? Uh, uh, <laughs> everything sense. seems to go your way, right? How'd they win the Panda game? Some things are just yeah, unexplainable. Right? Like, even Karma said it himself. You're blessed. So, Damon, how'd you play that round? He goes, I don't know. <laughs> and they, they won. <laughs> They're here. They're dominating <laughs> somehow. A crazy, crazy uh, ending to that one. Of course, that game not over just yet. That will be going to a game five. Uh, before we jump straight into that one, though, let's take a pro points update right now. Of course, this is just going to be North America. We can kind of see how things may be shaping out. Cloud9, wow. the team that was in the final last event, moves from second to seventh. Panda Gaming moves from 13th to eighth. Rise is now out of the top three as Panda well. Panda somewhere dancing. I mean, I imagine the Panda <laughs> Masco is definitely having a fun time with that news. Uh, Allegiance drops out of the top nine. And bear in mind, you would need that top nine to make it into the Pro League. E United guarantees themselves the top three as well. I mean, Matt, uh, that's a lot, a lot of changes right there. Well, what's your take on that? I, I mean, that's a lot of changes without counting, you know, all the pro points on the line at ESWC next weekend. I mean, Cloud9, they go from two to seven. Realistically, they throw up another dud of a performance. They find themselves right with Allegiance outside of the top eight. Right, a lot of changes in North America, but let's take a look at any of the changes that may have occurred over in Europe. All six pool play teams got top 16, further distancing themselves from the rest of Europe. Top six, of course, make the global pro league. I mean, are you expecting to see any different teams, uh, Memo, try and break in, or do you think that top six is now potentially settled? I think that uh, is pretty much set in stone, and the one team that I really had uh, a lot of hope for was Epsilon, you know? They had to fight for open bracket. They did. They make it, made it out alongside Imperial, but I thought Epsilon would go on maybe a little bit more of a run. They actually dropped out, of course, um, 
a little bit before that. I spoke to Desire. He was so disappointed. He was be behind on pro points, that squad, before they came here. They needed a big performance they didn't provide. And um, I think they're going to fall even further behind. Uh, of course, we all know the stories over from the APAC region of the Australian teams not telling each other they're coming. This, of course, the, the update from there. Tainted Minds maintains number wow. one with a um, 600 pro point lead on Mind Freak. I mean, we're, we're talking that is minuscule. As only the top one, of course, make the pro league. Top two make CWL Dallas pools. So, I, I, I mean, that gap, TP, it's nothing. 600 pro points? I mean, phew. Mind Freak's happy they did pretty well here. Yeah. They, they must have caught up pretty heavily. I'm not sure how many points they actually yeah, got for their place in here, but very good. Tainted Minds had a pretty good run in a lot of the 2Ks, so this makes up for a lot of that. And uh, you got to believe Mind Freak goes home, feels pretty good about themselves. They kind of build on this. The one thing I look at is top two make Dallas. Settle at Dallas. Who's the best team? You know, uh, top one makes it in. <laughs> There's only one way to find out. They're both going to make the pools. I don't think any other APAC team can contest that top two at the moment. So it that's, just makes Dallas even more exciting. Yeah, that's Chiefs would be the next closest one. But, I mean, that's so much pressure, right? For, for those two teams, you think about, okay, settle it in Dallas. But <laughs> the, the gap is so small. I mean, that, that's, a, that's a crazy, crazy ending. And, and uh, potentially for that Tainted Minds bows out really early. I think I saw last night, I checked the bracket. Uh, they had a bye round one, a bye round two. They win round three, they lose round four. So realistically, they beat one team. Uh, you know, they go into <laughs> losers, and I, I don't really know what happens after that. <laughs> but no, Mind Freak, I mean, they start in pool play and yep. they don't have to go through the rigors of the open bracket, oh, they realistically could have made even, uh, even closer in pool A. Very true. Uh, of course, we're following the Optic Gaming versus Luminosity Gaming matchup for now. I believe the players are, are just getting everything set up, so we're going to go to a quick commercial break. When we return, more action here at Championship Sunday.
welcome back to Championship Sunday here at the CWL Atlanta Open, hosted by Major League Gaming. Coming up next, uh, we're going to go to a Bravo look and, of course, staying with Optic Gaming versus Luminosity. That one going all the way to a Game 5. Every time we kind of doubt Optic Gaming on their journey so far here on Championship Sunday, they prove us wrong and they're going to continue to do so. I mean, we can start earlier on in the day. They've had those clutch moments. I mean, go back to that game versus Panda. I mean, that, that was absolutely crazy. The Panda guys had a massive, massive support. I think it's, it's fair to say, T, Panda kind of blew that one. Oh, fair to say. <laughs> absolutely. There's no way Optic Gaming should still be in this tournament. But regardless, they still are. Somehow they get it down to this round 11. And Karma <laughs> played that 1v1 very strange. Went into that back sort of corner of the map. In to that back sort of corner of the map. In hindsight, very smart play because the player had not uh, really enough time to search all the areas of the map. But oh man, <laughs> <laughs> is bro, anyone bro, else bro. trying to live? What Formal said. I, I I see you recording that in the background there, Memo. I mean, Formal getting up, just saying choke. You yeah. choked. You choked. You choked. And you choked. They had a 5-2 lead, and somehow, some way. Optic Gaming just refused to die. And that has been the story all of Championship Sunday so far for the Green Wall on that massive, massive journey through the loser's bracket. Matt, I, I asked TP before, how long do you think that this magic is going to last? <laughs> I mean, uh, who knows? It kind of reminds me, uh, <laughs> was it UGC, Niagara, yep. lose round one. And then uh, what was our first match after that? It was like a, it was a game five against like Nihil and them. Yep. I think we ended up winning it, and then it was like a game five against Vex. Yep. Next time, it's just like, you start creating this magic game five, game five, game five, and then by the time you get back on the stage, you do the taking. I feel like the, the worry for, for many, and if you, you look back in Call of Duty Esports history, is though too many game fives can take so much out of you. Because bear in mind, as soon as you get to that grand final, you've got to win two other best of fives. It's not like it's just one set. Team, are you maybe worried that they may run out of energy, or is there enough still left in the tank? I mean, it's a factor, but I mean, let's be honest, how much do these players grind on a daily basis, right? True. They're used to playing this amount of time, for sure. Yes, the matches are more stressful. There's there's a lot more on the line, but when you get a bunch of those wins in a row, especially come out, coming off of a big map five number win, which they, it could definitely happen right here. Yep. When you go on to the next match, you have such a momentum edge on your opponent. Uh, it, it's a confidence boost. Like Matt said, you just, you know, like something's just going right with you on a given day. The COD gods are in your favor, I guess, whatever you <laughs> yeah, want to call like a, it. It's, it's a weird thing to explain. It's like you just kind of have this feeling like, you have no kind of proof or and whatever, but you just feel like you're just going to and win. And one more point. When you've played that many maps in a row, all those weak maps you may have had, you're learning a lot each time you play it on Very a different true. type of opponent. So that's definitely going to help them go. The maps start to blur together. You just yeah. don't even remember what's going on. Well, we can jump straight into our live looking over on the Bravo stream. Uh, of course, Optic Gaming versus Luminosity. This a game five. Loser goes home. It's the first round here in the Search and Destroy. Uh, Memo, I, I want to ask you a question, though, before we get into it. You doubted Optic Gaming in map four. Are you still doubting them again in map five? I think Luminosity needed to close it out in that hard point. I thought they would. They haven't. And now they've given Optic Gaming a lifeline. A li not only a lifeline, but they've given them the momentum. And that's the problem is Optic yeah. Gaming, they go to these game fives, they gain momentum. And it, it can be very, very dangerous to say the least. Uh, and I think Optic Gaming now. It's theirs to lose, Bear. I, I, I say that, you know, almost a little bit hesitant, but I mean, look at it. Straight away, round number one, we've got Slack to the one versus three. It's quite funny that, like, at COD Champs, like, the, the reason this team did not kind of kind of fulfill their destiny and end up winning is because of their poor search and destroy play. Their search and destroy play is what's kept them in this tournament yep. as long as possible. I mean, it has not been stellar hard point play. It's not been lights out uplink play. It's been their S&D that's really carried them through. Which is funny because you go back to Vegas even, and, and you look at your, their S&D and you're like, this, is, this has not been good. This has been bad. And uh, everyone knows Optic have come back to the drawing board, so to speak. They've grinded out. They've improved their search and destroy a lot. And I, as you said, I, it shows. It really does show. Clutching up in these game fives, Steve, it's not an easy thing to continuously do. Oh, for sure. This many times in a row, but when you have Someone like Formal, shooting the way he is at <laughs> early three kills for him. And you can see how confident he is. He separated himself from his team on purpose. And he's like, oh, I see you. I'm going to challenge you. I react faster. And he hits every bullet. And from what I'm seeing just in all these, like, shots and whatnot, and it seems like Formal's kind of turned into the leader. Where he's just kind yeah. of, like, he's putting the most time to this game. Like, he's just tired of listening to everybody else and racking <laughs> up bells. He's like, listen, this is what we're going to do. This is how we're going to play. And it seems to be working. 
well, he's 3-0 now, now, so he's doing something right. And the one thing that I say is with Optic Gaming, a nice, quick, uh, easy round, I would say, there. Straight away, you get that fifth player. You get the crowd. Optic Gaming, that green wall is stood behind them. We can feel it from here. I mean, you guys at home probably hear it as well. But they feed off that. The likes of Formal, when he hears that, he gets three in one round. Oh, Formal, you don't want to do that. You don't want to give him that. Luminosity, right. they're giving it to him. It's only going to make him better, that's for sure. And i just kind of building off Matt's point, Teep. We, we've heard Formal communicating it on, on what feels like another level. Like, we, we've heard him from the studio, put it that way. He's very, very loud. Do you, do you think he is kind of turning maybe more into that shot caller now for, for Optic Gaming? Not sure if it's shot caller or just trying to get the energy going. Formal's been probably the loudest person, which you're not really used to on this right. team. Usually the calm and collected one. But I guess when he, if, if I was playing an event like Formal is right now, I'd probably be screaming like crazy, <laughs> too. Oh, he's hard not to, right? You're having a, a, a fantastic, fantastic event. Uh, unfortunately, though, for the Green Wall in this round, it will be a four versus two in favor of Luminosity. Um, that now a 1v3 Crim Falls tied 1-1. One, one. Matt, overall, how do you see this, this map finishing out? I, I think, you know, obviously Optic, they have the strong S&D play coming into this. Uh, you know, Luminosity, it's really what they worked on after Vegas 2. I mean, their search and destroy was pretty poor at Vegas. They come back, they completely re retool. So this one's a very difficult one to kind of predict. I do want to say, you know, picking back on TP's point, it's like when you're the, the overwhelming favorite, everyone's telling you the best team in the game, you go through pools, you can kind of coast through a little bit, and then you get that first round game. And you know, it's hard to kind of get that sense of urgency or kind of feel like in the moment, like how important it actually is. And I think that's what Formal is really trying to do for these guys is make them realize the actual moment they're in right now, how important it is and to really focus up. Obviously, in Vegas, regarding Luminosity, we, we criticized them quite heavily about their search and destroy play. <laughs> very, very similar to Optic Gaming, ironically enough. And they've done the same thing, right? They've improved their search and destroy play. We were very, very impressed uh, early on in the tournament with how much they were clutching up and how comfortably they were taking their search and destroys. I, I mean, what is going to be going through their mind now, TP, going up against Optic Gaming in this Game 5? How do you think those players are going to be feeling? I think all players in this game are really confident, to be honest. Both deserve to be here, obviously, but you know, both teams won a championship. Both teams playing this sort of similar, a confident style, grouping up and taking those gunfights over towards that bike street right there. And it just seems like the long range play, a nice flank from Krim right there, catching two players in the back. For a second there, I saw Slack behind enemy lines and I thought he was gonna be able to be able to make the play, but trade it out. Seems like Optic is just a little bit faster in reacting to those in-game situations. And it's funny, you know, speaking to a bunch of these players when I got here, you know, who's putting the time in, who's not, everybody pretty much gave me the same thing. The teams that have scrimmed the most coming into this event were E United, Envy, Luminosity, Optic, and FaZe. Those are all teams <laughs> weird, in your top five. Weird how that works. Yeah. <laughs> Put in the practice, you get the results. Who would have, who would have thought? I, I, I'm shocked. It's, it's crazy. It really is. Of course, this is a loser's round seven matchup. Loser will be eliminated from the CWL Atlanta Open. Uh, the victor, they have a team envious awaiting for them in the loser's bracket final. And of course, E United, the surprise team, uh, kind of the breakout team, if you will, for, from this event at least, waiting for them in the grand final should either squad get there. For now, though, Optic Gaming with that two to one round lead. And, in terms of this round specifically now, Momo, which way are you leaning here? I mean, you, they've got the bomb down. It's 3v2. Well, as I say, that Optic Gaming looking strong. It's going to be evened up, though. But Optic, they should have, you know, the favored side here. It's going to go down to another 1v1. It's going to be Optic Gaming. This clutch, and I want to highlight, we've talked about Karma. Crim6 is 7-1. I actually think, I can't believe I'm saying this, we've, we've some, somewhat overlooked Crim6 in, you know, our overlook thing. We've talked about Formal, we've talked about Karma. Crim6 now, he's, uh, he's turning up when he needs to be, and this is what reminds me of kind of that Cole era where, you know, Game 5... Lose the Crim. <laughs> he, he just kind of turns up, and he's not necessarily, necessarily kind of roaring out there or getting going crazy. He's just doing what he does best. And that's a, a scary crim six, right, Tipe? When, when you're going up against a player like that, you have to shut him down immediately. It's just so reminiscent of old crim, to be honest, and I love to see it. Slow, methodical play, pre-aiming a lot. He's very good at positioning himself in this, in this line of sight, and for some reason, he just always catches the edge, just a little bit of a faster strafe, a little bit of a faster shot, and just gets the better edge of it. He's 7-1 and one right now. Looks like he's going to be, you know, getting close to these score streaks as well, so LG needs to be a little bit careful. Yeah, Lunas here definitely going to have to find an answer to Crim6 right now. As it sounds, he's almost just running riot here in this Game 5 search and destroy. Have you been impressed at all, Matt, by, by Luminosity, though? Are they staying as composed as you would like? Yeah, I mean, a bunch of these rounds, like Momo was saying, have come down to 1v1 scenarios. So you see First Blood there going to go in favor of LG, and they get bombed down. So I have. I think LG has improved greatly since Vegas. 
We'll have to wait and see if they're going to be able to close out this round, though. Of course, the bomb did go down now. They force a three versus three situation. Of course, it's fitting to have Crimsix on your screen, sitting at eight and one. I mean, he's having a fantastic map right now. But Momo, can the Green Wall close out this round? This is really well played by Luminosity. They've got the bomb down, they've retracted their back to their base, and they can just get the line of sights. It's all about just stopping that one player defusing. They've done that. This is perfect play from Luminosity. They got the first blood, and this was a must win round for me. 3 2 and 4 1. Those are the what that's that one round in Search and Destroy. I always say it's critical to come back. And they get Krim off those streaks there. So uh, Krim, uh, he has his payload ability, and he was still working on those score streaks. So they end that. So it's a very good round for LG. Very good round indeed, as you mentioned, no more tricks there for Krim, but still uh, has the hot hand there. And I guess my question for you, Teep, is how do you play those rounds? Well, when a team does get the bomb down and they back off, what is the best way of winning those rounds? Group up and flank instantly. To be quite honest, they just uh. took too much time trying to take those gunfights. This is not gunfights LG is even trying to take. They're trying to just stall out time for as fast as possible, or as long as possible, right. sorry. So uh, I feel like Krim made a bit of a mistake there. He's pretty close to those score streaks. I think instead of just taking his time at the top window, maybe just back it down and playing for his streaks. But, you know, it's, it's such a high, it's hindsight call. Who knows? All right. Karma currently sitting at 0-4, though, for Optic Gaming. Matt, you know, well, actually, as I say that, he finds his first pick. Perfect. Uh, Coming in for Karma, of course, 1 and 4 does fall, though. Is there anything specific about Karma's playstyle that, that you're looking at, Matt, and you're thinking, ah, I'm not sure if that's the right play? Not really, because, I mean, he's the one that this team is, you know, kind of putting in, like, the worst situations to fight out of. Right. So you never expect his stats to be incredible in Search and Destroy. You know, he's going to be the bomb guy some of the time. He's going to try and get out into those positions, get bombed down. Like, he's not going to be in position to go off. Yeah, one thing as well, I just want to point out, Skump just made a huge play there. Yes, it's only one kill, but it's the fact he stayed alive. It was a 3v2, now a 2v2. Skump's just opened this game wide up. They could take this round. Gunfight oh going down, but Slack... Oh, the trade's going down. Skump and Forma, you can't take out both of them in a 2v2, and it showed right there. I thought Skump was going to miss some shots on that first guy, but <laughs> nope. Skump uh, snaps on very quickly. Uh, and once again, you have Formal getting up. Getting loud, high fives. Again, we can hear him from the studio right now. He is uh, really turning into a, a bit of a beast here on Championship Sunday, but that's the formal that you kind of expect on Championship Sundays. Yeah, he's a prideful guy. I mean, he does not want to go out of these tournaments early. He is only here to win, doesn't care about anything else. So you expect him to kind of rally the troops when it looked like that may not happen. He definitely didn't come for a weekend trip in Atlanta. He's definitely focused on one thing, of course, and that is that CWL Atlanta trophy. Uh, as it stands, Optic Gaming 4-2 up. Luminosity looking to try and make a play here. Of course, Saints with a streak out, Momo. What's going through Saints' mind here? I mean, he's trying to get some intel. Um, he, he gets the intel, but it's not really going to reflect. He's not going to help them that much. But one thing it has done is told it up to gaming. This is where we are, and this is our plan. And Classic's going to pay the price for that. Karma, though, he gets his second kill on the board. He is actually trying to back off. Caught off guard. Crim6, fantastic trades. I uh, trades. love this about up to gaming is they trade so efficiently. We saw it in the previous round at the end. We're seeing it again here in round number seven. Krim always seems to find himself in a fantastic position just to find those trades. Of course, still four rounds to two. Quick look over to Formal's perspective. Back over to, to Octane. Of course, the bomb now has been planted. Team, you're nodding your head. You, you like that play. I like the overdrive there. Overdrive to get next to your teammates. They're in a three versus two situation. All you need to do is group up and take gunfights wherever there's position at. Skump, oh my gosh, I can't believe he stayed alive right there. That's absolutely huge. Octane now stuck in a very tough situation. I love that as well. It was like he stayed alive and then you saw both of them. Two plays from Altic just push so heavy. <laughs> and it's all about teamwork. No one went solo. No one went for the hero play. Optic Gaming, that was crucial. It has Skump staying alive. Like, I'm not sure. I'm not even going to give Skump the benefit of the doubt there. I think that was maybe a little bit of sloppy shooting uh, from the player of Luminosity. But this is the complete opposite of what we saw against Panda. Optic were 5-2 down against Panda. Now they're 5-2 up. Last map against LG. I, I mean, you have to feel like they have a ton of confidence now, right, Matt? Surely Optic Gaming closes out and push through to the loser's bracket final. It's going to be tough for LG. I mean, the crowd around them is into it. You know, for the side of Optic Gaming, they got a lot again against them right now. But, I mean, you're able to take this round the defensive end. Maybe you kind of, you know, you can go back towards that silo side on offense, make something happen, get your way back into it. Potentially. Uh, of course, as we said, up to gaming, 5-2 up. TP, again, you, you're violently shaking so, your head. You, you love that. Play. I'm shaking my... I'm <laughs> nodding, nodding of your approval head, because I saw them make a mistake earlier in this tournament where they had a Centurion, and they didn't go for a quick plant. But this time, they're just super confident. They do it right away. They have to... Wor LG has to worry about that payload. Gunfight's going down back and forth, but you can see Saints affected by that payload just a little bit before it's taken out. Gunfight's going down back and forth. Oh, it's even numbers, and Saints is going off right now. Saints just disrespect. 
<laughs> he just read straight up formal. Doesn't care who it is. And now you have yourself a two versus two situation. Octane and Saints up. Of course, this is LG's tournament life. They need to hunt down Skump and Karma. Saints last man up 11 seconds. The time is ticking. Will Saints be able to do it? No, he will not. And Optic Gaming somehow, some way, stay alive again here at the CWL Atlanta Open. The, the fairy tale continues for the Green Wall. It doesn't look like they're going to get beat anytime soon. However, up next, they have to go through Team Envious. Is this where it stops, Steve? Is this where Team Envy finally put their foot down and say, no, no more Green Wall, this is our house? We've talked a lot about the magic for Optic Gaming. That wasn't any magic. That was just them playing very consistent and good team Call of Duty in Search and Destroy, grouping up, getting numbers, knowing when to stay alive, knowing when to watch each other's back. And I think that's largely due to Krim in that one. He was using that NV4, playing a little bit further back, and then knew when to switch it up to a K-Bar and play a little bit more aggressive. Yes, they're putting Karma in these unfavorable situations, but they always got the trade on him, and that's the difference. Yeah, as long as they keep getting the trades on Karma, I don't think he minds playing that position. Uh, they look, you know, they beat a very good Luminosity team. Luminosity looked great at this tournament. You know, Slack was amazing in the respawn game modes. Going in against Envy, They've already lost Envy in this tournament, but they're a completely different team that played against Envy the other night. I think it's going to be a very close series, probably a game five. Yeah, and for me, touching on what Matt said there, two different completely teams. You know, Optic Gaming, two game five wins. Formal, he, he just looks fierce. He's, every time he wins, he's telling them, get out, get out. This is my <laughs> tournament, and that's what I love about it. And Envyers, they've come off a big loss against the United. They lost against them in pools. They're probably thinking, we were on a real good run here. And, you know, the founding loser bracket, it's, I'd say, a very hot optic against maybe a bit of a, a cold envy now. So a, a tepid, a tepid. Yeah, a mild warm. <laughs> a quick point to note on as well is Optic was sort of making some excuses yesterday for the long wait. Now the roles are reversed in that sense when they're playing against envy again. So now's their time to get that redemption. Yeah, no excuse now. Definitely uh, very true. Championship Sunday here at the CWL Atlanta Open has uh, not disappointed. Let's just say it that way. It's been uh, just a thrilling, thrilling day. For now, though, we're going to go to a quick commercial break. When we return, it's the Losers Bracket Final.
We're having a blast here. It's Championship Sunday and the CWL Atlanta Open. And man, well, I think it's fair to say I could be a top player in Europe after clips like that. No. <laughs> just, just no. <laughs> just, I don't think that, that, that gameplay there does not warrant anything. Top player anywhere. Hey, man. Let, let, a, let a man dream. Let a man dream. I'm only joking. I mean, that, qu that quad was okay. I'll give you that one. The ninja Thanks. diffused as well. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, that, that A to Z. Fantastic, fantastic video. Uh, but moving forward, of course, uh, talking about dreaming. <laughs> as I once dreamed I could be a professional player, Optic Gaming currently keeping their dream alive, uh, running through the loser's bracket. Uh, speaking of the loser's bracket, let's take a look and just update everyone on exactly where we're at. Of course, coming up next on the main stage, it's MLG Primetime Loser's Bracket Final. We have the L Classico, the E Classico, whatever you want to call it, Team Envious versus Optic Gaming. That's going to be our loser's bracket final here at the CWL Atlanta Open. You, you look how both teams got here. I mean, we, we see our Optic Gaming clutch up in game five. They 3 1 phase, they clutch up in game five against Panda 3 2. They beat Elevate as well in round four, 3 1. Uh, I mean, yeah, you have to give these guys a, a lot of credit for the run. But I have to ask again, Teep, is this where the run stops? We, we saw the, these two teams face off in winner's bracket round one, and Team Envy's had their number in every way, shape, and form. A little bit different of a storyline this time. Optic Gaming on an obvious run. A lot of games going under their belt today. My question is, have they fixed the issues from when they played Envious last night in the winner bracket, right? Uh, it seems like it. It seems like the link in S and D extremely strong for Optic, but there's obvious glaring issues in Hardpoint, and Envious can realistically pick you apart. But Envious has been waiting around for a little while. Is that going to come into play for Map One? Uh, and Memo, how difficult is it to adapt mid-tournament to, to your mistakes, especially when you're playing as a team that had previously beaten you already? I think if you've got that loser bracket run behind you, if you've got a chance to play maybe two series and learn from it, uh, you know you can adapt. But if you, you, know, you come off a loss, for example, Envy now, they've come off a loss against uh, United, and they may be thinking, we made a lot of mistakes in that game. They can't really just adapt a click of a finger. They can't do that. They've got to go into this and kind of use the same strategy as they beat Optic the first time. Uh, but I do think we're going to see a different Optic this time than we did the previous matchup. Fair, fair enough to say, fair enough to say. Uh, Chance, your predictions this weekend have been pretty spot on. I'll, I'll give you a lot of props for that. H how are you leading in this loser bracket final? 
Well, I, I think it's more important to look at who I think will stack up better against E United, who I'd rather see. E United's had uh, two opportunities to play. Envious, they've beaten them both times. So, uh, I mean, if Envy goes through and faces them again, do I really think they're going to have anything different to offer them? Uh, and then, of course, they're going to have to win two best of fives, and they haven't done it once yet. Uh, and Optic Gaming, of course, yes, their hard point's been weak, but that's E United's strong suit anyway. They're looking good against everybody in that category. So you're looking to take them down and search and destroy, and you're hoping to take them down and uplink. And, well, that's what Optic Gaming has been doing this entire tournament so far. So uh, in terms of the matchup, we saw it yesterday. Envy might have Optic Gaming's number, but still, uh, I think an OG versus E United uh, final would be a better match. Uh, of course, Team Envy is our current world champions. Uh, they had a lot of flack, especially after the last event, and people saying, yeah, maybe you know, Team Envy split up, maybe Team Envy split up. And that led, of course, to the discussion of the COD Champs curse. We've seen it time and time again. Teams that win that world championship often split up a, a couple of months afterwards. Maybe things not really going that way. Let's find out a little bit more about the curse. Speaking of the champs curse, when you look at Impact, this is a team that won champs Black Ops 2 2013. Three months later, they've already broken up. There are problems internally. The team may be fighting. Team chemistry is not there. Whatever the issue, this champs team has fallen apart. Now, after we saw Impact fall apart after Black Ops 2, it was Complexity's turn after they won the Call of Duty Ghost Cod champs. This is a team that was one of the best in Call of Duty history. They started to get a little bit too confident, a little bit too cocky. We're going undefeated this entire year. I love my team. We're the best team in the game. No one's going to touch us at all. They suffered from some internal team struggles, and they ultimately fell to the COD Champs curse. The most recent example of where we've seen this curse really come into play was the old Denial roster back in Advanced Warfare. Clayster attached JCAP and replays. Not many people thought they would actually win champs. Well, they take it, but then they lose every event they go to. They break up within two months. All sides are pointing towards a potential similar circumstance to this MVP. You can talk about the champs curse all you want, but let's be honest, it's BS and it's just a few fun facts that are fun to throw together. Envy, realistically, they got off to a slow start and for good reason. Apathy just got married. They didn't have as much time in the game as they wanted, but now everyone's back. They're focused. They're on the grind and they know that they're behind in pro points. Atlanta is going to be a huge tournament for them. They have to finish in the top eight or even higher if they want a chance of getting into the big nine. They'll advance into stage one of CWL. As you heard, Chris Puckett, our colleague, having absolutely none of the COD Champs curse. Well, I have a world champion on the desk, so it's only fair to ask. Teep, is it real? Is there a curse, do you think, or is it all just, you know, made-up stats? It's, it's made-up stats, for sure. <sighs> Usually when something like that happens, Killed there's you. glaring issues within the team that either, A, go unresolved for uh, an extended period of time, or a player or a few just aren't playing up to the caliber. And eSports is very competitive in general. It happens sometimes where someone can go on a bad streak of just not playing great. You also kind of have to think about how often did rosters break up and switch back in the day? Roster Mania was like an almost an everyday occurrence after every event. It would just get wild with all the teams switching places. Uh, pretty much since the start of Black Ops 3, uh, occasional roster changes here and there, but certainly nothing too substantial. I mean, this Optic Gaming team has been together since AW. Envy's been around for a long time. Like, all of these top teams phase again since AW. So it's been years since we've had a, a major roster apocalypse. Very true, very true. Uh, Mama, you, you're a COD Champs curse believer. Do you believe uh, curse I'm curse? with Teep and Maeve, and I think it's complete BS. I, I, don't, I don't agree with it at all. I think one thing that you can do is maybe get a little bit complacent. You know, if you win a tournament uh, and maybe slack off and be like, yeah, you know, we just won, we can take a you know a week off or but that's when teams catch you up and that's where right, you know right. the likes of complexity obviously in their day they, they did they didn't do that they just carried on you know that's why they would tournament after tournament after tournament um and i think you know i i want to compare it to a team uh you know of a previous champion but the likes of rise you know they they kind of went out early this tournament i don't think they you know kind of stepped up or thought they were the best almost but um, I think teams or players, individuals can definitely get complacent. With all that said, do you, do you feel like this is a Team Envious squad who could actually stick this out? Could they be the first team to theoretically go back to back? Is that something which is realistically a possibility? 
Uh, 100%. It's with 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 how we see how well they're playing. Uh, it seems like each of these all-star players in the lineup take turns going off, and that's exactly it's a formula for success, right? One person can't go off every single game and have a superstar performance, but when you have multiple pe people that have the potential to do it on a consistent basis, you know, it kind of relieves the pressure from some of the other star players. So with their makeup, with how well they've performed against elite talent in Call of Duty in general, they had one bad tournament. There's no reason to even have that right. talk right now about them breaking up. The fact that he, that was even brought up is a little bit silly to me. <laughs> of course, uh, they responded with that kind of poor performance, which yeah, they had other variables, such as Apathy getting married. Of course, a lot of people know that now. Um, they've responded very well. Of course, they, they're here in the loser's bracket final, you know, trying to get back into that grand final. They played very, very well. They played up to gaming already in this tournament, and they beat them. They, they made it look simple. It looked as if... They, they just knew everything Optic Gaming was going to do. They played cool, calm, collected. They didn't panic at all. Are you expecting a different Optic Gaming this time, Chance? Is this an Optic Gaming now with, with all that loser's bracket momentum? Are they going to come here and, uh, and potentially find themselves in another grand final? Uh, again, I think it's kind of like when they played FaZe. I think the maps really have to go their way for them to have a pretty good opportunity of this. Uh, again, Envy had their number in pretty much every game, if I remember yes. correctly. is a, a yep. pretty easy victory for them overall. Now, of course, main stage, the most pressure on the line, Optic Gaming, they definitely come to play. They've been dealing with the pressure for four or five rounds in a row now, and they've come out on top every single time. So uh, they certainly have quite a bit of momentum in their favor uh, and again I don't know you know Envious is going to be strong mentally but still even if they go into that finals they're going up against a brick wall in the United where again I think Optic just has a better chance. Of course we mentioned John as well playing with a broken middle finger and somehow some way still playing out of his mind very uh, reminiscent back to the AW Columbus Open where Aix obviously famously cut his hand he was playing uh, with a hand injury almost and he managed to win that event maybe it's a, a theme players that pick up hand injuries somehow win events we'll have to wait and see of course on that one uh, but in terms of Crim 6 I mean, he was a player that you highlighted in that last series, and you said he was playing out of his mind. Is he someone, again, you're looking at in this series specifically? Yes. Uh, he looked like the old Crim6 when we saw him in that previous game. When we saw Crim6 on the main stage against Envious last time, it, it was just, I would say, a 75% Crim6. It wasn't the Crim6 we just saw. So he's going to be going into this super confident. Yes, he's always super confident, but I think deep down, sometimes you will be, you know, feeling uh, a little bit more. And I think going into this, they've come off Three ga uh, sorry, two game five wins. They've, they've got to be going into this and going, you know what, Envy? You took us last time. It ain't happening again. I think, and this isn't saying me thinking Optic Gaming will win, will win, but I think Optic Gaming are going to make this much, much harder for Envious. You can definitely make a serious argument. Crim6, one of the best players ever to play Call of Duty, even not the best player in Call of Duty. Uh, so with that said, let's take a little bit of time to learn a little bit more about Crim6. The thrill of victory has become quite familiar over time. And nobody knows it as well as I do. The money, the fame, the feeling. They say it's more difficult to stay on top than it is to get there. The thing is, I've been on top for years. I've always approached situations with one idea in mind, that I will do anything I need to do to win. Over time, I've watched veterans fall, old teammates turn into rivals, and new players entering the spotlight. I've won under different organizations, with multiple teams, and at tournaments across the globe. Yet the pressure to win is even greater than it was before. There will always be those who attempt to take my title, but there's only one thing stopping them. I'm not done yet. Shout out to all of the production team here at MLG Atlanta. That, that, that is a fantastic piece. And obviously, you hear from Crim6 there, he is not done winning yet. So those videos are uh, a fantastic insight and look into a lot of our players. Uh, sadly, didn't get to use all of them. We definitely have some stored, that's for sure. Uh, but in terms of this next matchup, the loser's bracket final, Optic Gaming versus Envious. I'm going to go down the line before we get this one underway. Momo, predictions. Optic Gaming 3-2. 3-2. I think we're going we go all the way. This is going to be one hell of a series. Okay. Bear in mind, of course, Team Envious did beat Optic in winner's bracket round one. Chance, which way are you going? Envious 3-1. You're going for... That was the same score as last time, I believe, was it not? I can't remember. Envious 3-0 three, or 3-1. Three, three, but either way, you're saying Envious? I fully believe in the loser bracket run momentum. Uh, Optic 3-1. Optic 3-1, of course, is a, a player who's no, no stranger to those loser bracket runs. You've done them famously before, and you've won events from those loser bracket runs. Is the loser bracket run dream still on for Optic Gaming? For now, we're going to go to a quick commercial break. When we return, though, it's loser's bracket final. Optic Gaming versus Team Envious.
It's prime time here at the Call of Duty World League presented by the PlayStation 4. Of course, we're here at the CWL Atlanta Open on the main stage next. It's the Losers Bracket Final. Team Envious versus Optic Gaming. Team Envious already beaten Optic Gaming once this tournament. Optic Gaming looking for sweet revenge and trying to keep that Losers Bracket run alive. For now, though, we can set it down to our casters for the game. Thank you so much, Benson. It's Courage and Pucket backstage, and we're ready to bring you the action. Atlanta, are you ready? That's what I like to hear. Oh, they're, they're, they're getting into it, and I sure as hell am, too. What a match we have again. We talked about the last couple times we saw those teams in Envy and Optic in a championship winner's bracket matchup, which was earlier this weekend. Optic Gaming lost 3-1. to one. Back at Champs, they lost 3-1. to one. Now, they've beaten FaZe after two years on LAN. Maybe they do it again here against Envy in the Losers Bracket Final. Optic Gaming has had such a long road through the Losers Bracket, and one of the key players getting them through this has been their star in the hard points. Let's take a look at Skump. He is coming in with a 1.08, going up against some of the toughest competition in the venue today. But on the other side, it's your 2016 World Championship MVP, John, who just is dropping all kinds of numbers, a 1.15 overall oh and john's continued to do that so far today but i will say he's had some inconsistent starts to some games for envy we saw that earlier in that winner's bracket final when they faced e united here we go though the rematch many people are excited about it does not get better than this optic gaming versus envy winner is in the grand finals loser is going home and it's time to kick things off with our first hard point. We are going to Scorch. John, we talked about him having a few slow starts, but he was the one who put the final nail in, off in Optics winner's bracket coffin. Will he be able to get off to another hot start? I'll be honest, the player I'm really watching in this match is Apathy. I haven't seen a bad game from the man yet, even in their loss to E United. He was at the top of the leaderboard amongst all players. Let's take a look at our kickoff. It's going to be Skump charging right to the center of this bridge. They're set up first. The nades flying everywhere. Who's going to draw first blood? It looks like Karma is going to be dropped first. Yeah, someone does die to one of those grenades as they flew all over the place. Envy will get the first seconds on the board. A map like Scorch, though, coordinated play is so key to get the breaks, obviously, towards that back turbine hard point in that top hanger area. And somehow, JCap has snuck behind three, cleans those up with ease as your two-time call to the champion. JCap gets it done. And the last match I cast from Envy, I pointed out, keep your eyes on JCap For this first game, he is going to be arrow number six on that mini-map, constantly finding opponents on the flank. He has been a thorn in everybody's side today. Slasher, though, the hottest start out of all players. Ooh. Five and two. Picks up another one there on formal. And he is going to be splitting the defense, slipping behind two players on the rotation. So far today, formal has been one of the most aggressive players in those final moments as you just see him get up out of his seat, yell across to his opponents that he is knocked out of these losers bracket games. He's been lights out right now, 0-4, zero seconds in the objective. That first hill didn't work out for him, but I'm sure he'll pick it up for Optic Gaming now as they're down by about five seconds. Yeah, he just picked up his controller. He's ready to game, yeah. and we will see what he can do. Envy trying to flood through. They're sending three players through the tight show. Karma is there, finds two. The pre-fire can't find the third formal. We'll get it, it, but unfortunately, there's one last man challenging here, stopping Optic from scoring. It's going to be Apathy. But Formal knows he's got his teammate in Crim6 right behind him. OG will hold on to the hard point as Karma out to 7 and 3. He's the one leading his team in time, leading his team in kills. We've seen multiple clutch moments from him so far today, and now he's triple positive in game one. You know, I heard some rumors that Karma seemed off his game on Friday. Some whispers yesterday. Today, he is trying to silence all the haters. 9 and 3 on a two streak to open this one up. Optic Gaming out to a 22 point advantage, and they already are set up here for hangar control. And this is a great sign for Optic Gaming. The only thing that kind of stinks for them. They don't have the spawns. So they, they wind up sending four players towards that sky, top sky bridge, and Apathy stays towards the back of the map alive long enough so his teammates can help push in towards this hill. But now look, he's surrounded by green arrows. Another break for Optic Gaming. They're now up to a 30-second lead.
lead. Crowd's getting fired up here in Atlanta. 11 and 3 is Karma on the four streak. Keep your eyes on him as he's working towards streaks. Meanwhile, Skump trying to get the cutoffs. Finds one, traded out by JCap. Crim6 gets the call and will eliminate even more. Karma on your screen for the moment on a five streak, and he is just 100 points away from being fully streaked out. Uh, and Envy, they should give up this hard point. Karma's actually going to call on this Trinity Rocket right away. Gonna see what he can do now to maybe clear out this new hard point drill area. 96 to 38 the score. Karma one kill away from earning himself another streak. Optic game is a beautiful start to this one. Karma is lights out. One more off the bombardment. And that was a very long engagement with Karma going up against Slasher there. Slasher spotted him in the doorway, had the better positioning. Karma just out shooting him. And Karma, I don't know how you stop this man. JCap, we talk about his two rings, but Karma was the first man in Call of Duty history to earn his. And we are going to see JCap now pressing in. There's three members of Optic Gaming behind him. He is going to be swarmed. Optic seems to be in total control here. This is absolutely the opposite of what we saw in some of the games from last night. Yeah, Envy are getting slaughtered at the moment. They just need to reset on the second rotation, which is absolutely possible. Again, this is your Call of Duty World League champions in 2016. Envious, if there's any team that can mount a comeback here, it is them. So do not count them out early. I will say, though, at the end of the first rotation, I am very impressed from what I saw from the green wall. Obviously, Karma, the one leading the charge. And here comes J-Cap. The grenades pushing back Krim 6, but Krim dodges the nades, picks up two kills instead. Formal on a flank is going to find another. So Formal, who had a very rough start back in this one at 8 and 11. Karma staying on point at 13 and 6. And Krim 6 is back on his game in respawn. If they keep this up, Envy is in trouble. Wow. You have to think Envy is going to be the team favorite in the search and destroys, but I expected much closer series when it comes to these hard points, especially after watching Optic struggle up against Panda. Optic are not missing a beat right now. They're filling every hole they need to and where the pressure can come from. They've got their teammates watching over Karma in the hard point. He has been unscathed in this hill for the last 30 seconds, now up by 100. They are running away with this game, Bucket. Karma gonna finally be dropped. It's J-Cap on the other side having the best game for Envy, 17 and 13. We saw this earlier in their first loss in the winner's bracket. Will they be able to bounce back now, though? It's looking dire, 168 to 58. You can't count them out completely, but this is looking like a bloodbath. The first fight gonna be won by Envy. Is Optic gonna be able to break in on their first push just like last time? You need Crim6 to wait right now. That's exactly what he's gonna do. If you look at your minimap towards the bottom, everyone from Optic now beginning to push on up. The Trinity Rocket gets called in. That's gonna force Envy into awkward positions, and now Optic looks to capitalize. There's two kills. They go in for the trades down onto John. And look, he's getting flooded by everyone from OG. But a team kill from Crim6. It's not enough, though. Optic with the break back up by 100 seconds. Great use of the score streaks Absolutely. there. Absolutely. And he hovered in. it. He hovered it as well. So at the last moment, he, he drops down too quick and then leaves the last one waiting, waiting, waiting. Optic push off of that. A very well executed play. Karma still positive 10. On the other side, we talked about how good John and Apathy have been. These two players shut down. John, negative four. Apathy, negative seven. They need to show up in this series if they want to head to their first championship match of 2017. Crim6 on your screen, floating around, picks up one, spots another player, three Envy members in front of him. Crim waiting for reinforcements. They're about to be pushing through the middle, and out comes the Scarab. When's the last time you can remember John Slasher and Apathy being a combined negative 16 a few moments ago? unlike them and it reflects in the score right now thankfully they do have some payloads to use obviously jcap just earned that camo slasher one kill off his maybe they can use that to swing them back in this game i want to see optic gaming though keep these well coordinated plays in their favor don't just start rushing in don't start trying to make any sort of win happen do it the right way do what's been working for you throughout this game it's about a 65-point game, and this is the closest it has been in a while. So Envy starting to rally back late in this one. They're going to be rotating first once again. Crim6 going to try and shut it down. The player in the back line was Apathy, and that kill is going to lock this in for Optic Gaming. Despite the early rotation from Apathy, Optic with the better positioning as a four-man crew. And remember, last time Optic Gaming got towards this drill hardpoint, they held off the first three Envy pushes before they even got one player near the hill. So far, they're at one. They could seal the deal right now on this hardpoint or get very, very close. And look, 
three more kills come in. Envy just have no answer right now for Optic Gaming. Slasher was kicked off as well. So that's goodness. gonna be all four players cycled out. You look at your mini-map. John is gonna be on the flank though. Number seven, that's gonna be Slasher trying to push through the middle. J-Cap is forced to pop his payload. That's the active camo. Only picks up one there. And you're gonna see Slasher clear it out, but there's just 16 points remaining here for Envy. Optic Gaming, on the other hand, only needs 26 points to take our first game. And you can tell J-Cap did not want to have to use his payload in that situation, but he can't afford to give Optic Gaming those last 20 plus seconds. If he does, they're what, five away from winning the game? Now at least they have a chance if you're Envy. If maybe you're not early enough on a rotation, you can go for a quick break. And OG just can't win off that, but right now all signs pointing towards an Optic Gaming win! As Crim6 lights up the kill feed, three right there, 25 and 13. They're just 10 seconds away from taking this victory. And oh my god, nobody can stop this man. And I'm surprised Crim didn't even throw down the Centurion instead. He just tried to well. keep the gun out. It's his kid, right? Slay everybody, two more points. Karma with the kill is gonna break in, but Apathy is there to stop him. So the game not over yet. But Envy on their deathbed here in game number one. What can Envy even try to do? 248 to 163. All Optic have to do is just set up for this new hard point. And this game is done, but they actually do spawn out. This is the entire game right here. Does Skump win this first uh, gun engagement? No. So Envy will be. Oh no! They leave the last hard point. They hop in. They sneak behind. I wasn't even paying attention. You can I see like, Formal. I got the two points, man. <laughs> Formal there laughing as well. Sneaks right in from behind. And there it is. Optic take game number one in a very strong fashion. <laughs> Dummies didn't watch their back. <laughs> Finished them off. <laughs> Formal, though, they got off to the hot start. Crim 6, great game, but it was Karma. Fantastic opening here for Karma here in a respawn. He's oh. coming out swinging, just like we saw him on the main stage last time to close out their series. Karma performing extremely well against the biggest names, FaZe, and now Envious. Scary stuff right there if you're an Envy fan. Remember, this is an elimination match. Here's a look at some of the highlights from that game one. It started with J-Cap with that quick flank three-piece. But really, that was about it for the Envy highlights in that map, as the rest of it was all Karma, all Crim6, and then Formal, when he began to wake up, made his voice heard as well. I mean, you saw the drill hard point. You saw Karma just sitting in the middle of the mid-bridge yeah. for about 40 seconds at a time. Every time Optic Gaming wanted to go for a break on an Envy setup, it seemed they just executed it flawlessly. Great crashing in as a four-man squad. They're learning as they're playing throughout this tournament. We're seeing them adapt. They most certainly are. Here's your hard point breakdown. And again, that turbine hard point makes such a difference. And you notice drill as well. Doubling the score of Envy was optic. And it all came down to rotating there early and holding off the Envy pushes from both sides of the map. Krim 6, 29 kills. It's going to be the most in the game. Almost a 2.0 KD. Plenty more Call of Duty to come, though. This is your Losers Bracket Finals. Envy going up against Optic Gaming.
2017 CWL season begins right now. Oh, 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 oh my God. Oh, my God. Somehow finds the killer, the ugliest gunfight I've ever seen. Somebody stop this man. Do they go for the win? Oh, my God. Oh, this is the John Singer's oh. gun. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the continued coverage of the Call of Duty World League Atlanta Open presented by the PS4 Puck at Night. Bringing the matches here on Championship Sunday, and this is a great one. We have Optic Gaming versus Envious in your Losers Bracket Final. You know, I know that everybody in this venue loves Optic Gaming. Even if you're an Envy fan, a lot of times you're cheering for Optic Gaming. They've just been the fan favorites in this scene for so long. But I'll be honest, I now understand why Optic has such a massive fan base. To watch what they've accomplished so far today is simply incredible. And now I find myself almost cheering for them to get revenge over Envy, who 3-1 them last night. But Envy, you can't count them out. That was a sloppy game one, though. We have to talk a little bit about that. Yeah, that, that was tough for them. They're obviously facing some formidable opponents as the bracket goes on. Makes a lot of sense. Because you got to remember, even if they do win this, they have to face E United again. That Envy a spot for the third time, and they're 0-2 this weekend in that matchup. On the side of Optic Gaming, though, they're looking for revenge. Absolutely. And if you do look at the boys of blue, Envious, you look at the teams that beat them, really just E United. That's so, it. That literally is it. I'm, I'm really cheered for Envy here to get a chance to get redemption against E United, but I have a feeling what we would see in that championship match. So we'll have to see how everything plays out. JCap had a great start to game number one. What you need is those two guys right there, Apathy and John, to turn it on, and this is the game mode to do so. We talked about Envy's success. Where do they have it most, Jack? In search and destroy. The only one they've dropped this weekend is in their last series to E United. It was that game two, and since then, We'll see what Envy can do in this game mode. And both these teams, John and Formal, have actually had two of the better snipers this weekend in the game mode of SD. They're always getting those first bloods to their team. And it's going to be good to watch. Either way, I cannot wait to get into it. And after that, we got ourselves up with. Absolutely. So our players took a quick bathroom break. They're ready to go here in game number two. Any moment, we'll be kicking that one off. Players just talking to the refs before we begin here. As we look at this big picture, though, on day one, we announced it. $4 million on the line here this year in 2017 for Infinite Warfare at the Call of Duty World League. This is a big event in Atlanta. We have a bigger one coming up in Dallas. It's your last chance to earn pro points before stage one. And Envy, they were near the bottom of that bubble of North American teams who would get in based on pro points. After this event, I can't wait to see how far up they're going to jump in those seeds. Oh, major move for them. And you also bring in the, the idea that they spent a lot of time scrimming prior to this one. They focused more on that, playing against the top teams, preparing themselves for this event to have this exact run. The leadership on Envy made that decision, and so far it's paid off, but they're not done yet. You know they have their sights set on this championship this weekend. Optic Gaming is looking like they'll probably finish in our top three in North America after this event. How high will they be able to jump? We're going to find out. They've already eliminated FaZe Clan. You saw them just knock out Luminosity. Now they're going up against Envy and potentially E United. But Envy, if they have anything to say about it, they're hoping to get some revenge here in the next three games. It all starts with Search and Destroy. We're going to be going to Throwback as our map. And when we look at this big picture, who do you give the advantage to? Oh, it's tough to say. Both these squads have pretty similar play styles you can see on this map where a lot of it re uh, revolves around one sniper trying to make a, a play happen, whether that's John or Formal, as I mentioned. The other thing, though, the pressure towards middle map, so key between these two squads. The NV4, very, very formidable weapon, as well as these long-range sight lines. And there we go. I just saw the uh, game begin to get started on up, so we should be getting into the action here soon for game number two between OG and Envy. John broke his middle finger. Uses that on his trigger. It's been hurting him throughout the weekend. Had a rough game number one. But every time I point it out, he has a good comeback game. We'll see when he decides to turn up. Jcap going over the strategy with Slasher before this game kicks off. Throwback search and destroy. Game number two here in the best of five. If you're just joining us, these are two of the biggest names in Call of Duty history facing off once again on the main stage. And Atlanta, we see the rig draft kicking off here in just a moment. Are you ready for game number two? Oh, yeah. That wasn't loud enough, I'll be honest. Well, it wasn't loud enough? 
Should I try? I think so. What if they listen to me more than you? What's that going to say? You are a very good up-and-coming caster. All right, well, Atlanta, are you ready for game number two? I win, Chris. I have something to tell you. It's over. Who's cheering for Optic Gaming? Cheap chat, I know. Oh, I know. Okay. All right, all right, here we go. It's time to go into game number two. <laughs> And as we take a look at the rig draft, you are going to see basically a mirror match with three of the players. The difference here, once again, it's going to be the FTL jump chosen by Slasher. Formal, always used to run in that resupply with the overdrive. Yeah, it makes, it makes sense for him to bring that one on out yet again. They have, Optic have some switches that they'll do in regards to payloads when it gets to uplink. But once we get there, we'll talk a little bit about it. Slasher with FTL jump yet again. I am so excited to get this one started. As you know, these are two of the best SD teams. Optic have been clutching up in this game mode time and time again today, and Envy statistically this weekend right next to him. I got my brother out in the crowd. He's sitting next to Hastro, sending me text messages saying they better tie this one up. We'll <laughs> see if they can get it done. Envy down 0-1, coming into game number two. But this has been their bread and butter all weekend long. Just one loss in SD, but it came today. Will they be able? to get another big win. The A-bomb site, it's been the favorite target for all of our teams throughout this tournament. A few plants at B, but really the action, it's gonna happen right around that bridge. Oh, definitely. And imagine making it all the way to Championship Sunday without losing a single map of S&D. Quite, uh, quite the stat line there for Envy. You just gotta commend them. Uh, Matt, it's time for game two. Search and destroy on throwback. Optic Gaming versus Envy is underway. Erad in hand as well as the bomb. Apathy wants to get up close and personal here with the submachine gun and you're going to see him, John, taking out Scump. Crim6 is going to answer back so it's still a three on three and Apathy has been called out. Apathy most certainly has. You can tell the second he peeks that corner there's fire down on him right away. Him and Slasher in a 2v3. He cannot go anywhere. He, he is pinned right now. Can't get out with his life. It's formal cutting him down. There's a second as well. Optic Gaming strike first. No big surprise here to see defense winning in search and destroy, especially here on throwback. But a phenomenal start. Crimson immediately reacts, takes out John. You can see him in the round ending kill cam as well. They had the bomb trap. There was no escaping for apathy. And it's Optic Gaming starting this one up 1 0. But they'll have to be on the attack now. And we'll see which direction they decide to go. Will they give Formal a sniper rifle? It looks like that is what is about to happen, Jack. Well, let's see if he can make any flashy plays happen yet again. Spots two and doesn't wind up giving away what he has to work with. Smart decision by him, but there it is now. He's just been electric all weekend with it, Puckett. Three down. Last man standing, Apathy. This would be a one before clutch. Not going to happen today. 0-2. Formal feeling it with the sniper. Formal has smiled more today than I think in the last three tournaments I've seen Optic Gaming play. It's very happy, Matthew Piper. It, it is. It is. Optic fell short of their goals last time in Vegas. They finished fifth place there. Envy finishing outside of the top eight. So very impressive performances bouncing back here in Atlanta for both teams. Uh oh And this is what I was talking about. This is what the battle will be. John decides, you know what, Formal? I think I can match you, my friend. Let's see if he makes the right decision. This Formal's got his eyes on him. Ooh. Just a little high there. John didn't even see Formal until the last moment. He challenges, though, and he is going to be tagged up by Krim. Six forced to back down. Krim, meanwhile, did pick up first. Blood Scump is out of the action, though, for Optic Gaming. So a three on three. And John, he just has a feeling there's going to be pressure any moment. Smoke's coming to play. Karma, though, with the entry on the J-Cap, two versus three. Remember, Optic Gaming still have to defuse this bomb. Slasher cuts down one. John just trying to stay behind this bus as much as he can, but when you've got a pistol as your secondary, that's not the spot you want to be in. Karma and Crim6 start off a combined eight and zero. Crim6 with the most kills in game number one. Karma is the guy who started it all for this team. Both players having a great game number two. Karma looks a little bit frustrated there. No, I, I think it's just Karma being focused. They, they, they want this revenge so badly. Literally right now, you could basically do anything to try to distract them in the crowd, and they would not notice because they are so locked in. I think what happened is Karma stole Krim's defuse, so Krim is not going to be that <laughs> step closer to his streaks here. And Krim off the break is just going to try and stay alive. You see him taking a new positioning here Ooh. as Optic is on the attack. Krim watching a flank. Karma all the ready through the smoke is going to find Slasher. 
<laughs> it's nice angle. He holds right there. Scout comes in and ooh, 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 nearly kills him right there. That could have been a disaster as two players were stacked on that one. Now the flank from Crim6. Some shaky shots, but does at least get one. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Runs out of ammo. It's John by himself. He's gone. Optic are wiping the floor with envy at the moment. They're in full plow mode right now, man. Oh, they're eating today. Dominant game number one, Crim6 on the flank, finding two players, including his second round ending kill cam of this game. 4-0 on throwback. Envy needs to turn it up right here. You have to stop it. And what do you do? What do you even do when Karma and Crim6 are 11-0? I was going to suggest going to B, but Optic seems to have smelled this one coming from a mile away. Two players set up on defense. Apathy is going to get first blood, though, so they have the advantage. J-Cap will fall. Scump with the two-piece ties things up. Formal here with the third. The fourth not going to happen. John and Scump, one versus one. I think Scump knows where he is, but he sees a shadow. John, the clutch kill to keep Envy in this game. Instead of it being 5-0, it's now 1-4, and that's a little bit more reasonable if you're on the side of Envy. The Sun giving away some positions here. Ah, that's Sun. Round number six coming up. It's going to be Optic back on the attack. In theory, Envy should have the advantage on defense. See what they can do. Again, formal probably bringing back out that sniper, especially if you see that number five go towards the bus. That'll mean one thing and one thing only. How do Optic play around it? They've been going for those quick plants this time around, though. Trying to spot out what they can before they focus on this objective. Formal's going to call out two players, throws a grenade, hit markers, will connect. Bomb still not planted, though, and that player six was Karma. He wanted to get aggressive. He is going to get chased down. Crimson and Skump, though, answering back. Last man alive, Apathy. Jeez, what do you even do here? Get all three kills. Yeah, right. Good luck, you're facing Optic Gaming. Sees one, Apathy does challenge. One versus two, has to wait for his health to come back before he can try to do anything. There's still a ton of time to do this, and there's actually, is there a trade on the side of Optic Gaming right now? I, I'm not entirely sure with the positioning they had for a moment. Well, Apathy's gonna take his time with this one. 28 seconds remaining, still has to get this defuse. And of course, Apathy, he has no idea where these players are located. We see the X-ray, but he had to check every single corner Envy just didn't even challenge, it seemed like, on the bomb site. Karma was able to trade pretty efficiently, and then Skump and Crim6 picking up kills right away as Formal picks up your round ending kill cam. Optic now one round away from going up 2 0. The vision over middle map has just been dominant for Optic in this one so far. They've been able to push players wherever they want and punish Envy for playing a little bit more passive there on defense. Let's see what Optic Gaming can do now in round seven. Do they close the door here? John, pre-aim in that window. Player jumps out just as he looks away. Slasher does pick up formal, though. So first blood for the boys in blue. Nice challenge there by Slasher again to at least get two. But Scump has that reactive armor, which we know how good he is with that payload ability. Two versus three. If Crim6 gets one more kill as well, he'll wind up earning his two. Crim6 rotating over to help out Scump. Scump challenging. Can't overextend here. He will get picked off by Jcap. And here comes Scump. He gets away with the kill on Apathy. This is now a two on two. And this is just a sign of how confident Scump is right now. Reactive now used. Everybody's closing on in. Can Jcap do it? No. Does Scump get there in time? Nine seconds left on the clock. I think he's done it. There's the high fives and Scump signals to the crowd. He knows what he just did as Optic are up two to zero. One map away from making it to the grand final. We got people taking off clothes here in the crowd. There's a man in a tank top in February hanging out. It's getting rowdy here in Atlanta. 2-0 <laughs> start for Optic Gaming and the crowd getting behind them. Envy though, needs their fans more than ever. They're in the hole, back against the wall. You lose this next uplink, you are eliminated from the tournament. You think of how Optic Gaming start today? They have to go through that whole loser's bracket run. Everyone on that team saying, believe in us, believe in what we can do. They beat who? Elevate, they beat Panda in game five, round 11. They wind up moving into their next series and take down... Phase. Phase, which I can't believe I forgot that. Of all I got teams. you. Luminosity, another team that fell victim to them. And now potentially Envy. 
And then they still have to face E United in the Grand Finals if they make it and beat them not only in one best of five, but two if they want to take the title. And not only that, if you watched the games last night, you just saw what Envy did to Optic Gaming. So to be up 2-0, you are just one step away from sweet, sweet revenge. Some of the highlights here, I mean, you had a few flashes of brilliance, some nice snipes coming through. Apathy tried his best running around with the E-Rad, but Optic Gaming, they are just all clicking right now. No one seems to be missing. Their trades were absolutely on point all seven rounds. Obviously, I want to see this go to a game five, but with how Optic Gaming are playing at the moment, I just don't know if it's going to be possible, Puckett. They look so confident in their abilities right now. They're all smiles, too, which is another big thing for me in this series. They're in such high spirits. It's, it's interesting to see. Precinct uplink going to be our next game mode. Have you seen much precinct from these two squads? Uh, I can't basically just speak to these two, but I've watched a lot of it this weekend. You've seen certain teams, for example, Envious being one of them, that actually will try to push towards that bottom cherry blossom side, bring the drone around gas, right. and go for a little bit more of a unique type of play. Most teams don't go for that type of push, as it can absolutely backfire very badly uh, if you lose some gun engagements and spawn out near back statue. But it's simple for both these teams. They know exactly how it needs to be played. It's just going to come down to who can outslay their opponent, in my opinion. Envy needs someone to catch fire. Someone needs to set the tone, get score streaked out early, and just keep the momentum in their favor. Because right now, you look at them on stage, there's zero smiles. Yep. There's very little communication. I think you need Slasher. I think you need Slasher. He went on Twitter after that last series. Some complaints about, you know, what, what he was playing, how it was going. I just need to see him back in this match. I need to see the Slasher that beat Optic Gaming back at the AW Open alongside Aches in the Grand Final. Envy fans, they need you now more than ever. Make some noise. All right, third three people. We're going into game number three. You see the rig draft I, on the big screen. It's tough when even Envy fans are doubting their team right now. And you got to be thinking that with how the series has looked. Envy haven't bounced back yet from that tough loss to United earlier today. My producer said, nice try, Chris. Hey. You gave, it, you gave it your can't, all. Can't get him going, Jack. My brother and Hastro clapping together. Here we go. It's going to be active camo in the hands of Karma. J-Cap as well. The Centurions at the top will be John and Formal in this one as the overdrive goes to Crim6 when they play uplink. Again, as you see, they swap those rolls, give Formal the trophy drone. You wind up swapping on over to Crim with that overdrive. Makes a lot of sense as we get into game three. Precinct, uplink, envy. One map from being eliminated. Optic Gaming, one map from being in your grand final here at the CWL Atlanta Open, presented by the PS4. We hope you've been enjoying MLG Primetime. We hope you've been enjoying Championship Sunday, because I know one thing for sure, I certainly have. We're getting into game number three. Chris, predictions, is this done here? Yep. I I'm calling it now. I'm still cheering for a game five, but honestly, I don't know how you stop this Optic Gaming team at this moment. They are hot. They have been playing all day long, talking to Scump about his loss to Envy last night. He said, we were cold, man. We played at 2 o'clock. We didn't play till the end of the night. Today, they have been warm all day long. They've gone to some Game 5 Round 11s, but they've been able to power their way into this loser bracket final. Another funny thing that Scump brought up as well is he was so hungry to win this championship from the loser's bracket. He says he's never done it before in his career. He wants to do it now. It's a road that he's never really traveled before, but so far he looks quite comfortable on it. He's starting off 3-0 at this checkpoint, and you're going to see the challenge. It's Apathy jumping in by himself. Three members of Optic Gaming waiting for him. Drone is down, but the kills keep coming for Optic. Crim6 trying to flank around. Wow. Formal is going to try and do the same. And these two teams are just trading back and forth right now. No total control, no objective movement yet. Yeah, they're just flying at each other at all sorts of different angles. Again, you see Envy, instead of taking that drone and resetting it right away, try to push it down towards that restaurant side, give themselves any opportunity to make a play. Now, though, with those couple of kills, they might be able to make something happen. Three now dead for Optic Gaming for the moment. Apathy moving up with the drone. He's got a one-point throw. There it is. Envy on the board first. Cram6 did pick up two, so that is going to allow Optic to get out of their base. John, the last member alive near... Optic Gaming spawn is going to spot two, and now he's on the flank, picks up one, challenging the second. It's Formal who outguns him. Apathy is there to trade out Crim6. So three on two here, make it 
three on nothing. Everybody dead. Envy's gonna go for at least another one point play. Again, JCap will clear out this lower street side. The goal for Envy here, not to get one score, but many scores. The interception though from Optic Gaming will stop that one from going in and Scump and crew clear out their base. Optic Gaming now on the offensive. Karma's gonna lead the charge around this right side. Unfortunately, he is gonna be met by John. Scump rerouting, goes through the middle, watches another teammate get gunned down. That time it was formal. Crim6 is gonna pick off John, but both players know they have to just stay alive, wait for reinforcements, then push as a four-man crew. What does Scump do here? He's got a lead blocker, but unfortunately, John is ready for him. Reads him like a book. Crim6 sneaks in from behind. Two players on Envy through the cherry blossom tree. Does hit the shots, too. Nice work by him, and already look at the minimap. He's got formal pushing ahead. They have no idea he's here. Optic Gaming could convert this right now. Krim thought about going for a one-point play. They call him off. Oh. They get greedy going for the dunk, and John punishes both players. A big defensive stop there by John. That keeps Envy in the lead. An example of really a uh, slight misplay from Optic Gaming. Instead of just going for that one, they try to force the dunk, and it doesn't work out. Scump, another two-piece. He's been doing it all map. 10 and 5 right now. Apathy gets the better of him there as we're three minutes into this game, still only a one possession game. You talk to a lot of players, they'll tell you they prefer to play from the side that Envy is on right now. We've seen scores coming in from both sides. Envy, so far, they lead by one. Two minutes left in this game, but I'm starting to see a little bit change in their gameplay, a little bit more swagger in their gunfights. Optic, they're still winning the slaying battle, but Envy is slowly calling back into this. They definitely are, and Slasher knows that. He's currently at 7-7, seven and seven, very even between these two teams. Slight edge to Optic, but when it's that little, it really doesn't make too much of a difference in regards to the objective. Again, Apathy just trying to keep the drone out of that lobby area when he knows Optic Gaming are pinching from that back ATM side. Karma and crew now moving on up. They've got two dead on Envy for the moment. And this flank right here could be deadly. No, John snaps on over. And one thing I want you guys out in the crowd to keep your eye on is the kill feed in the bottom left. Look how often Optic Gaming members are getting two pieces, three pieces, the multi-kills coming in. It's so rare to see it coming in from your blue team, Team Envious. Optic is just always there to trade, at least so far in this game. Formal poking out. Karma's going to be dropped, but now it's Scump. It's the Slasher trying to answer back, and John is going to get the final kill. Crim6 with the drone, though, is going to run this away from Envious, preventing a last-minute score. And with oh. the grenades coming in, Karma's going to take that trade, even if he took out a teammate. Yeah, he, a little bit of a awkward miscommunication there for Optic, but it definitely happens quite often in competitive Call of Duty. Karma just watching from top station. I think if you're Optic Gaming right now, yes, you obviously want to score, but... If anything, if I'm going to the half down 1-0, to zero, I I'm fine with that. Especially with how Scump and Krim are playing at the moment. They're what, combined at 25 and 17 solid stuff in there. Player hiding at the statue is John. He picked up two kills. A third one coming in from Slasher, but it's Karma answering back. He has the drone. They're not going for a score. They're waiting for two more players to come off spawn. You got Scump and Krim trying to pinch. Scump is going to distract while Krim gets the two-piece. One more point opportunity coming in. Krim just has to pick up one more kill. Oh, uh, but they're going to spawn right on the portal. There's not enough pressure from Optic Gaming. The throw goes there it is. in, though, as two players try for the interception. Formal will tie up the game going into the half, but I think that that works for Optic Gaming. If I'm the player on that team, I'm saying, boys, we can absolutely work with that. Let's go into side two and now really show off why we're so much better at this side. At the very end, you see John going after Formal, who hit that last toss. Tie game. Five more minutes. Optic Gaming up 2-0 in the best of five. They can secure their spot in the championship match right here, Jack. Will they do it, though, is the question. They've got Cobb Champs, winners, Envy in front of them still. They cannot overlook these opponents, even though they do have a two-map lead. John waiting for some sort of back alley pressure, which is a sign that they know how Optic Gaming go off the break of this map. Formal's the one trying to flank, and John stops him in his tracks. The drone being slowly pushed up. Envy going to shut it down. All four players alive. Three players at the forefront. The last man lagging behind is going to be Slasher, who's going to try and cut through the middle. John will join them as they split up in a two-on-two. -two. Meanwhile, Optic Gaming, a four-man defensive setup along the perimeter. They're going to win the first two gunfights. Now it's a four-on-two. Oh, gosh. Great defensive stand. Nice patience being shown by the green wall. Good thing for Envy, though. Because it was a defensive stand for Optic, they will have time to get back towards their station side. 
to stop the score from going on in. There you see it. Envy, they get positioned, they wipe Optic off, and there's a defensive stand now for the boys in blue. Envy gonna try and push this up one more time. You got Formal working alongside Skump and Krim6. Krim gonna get one, Karma, another friendly grenade. Another friendly grenade. It's a couple of now this map in the last few minutes. John looked to punish Optic off of this though, and this should be a dunk. There it is, Envy back up by two. Very nice movement coming in from John. He is 17 and 14 as well, so the slang has turned up for Envy. They have the lead in this game. Optic trying to escape, but they have a player looking at him from across. It's gonna be Apathy at the top of your map. Nice kill coming in here from Jcap as well. Both players able to clear off Optic, but Optic answers right back. Karma on your screen. Tr trying to stop whatever he can. You can see he's just dancing around. His life's so important, and now he's got the crossfire with his teammate and Scum. Is it enough though? No, Jcap continuing to stay hot. He's on a four streak now. Trim six, trying to sneak behind Envy. Picks up one. Pulling in another player, buying his teammates time to push up the map. It's gonna be Krim winning the first two gunfights. <laughs> Skump should be able to trade it out. Skump though kills his teammate there again. That's a third time now for off the gaming with those flechette grenades. Two minutes and 45 seconds, still very winnable for Optic Gaming. Envy, they gotta keep the pressure on. This is where it gets scary. Optic moving up the map, Karma with middle map control. They've got three players now pushing from that back gas side. What will it be, though, that gives Optic the edge here in these final couple minutes? We'll have to find out. What Envy needs to avoid here is a spawn trap. Optic oh, yeah. gets a single spawn trap. I think they take this game. But Envy now with the one possession advantage. It They're holding reset either. strong. They it didn't reset. Here, formal. Is he going for the dunk? Yes, he's he is. got it clear. And they got the spawn trap. Karma's there for the spawn trap. Will we get Crim6 there in time, though, to grab the reset of the drone? It doesn't appear so. Formal's gonna do no. all he can with two. But Optic, they, they have to recognize that there is not enough now to put on the pressure. Crim just needs to stay alive and woo, does lose the 1v1 to Slasher. I thought I saw a face melt. Instead, it's Slasher picking up the kill. John pushing through the middle, gonna be met on the other end at Skump, winning the gunfight. Yeah, that's a battle that's never gonna go in his favor. Formal, the two-piece to stop Envy's pressure. He's got help from Karma. Three dead for Envy. Optic flooding forward. This is their chance now, Puckett. Grim Six, the lead blocker. He had a player with him as well. Unfortunately, both are gonna be stopped. Karma trying to trade it out. Drone is on the ground, but Karma has no more support. Envy is gonna stuff this push. Will they be able to turn it into points? So Karma juking him out, trading out one. Skump just wondering where exactly he should run. You see, he's going towards Park, now rotating back. And why? Because look at your mini-map. The drone for Envy moves all the way through back gas. And this is what I'm talking about. This is where Envy just tries something crafty. But it could backfire now as the drone again isn't reset. The gas station explodes. Crim6 the lead blocker. Optic can take the lead with a one-point play. Will Skump hit the shot? There it is, Optic Gaming in the lead with one minute left. 55 seconds left on the clock in Team Envy's tournament. They have to stop the push. They need to convert some points. John with your first kill. The Optic chance starting here in Atlanta. The fans know just how close they are from advancing to their first championship match on land here. Apathy stuck behind them. He's got a 1v1 to win right now. Drops the drone, oh. can't get the kill. 30 seconds left. No one from Envy near the drone. And Optic are keeping their foot on the gas pedal. They want to shut the door right now. Skump taking out John. Optic Gaming continues to stay up in the kill feed. They continue to outslay Team Envious. Ooh. We are down to the final 15 seconds. Jcap and John trying to pave the way. The drone, oh. no one near it though. Envy will not get to the drone. Optic Gaming with the 3-0 sweep over Team Envy. Oh, oh, oh my goodness, folks. The Optic Gaming of old are back. And boy, oh boy, do they look better than ever before. OG versus E United will be your uh, uh, will be your CWL Atlanta Open Grand Finals. I'm losing my mind, Chris. I'm losing my mind. You can see the frustration from Envy. They had such an incredible tournament, a few bumps in pool play, but when it came to the winner's bracket, they were so strong in prime time last night. This morning, having to face E-United once again just seemed to wear them out. Meanwhile, Optic Gaming, 
Somehow they still have gas in the tank, Jack. They have gone through the loser's bracket over and over again. Can they do it one more time against e United? After Skump won his first series today, he came into the green room and he said, you know, if we, if we want to keep playing to this grand final, if we want to take this championship, they would have to win seven series today. They've made it through five and they have two more. The first one of the grand finals, if they can take that, a second one to claim the title of CWL Atlanta Open Champions. But there's a team there waiting to rain on their parade. It's E United, and guess what, folks? They've yet to drop a series this weekend. United coming out of nowhere. They build a brand new roster after Vegas Silly. He's got the guys from Ghost Crew, everyone looking so strong in this tournament. And now they are one match away, but they're going up against a red hot optic game. And let's take a look at some of the highlights from our final game in this best of five, the uplink. It started early with Envious, the first team on the board, but then Optic, they turned up. Crimsic started with a nine and three score. From there, it was Scump taking over. Formal hitting the shot before halftime trading back and forth as both teams had control, but it felt like Optic was just slowly suffocating Envy in this match. And especially with the final push, you saw Envy. What winds up costing them is they wrap the drone towards their back alley, and there's a panic from Apathy. He tries to tr throw the drone forward. Scump makes him pay for it there with the W. Scump hitting your final shot, and it's Optic Gaming. Moving on to the grand finals. Here's a look at our box score, a 1.09 from Formal. Pretty evenly traded out on the other side. John simply couldn't live up to his stats from earlier in the tournament, a .96, even though he had the most kills. But the man I want to talk to is Crim6, the shot caller. And right now, he's down on the floor with Maven. Thank you, guys. All right, so, Ian, I, I shouldn't admit this. You're not going to like it, but... You came back to me after a match, and you looked at me and said, Maven, what are we doing wrong in hardpoint? And when you're asking me, that's, that's not a good thing. But since then, you guys have not dropped a single hardpoint. What's changed for you? Honestly, just kills and playing spawns. I mean, you know, and staying alive when we need to stay alive. We were dying at, like, like the worst times possible, and we were dying at, like, the last 10 seconds of the hills. So, uh, you know, we started camping. All right, well, hey, it's working. It's working. All right, now I'm also curious, uh, obviously, over the, the years you've had this squad, you're, you're typically, you know, the final boss, the one kind of waiting after the winner's uh, bracket final, the one waiting in the final. This has been a very different run for you. Uh, what's it like having to go through this loser's run, and can you compare this to another time kind of in your career? Um, the only time I can compare it to would be, uh, what, UGC Niagara, and that's when we got, you know, knocked out first round. And uh, we played losers all the way through uh, top 32. So, uh, you know, it's, it's a similar situation. So, well, Let's talk uh, a little bit then about the finals. Obviously, E United hasn't dropped a match. They've looked incredible. I know you guys basically scrimmed them nightly coming up to this event. Can you talk to me a little bit about how those matches have gone and how you feel coming into this? You know, we, we, we learn a lot off them, and they learn a lot off us. And, uh, you know, it's going gonna, it's gonna to be a battle. I, I mean, I don't know what else to say about it, but, uh, you know, hopefully we can pull it off. All right. I'm sure the fans are hoping that as well. Grand final coming up next here for the CWL Atlanta Open after this quick break.